the outer city of Navania used to be crawling with pirates. Over here! Quick! Fortunately, a legendary hero appeared, Captain Redhawk. For years he was undefeated and maintained peace in the outer city. Uh, uh. <laughs> Captain! <laughs> and I'm the guy pretending to be him. I even invented some gadgets of my own. <laughs> Don't move! Or the girl gets it. Cover your ears. Huh? Should I cover mine too? <laughs> what was that? Captain! Huh? Huh? Thanks, Captain Red. <laughs> you saved her! Always saves the day. You're a legend! Incredible! Thank you! You're the best captain! I saved her. Captain Red Hawk, you should rest more. You've lost weight. <sighs> You're still not good enough, Alessio. The real Captain Red Hawk was so courageous, powerful, and brave. Help me! I'm not good enough. Not good enough. Come on, Alessio. You have to protect everyone. Is here. It's Captain Redhawk. Captain Redhawk. He's here to save us. Captain Redhawk is here. Redhawk's dead. Red <laughs> come, come, come. <laughs> Get up! Uh, what? Is that really captain weird? Redhawk is just a kid! He's not... Where's the captain? Was this kid protecting us all this time? You're pretending to be Redhawk? What a joke. Well, it's not a joke! A fake is a fake! Find that fake. Yes, boss! Let the outer city know. Their captain is gone for good. Captain? Captain! Captain Redhawk! It's up to you now. From now on, you're Redhawk. Me? Captain Redhawk? But I can't. He's not. He's just a Where's boy. Where's the real Captain Redhawk? We do. Thank you. He can't even protect we himself. <laughs> no matter how hard I try, it's not good enough. Oh. 
Ava, he's awake. He's okay. We must hide him. Hurry. Over there! Hurry! Careful. Go look over there! Let's go! Over here, Captain Murdoch. Get him to safety. Right. Follow me, Captain. Where'd you hide it? Spit it out! Get back here! It's me you're after. Let him go! Captain, uh, I'll take it from here. Thank you. Captain, this way. Quickly, this way. Uh, the captain's here! Captain Redhawk! Captain! Captain, my man will take uh, you to the outer sea. You'll be safe there. Not Captain Red Hawk. You're wrong. Huh? You are Red Hawk. When you stand up, you will be. Isn't the fake? You finally dared to stand up. Couldn't help it. I'm not gonna quit, as you'll see. Like you, you want to be special, but you're too weak.
This is no tragedy. This is my choice! <laughs> When you stand up, you will be. I heard there's a mermaid in this area. <laughs> Out of ten Navinians, eleven would tell you that they've heard the mermaid singing. I wouldn't mind hearing it too. La, la, la, la.
Seven are such a great team and why the Brazilian team are probably most, uh, some of the most feared ones because they have not only the most experience. But the sustains next target from the little dude keeps them up and running, keeps them, them healthy on land. Goes the back line, trying to burst someone down. They will bring down a view and Jen is absolutely huge. A huge and bounce down. Xiao Xiao is for the damage leader on the side. All Ben RX is able to just get up down. And, okay, and now the, the Vanguard. Here uh, with the dragon as well, just to help the foot of chaos going through lamp. So we need a true lamp fashion doing lots of damage like the assassin that he is getting a No good at this. I've been noticed. Time to fight. Hey, what are you doing? Hey. It's just you and me. Mm -mm. You give that back. Me. Huh? Again? Your turn. <laughs> Come back and fight! It's the kid who stole the ship! So you're not with them? <laughs> Ladies first! No. Huh?
Officer, nice. Looks like the safest place turns out to be right under your enemy's nose. Nope, I just got tired of running. The coast is clear now. Let's go. Huh? It's locked. Ah! gerçekleşecek olan bu etkinlik için dünyanın her yerinden gelecek takımlarla mücadele edeceğiz. Türkiye'nin zaferini bütün taraflarımızı göstereceğiz. Ayvi Enerex olarak diğer ülkelerin takımlarıyla karşılaşmaktan çok memnunuz. İstanbul'da gerçekleşecek bu turnuva için çok hazırlanın. Kazanacağımıza inanıyoruz ve bunun için savaşacağız. Beşiktaş e-sport çok köklü geçmişe sahip bir takım. Bu turnuvaya katılacağımız için çok heyecanlıyız. Elimizden gelenin en iyisini yapıp bu armanın hakkını vereceğiz. Biz Kazakistan'ımız. Belki bir senior bizde tanıma isten bırak olmanı temiz. Sebebi senior bizden kuşumuzda koresinler. Ay somuz 
campeões do Choque BR. Desta vez, vamos trazer o troféu de campeão de volta para o Brasil. É possível falar do Alfa 7 e não pensar em uma equipe campeã. A gente vai se surpreender nesse campeonato. كل تحد فرصة للتقدم وسنتغلب على جميع التحديات لظهار قوة لطالما كان فوز البطولة حلمنا سنخوض في النضال في هذه المرة من أجلك How's it going, everybody? Welcome to day two of the Honor of Kings Season 1 Invitational Istanbul 2024. Today, you have myself, Blam, and with me is my partner in crime in the Hawk scene. It is Mr. Zero. How's it going today? Going great. It's a cloudy and chilly temperature right now happening in Istanbul, but the, but the tournament is about to heat up because we have three great series happening today. But if this tournament would not be possible without our great sponsor, which is Infinix. These, all these players are playing on the Infinix GT10 Pro, which is the most professional choice for gamers who are fighting with kings. All sensory game engine and high refresh rate immerse you in the purest gaming experience and of course the purest tournament experience as well. Blam! Today we've got three great series ahead of us. Which one is looking like the spiciest one? Oh, I, I don't know in terms of spiciness, because I mean, I think all three have their elements of spiciness today. I, we started off with the two uh, losers of yesterday, which is Major mm -hmm. Pride and NRX. And then we go on to two teams we have not witnessed yet, which is VKS versus Twisted Minds. And then we go on to an absolute clash of the Turkish region between B, JK and Foot. Chaos, which we both saw yesterday, had yeah. fantastic performances. And to be fair, that is one hell of a way to close day two. Yeah, both of these teams are on top of their respective tables right now. Both of them with a 1-0 scoreline, not dropping a single map so far. So that final match of the day will determine who will be taking the lead in Group A, while in Group B, Alpha 7 with the clean sweep yesterday against their opponent, Star Esports as well. But not if Vivo Keystars has anything to say about it today because they'll be playing for the first time in the Invitational Season 1 and uh, this is the matchup of the day. Like you said, Major Pride facing up against NRX, BKS against Twisted Minds and then we close up the day with Besiktas Esports going up against Foot Chaos. Absolutely. I mean, there's a lot to play for, even just into day two. Yes, it still doesn't mean eliminations. And for those that aren't very familiar with the format, we will go through the format now for you. So this is the group stages and it is day two of the group stages. Mm -hmm. And basically this will take place until the fifth of this month. It is a single round robin best of three. All teams will go through to the knockout stage, but those two top teams in the group stages will have their choice of uh, their first opponent going into the knockout round. So it's, it's all to play for and to top yeah. of those leads is definitely something to be sought for. Yeah, it is very really important for all these teams to perform their best during the group stages because they have the choice of their opponents in during the knockout stages. The knockout stages are going to be a single elimination best of five. So no second chances once you reach the knockout stage. And it's very important that you know you get to pick your opponents and you, you, you would stand a better chance moving on to the, the semi-finals and towards the grand finals after that. So today, uh, Besiktas Esports as well as Foot Chaos, both of them are almost there. They are both one, they are both currently one win and no losses so far. And whoever wins that matchup will take a huge lead in Group, num group A and most probably the, uh, will be taking the top spot as well in Group A. Absolutely, and then obviously for day three as well, obviously we'll see the likes of BJK as well. So tomorrow will actually be the last day that they can do anything to keep themselves top of the ranks, top of the leaderboards. And the same as for, um, I believe it would be Major Pride as well. So they've really got to do some work within today and tomorrow to find out uh, and just secure some kind of footing within the group stages. The top of the leaderboard may not look like a actual accomplished goal for them, but they may be able to hit the middle of the board, which is still something to take away, especially this team that isn't used to HOK. Definitely. It's, uh, some teams might be taking the group stages as, you know, practice, trying to uh, put one toe in the water, trying to find out what everyone is playing, what everyone is good at, and then 
bam, during the knockout stages itself, show them their true colors. But of course, every single win here counts. You want to be able to perform the best you can while also, you know, saving up your strategies and your your main playstyle before the knockout stages. Just, just as an element of surprise. So it's going to be, you know, that balance, that balance to try and find out, uh, to, to try and gather information while also trying to win it all at the same time. Absolutely. I mean, we heard it from the horses made up yesterday from Book Chaos. They believe that they are top of the Turkish region and below them is BJK. And I feel like that that statement is mm -hmm. huge going into day two because we're actually going to see if that is right because this is the first time that both of those teams are actually going to face off. And obviously all these teams as well within that same statement were saying that Alpha 7 were the top dogs and they're the ones that beat them all in scrims. So, and we saw yesterday that Star Wars mm -hmm. Esports did lose uh, a very convincing 1-0 uh, against uh, Alpha 7. But then the second game is where they came back. They learned not to lose that mid lane turret. And then we saw a very hardcore victory, but still went to 0 to Alpha 7. So it really shows how tough these are as opponents. Yeah, it also shows how close all these teams are actually uh, in terms of skill as well as strategy. When you have one of the favorites, Alpha 7, struggling to take a victory against the likes of Star Wars Esports, that gives, you know, uh, makes the even, makes the playing ground a lot more even than you would think. You have these two teams from Brazil, Alpha 7 as well as Key Stars, a lot of experience in Honor of Kings, but with against uh, a team like Star Wars Esports, who's not even playing with their full lineup, they're playing with two uh, stand-ins, uh, so to say, because their main lineup, both uh, two of their players had visa issues, not able to travel to Istanbul to be able to compete, but they are still able to uh, take it to Alpha 7 and almost take the victory as well. So all uh, every single player, every single team has to be well prepared for the challenges that are to come. Absolutely, and a little bit of a nugget of wisdom, a little window into Star Wars Esports yesterday. I was chatting with one of the players afterwards, and I did, find, I did actually find out a, a, a helpful piece of information, and very much like um, a little bit of a window into the team, is that they only have one day worth of scrimming with their flash lane, uh, Mijo. So for them to go and have that great effort in that second game is very interesting to know that they've only had one day of scrimming with their clash laners. So I feel like that's very hopeful for Star Wars Esports going forward, especially knowing that information now. Yeah, and then they're only going to get better you know, uh, after more and more repetitions of games and scrims. So Star Wars Esports is definitely a team that you want to look out for. Um, two teams that you want to look out for as well is our first upcoming match. Major Pride going up against IWNRX. Both teams without a single win. Major Pride, you know, they had a lot of uh, big talk during the uh, during the media shoots. You know, you, they will show us their strength. So far, they haven't really been able to uh, perform up to uh, what how they want to be. But <laughs> against IWNRX, this is their best chance to take a win uh, on the board. Absolutely. And speaking of these new teams, here we do have a little refresher for those new joining online and at the event today. I'm sure it's not going to be the same people at the event because we're going to get as many people as impossible offline and in Istanbul. But this is the NRX lineup. We have Bobnet037, uh, who was a great player yesterday. Fu in the mid lane, which was still very dominant, still was amazing as well. And Boogie, I mean, there was a great uh, team effort from these guys, but it was just... Like I said yesterday, they burnt bright very quickly, and then that was it. The macro just was not up to scratch. And then over to Major Pride. Yeah, their opponents are going to be Major Pride, Shisuki, uh, Shisuki, Shisuiski, Limski, Ritski, Kenesis, and Overlord. And with their coach Shorty, they are looking to redeem themselves after a disappointing day number one. And R Ken Kenesis actually, sh you know, sh shine for me. He, he, he, he performed pretty well on the marksman role. Granted, they weren't able to take a, a single victory yesterday, but he definitely has what it takes to be able to carry his team to a victory, and they definitely need him in this matchup because NRX is no pushover. Their, first, their second opponents in the group stages, they'll need to be able to take out every single strategy they have in the book to be able to take this victory. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, like you said, IWNRX are definitely no pushover. They they displayed a great performance yesterday, but it was just all down to the macro. They were allowing their their opponents to just completely annihilate the clash lane. We saw uh, Charlotte 
pretty much get down to the tier two turret within like 10 minutes. It was just mm. phenomenal uh, macro on the side of Book Chaos, uh, not Book Chaos, sorry, um, BJK. And yeah, it's just, I feel like that's, if they can change it around and improve that, uh, especially against Major Pride, I feel like we'll see a different whole kind of cut uh, from NRX today. Definitely, and I have to say, NRX and their jersey is one of my favorites of, uh, mm. from all these eight teams. It's simple enough, mm. but also, you know, has its own, also has its own flair. The, the player signature on the left sleeve, you've got their, lo uh, their, their slogan on the right. It's, it's simple enough to stand out, which is kind of ironic, but it looks pretty good. Absolutely, it's definitely a, a, a bit of a minimalistic statement. I, I like to say, I do like the flair of having the signature on the sleeve. That is pretty cool. But I do have to give it to Major Pride. I really like the Major Pride colors, the red and the gold with the black as well. Uh, and then just obviously displaying the uh, emblem of the team on the uh, side of the chest as well. which is really cool. But as you say, sometimes simplest is the best. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and these teams definitely will want to bring out their best in, in this mm. first game. It will set the tempo for the entire series and also will be able to give us a, a, a, a measure of strength against both these teams. Which one actually has, you know, oh, oh what was that? <laughs> he's asking everybody to sit down because he's ready to shock the world, maybe. I don't know. That's it. Mm. Maybe he's, maybe he's planning to sweep all these people off of their, off of their feet <laughs> with some plays. I feel... Was that was that Boogie, I believe it was? I think so, yeah. Yes, Boogie. <laughs> so he's definitely down to play. But just looking at a few of the picks from yesterday, so... Um, very, very familiar to the meta. Other than the uh, Guan Yu in the second game, we don't normally see Guan Yu come through in the Clash lane. It's normally the likes of Byron, Charlotte, and uh, the likes of. And um, yeah, we saw that. We saw the Dunk come through twice in the jungle. Maybe that's going to switch a peak component for NRX, but still had its worth of weight in engages, especially when we saw those early uh, three, four minutes a uh, Dunk coming straight over the wall with the ultimate, getting a great collision into the enemy team under the turret as well and securing some great kills for the team uh, and then in both games we saw two different kind of flavors of the mid lane we saw the uh, Xiao Xiao in the first game and then uh, Zhou Yu in the second game and then same again with the farm we went from Derenji to Lady Sun Lady Sun definitely performed a lot better for NRX we called her Madam President because everybody was literally just around her enough to keep her alive and um, make sure that they could I think the last game went like a, a good 20 minutes 20, I think it was yeah. like way over the 20 minute mark which is crazy and that's all thanks to Lady Sun going online very late into the game uh, and especially with the help of uh, Zhang Fei and then in the first game we had Little Loot as the roll. so quite a bit of a difference in these champion pools already quite a bit of a diverse selection from them and uh, it's gonna be interesting to see what they go for today did a stick with the dung pick in the jungle making that their staple pick and then choose around everything else yesterday we had a you know we were expecting a lot more kaiser bands and picks mm. but it only kind of been, been able to show itself towards the last series of the day so yeah. maybe this is something that you know these teams have noticed after watching um after watching alpha 7 uh play the kaiser and how strong it is you know er early on you can play it as an assassin Late, later on in towards the game you play it as a full frontal bruiser and he's never afraid to die maybe that's something that it can replace with the dun which we know is very strong early on but does fall off towards the later stages of the game as the damage coming from the dungeon just isn't able to scale towards the late game. Absolutely. I mean, that was the only game we actually, actually the only match and games we saw done actually come through. The rest was uh, we either have Alam, we had yeah. Ling come through, we had uh, Kaiser, as you said, as well. There was plenty of different kind of flavors within the teams as well in terms of the jungle picks. Uh, but like you say, the Kaiser coming towards the end being uh, the only time Kaiser comes out is the last game of the day, which was really strange because Kaiser was just such a staple pick with it in mm. Chuck BR in 2023. And that was only literally just around the corner uh, a, few, uh, a few months ago. So, yeah, it's really weird that no one else considered the Kaiser. Maybe there is just something they're not used to. Maybe the tempo is not there for them. Kaiser does 
tend to be a lot weaker against lineups with a lot of crowd control. Things like the Zhang Fei, things, uh, heroes like the Princess Frost as well towards the mid lane. Something that Kaiser hates walking into is crowd control. Mm. And we, mm. We've seen a lot of these crowd control heroes, so maybe that is the reason why you know teams aren't really uh, partial towards picking up the Kaiser early on. But we saw Alpha 7 just didn't give a single hoot. They just picked up the Kaiser, no. played against any single matchup, and took two wins straight off the bat. Yeah, I mean, we almost saw the demise of Kaiser in that, that second game, especially Wawa on that Luban. That really oh, yeah. helped them. But then they really, they soon as they knew the Luban was being picked, they picked the uh, Dong Huang, and that really helped the shutdown. But then towards the end, we saw that they got the pickup of the Resurrection, and that really threw a spanner in the works for uh, A7 because we saw a very close fight at the uh, Tempest Dragon, which at that point of the game, it is anybody's game. As long as the team fight goes in your favor and everyone dies on the enemy team, that death timer is just too long and you have the right amount of time just to run down mid, run down one of these lanes and completely take the crystal. So yeah, like you say, Kaiser may not be the best pick, but he could be the difference between a win or a loss within these ones, because we know how sticky the champion is. Absolutely. Yes. Another hero I'm really ex hoping and excited, excited to see is actually the Da Xiao. Whether if these mm. teams have had any practice with the Da Xiao, it's not a very simple hero to use. It requires a lot of team synergy to play around that support, that roam hero. And so far, we've seen it banned quite a bit, but no, not a single team have been picking it up, even though that it's been let, let through the pool a couple of times. So that's another one of those heroes that I really hope to see. As well as the Dolia as well. It's been banned so much in, mm. in day number one. I hope to see at least one game of Dolia. Yeah, well, the Chao uh, was uh, banned six, six games, so we mm. definitely wasn't going to get that yesterday, but uh, Dolia actually fell through on one of the games, but was that picked up? But again, uh, she's one of those champions. If you don't pick the right synergy uh, heroes with that uh, Dahlia, it's kind of like, we could have taken a tank. We could have taken a great engage like yeah. the Zhang Fei, or even got like uh, a little loot or any of those kind of roaming champions. Even the Muzi, Muzi came through quite a bit. Uh, Moose came through on Major Pride in the mid lane, which we kind of saw as a little bit of a, uh, a weak play there. But here we are into Pan's drafts and picks here. Yeah, Lamb as well as the Mozu instantly taken out there by NRX, while at Major Pride ups to ban out the Dun as well as mm. the uh, Dachiao. But and will pick up the Gun and more as well as the Zhang Fei as they're open to picks going up against Buggy on that Princess Frost. So straight away, our uh, question has definitely been answered. The Dun is not going to come through. We are going to get somebody else, and it is going to look like the Kaiser pick comes through. Dolia is still up and available, but they go for Little Loot instead, which is still a great synergy for the Kaiser. But Dolia could have been a great synergy for the Kaiser. Abs absolutely. The, those two heroes are just such a scary pairing when you play them together. Dolia able to allow Kaiser to have that second ultimate up and running is just so scary. That is almost half a minute of damage reduction uh, on a Kaiser, on a hero that's very hard to bring down, you are going to be absolutely terrified of that combination. But NRX, maybe they're not, they, they prefer a hero that allows them a little bit more crowd control with the little loot, or they just prefer the healing so that they can continuously sustain pushes. That might be the reasoning behind picking up this little loot in the third and as the Roma role. Absolutely. I mean, we saw the Princess Frost and uh, Ganamo uh, clash off in the mid lane yesterday in uh, Star Wars versus uh, A7's match as well. So we've seen this matchup happen already. Uh, will uh, the mid laner of uh, Major Pride be able to get those crucial thefts that we saw from A7 mm -hmm. suits yesterday, which was just Beautiful. phenomenal, <laughs> and scored him MVP of the second game uh, against Star Wars Esports as well. So it's going to be really interesting to see how Major Pride pick up his Ganon Mo and play him here. They do go for the Charlotte as well. So again, to a, a great pick for engaging. The Clash lane may need a little bit of help in that early game, especially from the jungle. And then they pick up the Derenji and ban out Byron. And I believe that is a Liam Po, if I'm correct. I can see that. Yes, is it Guan Yu? Yeah, Guan Yu. Cool. Yeah. One, one, you want to give the Charlotte a good lane. Charlotte isn't really strong until level four. So they want to give uh, Charlotte the best thing possible. While NRX did ban out two jungle heroes, Musashi mm. as well as the Jing. 
being banned actually for uh, side of NRX and uh, Major Fright. Their last pick, is it going to be a jungle or clash thing? Because they can rotate the Charlotte to play in towards the jungle and go for something like a Lu, uh, a Lu Bu to go up against the Mulan in the clash lane. Could be an option for them if they decide to uh, put the Charlotte in the jungle. Absolutely. I mean, we got the Mulan up in the clash lane uh, considered here, and then obviously Lady Sun we saw in the second game for NRX. Again, one of those late game champions, but the go for the Prince of Lan Ling there in the jungle. Interesting. So we're getting not really a assassin and tank trade off here in the uh, the clash lane and the jungle. We get into quite assassin centric champions both in the clash and the jungle yeah this this lineup coming from major pride is a little bit unorthodox they don't really have mm. great team fight just only having the, the zhang fei as well as maybe the gun and more to be able to do uh good damage in an area but uh they have highly mobile heroes they've got the prince of landing they've got the zhang fei they've got the charlotte being able to go in and out of fights very easily going for pickoffs is going to be a breeze from us for the side of Major Pride because the Prince of Lanling is one of those assassins that you're going to see very, very active. He's going to start roaming around the map even at level 2 just because he has that uh, invisibility that is, uh, that is active at all times. So this is something that Major Pride has in their back pocket. But NRX looking like a very scary team with the amount of crowd control and sustains that they have in their team. Exactly. I mean, it's stacked. Not only do they have the Prince Frost for the uh, Princess Frost, sorry for the for the range. Uh, this hero is a great utility mage in the mid lane and definitely held its own against Ganamo when played uh, between Stalwart and A7. And then, like you say, we've also got Lady Sun. So against all these squishy champions uh, that are on the side of Major Bright, if we just get Lady President just uh, peaked with all the equipment that she needs. I think it's going to be an easy stomp here for this farm lane just to completely just roll out with all the kills, all the gold that they need to sustain the Lady Sun's damage. Yeah, they have to reach there first though. This aggressive lineup mm. coming from the side of Major Pride does look like they want to end the game before the 15 minute mark. So let's see if they're able to hold on to their early game tempo or will they, like you said, burn bright? but burn way too fast because their first opponents are going to be NRX in this second day of the group stages. Absolutely, but I mean, if both teams are going to adapt to that kind of combat, which is super aggressive, super furious, then they're, they're both just going to collide and probably just trade endlessly because if there's no macro involved, if there's nobody pushing these lanes, Enemy it's going to be a, quite a, a hard match to finish if that's all they're going to do is just completely just oh, run at each other and have full aggression. But our answers, uh, questions will be answered very soon going into the gorge. This is the first game between NRX and Major Pride. Let's see what happens. Mid lane, the classic one, your, your mage as well as the support trying to push out the wave as quickly as possible to allow your mid lane to rotate. But the uh, the Princess Frost excels in this area, being able to harass as well as clear up the creep waves really quickly. But got more showcases that he can do the same as well. And they're all going to be rotating up to the top lane to give the assistance to both the Charlotte as well as the Mulan, who's not really a great laner before level 3 as well. So, a little bit of an engagement here. Overlord dropping very low. Is there enough Ooh. damage to bring him down? He's only level 1, so he cannot escape here. And Princess Frost will be the one to take the first blood and open things up here for the side of NRX. First blood in true NRX fashion. I mean, this was the team that had the knowledge to be able to be invading the enemy jungle from second one, which we saw earlier uh, yesterday in day one's match against uh, BJK. Even though they didn't quite manage to get the victory, they sure did display the skills under the know-how to get a victory here. And first blood is going to be a great pickup here for the team, especially with the extra gold. Uh, but nice rotations there from... Uh, we saw that Major Pride had a little bit of a knowledge there going up towards the clash lane to go and help out the Charlotte against the Mulan, but it just wasn't fast enough. And then when the rotate back into the lane, it was just all game over for Princess Fast to take the first blood there. Uh, but it, even Stevens, in terms of the gold, it is very, very close, uh, slowly edging in the favor of NRX here. The Prince of Lan Ling has reached level 4, so we should be seeing him move around the map quite a little bit for now. He does have his 
ultimate, which allows him to be very mobile as well as provide a lot of physical burst damage. But who is this gonna? Who is gonna be his target? Where is he gonna go to first? The bottom lane, the Lady Sun is a juicy target, but mm. the Princess Frost needs to be shut down as well because you don't want her to be able to run away with the game. Oh, bottom lane, lot of damage onto his Kinesis Ooh. from the Ooh, Lady hey. Sun, but able to escape just in time. Yeah, we've got NRX still in the enemy jungle here, trying to take out the Sage buff. Not quite getting it though, it, it goes over to Alimski there. He does manage to take his own Sage buff, which is a, a given, especially for a champion like Prince of Lanolink here. Uh, but, like you were saying, who's going to be his first target? I would go and hesitate to say that uh, because we're seeing Ganon Mo actually rotate down to the, the, mid, the, the farm lane quite often, I feel like that's what they're trying to set up here. They're trying to douse out the flame of this lazy sun before it becomes too bright and too, uh, too powerful to actually douse out in the late game. Absolutely, they have to make use of their early temple heroes. Shisuiski able to steal one of the jungle creeps away from Buggy, so that's gonna be a little bit of annoying, a little bit annoying for the Mulan who, who, who wants uh, to be able to progress into her mid game stage as quickly as possible. But Prince of Landling is gonna be rotating up towards the top. He does have the Sage buff as well as the Mike Golem buff, so that's gonna be allowing him to continuously deal damage. But looks like the Mulan might be a bit too hard with the. Uh, crowd control immunity that she innately has, and they're going to look for something else. Oh, Ooh. Not, not able to steal the Sage Golden buff for Alimski, but good yeah, attempt was, nonetheless. Yeah, I was unsure who that went to because they both had the Sage buff. Then we saw it actually fall off Alimski there towards the end, so it's kind of it definitely secured uh, Kaiser getting that Sage buff there. But we do, uh, speaking of Kaiser, he has made his way. Looking for a gank up in that clash lane as well. But again, Ganon Mo with the another rotation down to the mid lane after cleaning out his wave. It's now four minutes as well. So putting pressure onto the clash lane could secure this tyrant, but there is gonna be no presence from the Kaiser. They've let the major pride team take the tyrant with ease. They're gonna trade it for the overlord up in the top lane though, so still a good enough trade that you, you don't mind losing the first uh, the first tyrant is not the end of the world you don't want to walk into positions where your opponents are already ready and prepared to defend so picking the best making the best out of that situation but top lane mulan almost now she's swiski she's swiski has to try and run away so Ooh. sticky is that mulan and he's able to bring him down and pressure the top tier one power as well yeah, nicely played by Boogie there, thinking that the Flash was already exhausted, but stunned there onto Boo. Boo is not looking too happy there. He goes down by the Prince of Landling Langling, and also another 2 2 trade there. They take down the Lady Sun as well. So actually, it was a 2 1 trade for Major Pride because the first kill was obviously already Charlotte. That was on the other side of the map. So mm -hmm. a, a really positive trade for Major Pride down in the farm lane there. Very aggressive. Yeah. They had to sacrifice Kinesis to have enough damage to bring down the Lady Sun, but that was uh, the best they could hope for. Also being able to bring down the Princess Frost, allowing the Prince of Landling to be able to get to the Axe of Torment, which is going to increase his damage twofold. It's going to be a very important time window here for Major Pride, who wants to look, who looks to end the game as quickly as possible. Absolutely, especially with these uh, heavy rotation mechanics here. And once again, oh. Ganmo going through, Lang Ling onto Lady Sun, and then we get a double kill from Alimski onto Little Loot. Potentially third victim here is Princess Frost. She is in the bush, but they are not going to go check it because still is there as well. But uh, the Zhang Fei may get caught out here. He is overextended. Maybe this is a bait. We're seeing Ganemo come round as well for the rotation. He's waiting for them. No, he was unaware. And we see the Kaiser manages to catch out the Ganemo. The most of the bait gets baited. A little bit uh, aggressive there coming from the gun and Mo walking into that area, not knowing that the bush hasn't been cleared out. The lane mm. trying to hold off the Princess Frost as well as the Mulan. But yeah, 4 and 4 in terms of kills, the goal is pretty much neck and neck at the moment. And it still is trying to take away the Sage Golem buff away from the. Uh, Prince of Landling, Prince of Landling able to get it, it seems still dropping down very low. The Charlotte is here, going straight for the back line. Huge ultimate coming from Limsky. He's gonna be able to bring down the little loop. Can he get more done? No, he will not. Ladies is still alive and doing so much damage. Oh. Buggy going straight for the back line, brings down two as well. And this is gonna be an ace. Yes, it is. Buggy gets a triple kill and is able to reap the rewards with an extra creep wave as well. 
So all that amazing effort from Major Pride there completely just wiped out thanks to Boogie getting a triple kill on the Mulan here. But once again, let's look at this really fast-paced gameplay. We had uh, Charlotte was too far deep in there and the, the crowd control from the Frost just really just helped that team fight go into the favor of NRX because we saw Prince and Landling just go too far out. It was way too far away from his team. And then he was just an easy single target to take down and then Boogie just chased Ganemo to the back line to get a triple kill there. So really well played by NRX. We really thought that Major Pride was onto something. It's still very early, but to have an ace six minutes in is huge. Yeah, Lady Sun already completed the, her exit torment as well. So that is going to be a huge damage boost, allowing her to be able to deal damage early on and uh, hopefully be able to help this team take these early fights as well. But there might be some trouble here. The Gunnamon Nuke is not enough oh. to bring him down, but the, the Sun is going to fall towards Kinesis on the Demon Jir, and he's being chased down here by the Kaiser. Can he escape in time? The Zhang Fei shoots absolutely huge, keeping it alive for the longest of time, but it is not enough as he is going to fall. So is Overlord going to fall towards the Kaiser. So much physical damage from this jungle hero, and he is absolutely on a tear at the moment. Just NRX is still show NRX still just showing how sticky this Kaiser really is. He was just in there, just taking the damage, and everyone was just like, "You're not gonna kill me, bro!" Like literally, I'm just here to sustain, soak damage, whilst I just get like healed up from little loot as well at the same time, and then uh, being aided by uh, Princess Frost there. It was really well played, but Boogie going 1v1 onto the Charlotte once again, getting another takedown. That was a nice replay that we didn't capture, so there was quite a lot going on with the map here. So, Absolutely. seeing that the macros actually changed up quite a bit and a bit of improvement from NRX. Yeah, Mulan is definitely online at the moment, feeling confident to take these one-on-one -on -one fights against anybody who comes into her path, and she's going to be rewarded for her efforts with the kill. Right now, that allows uh, NRX to be able to get the Tyrant as well, and they are looking to go for more. This might be in a little bit of a dangerous position for Risky, but he's too close to the tower. The NRX do not want to take that risk to take that fight. Absolutely, but the, I'm just paying quite close eye attention to uh, Prince of Landling in the top lane, looking to take a, a, and take that farm, uh, and maybe looking for a re-engage onto the team fight that is no longer happening. But he's got to be careful because NRX are waiting, and we know that they have the patient game locked down. But still, actually gave that away, unfortunately, to Olimsky, and there they realised that they gave it away. And they're like, you know what? Let's leave Prince of Landling there. He's not going to come and take that bait. However, he could push this top tier turret, uh, uh, top uh, clash main turret here first for uh, Major Pride taking a turret, which I don't think they managed to do yesterday in the game at all. Yeah, this is uh, going to be helping them keeping the game alive for the moment. Oh, huge damage towards the back line. That's going to be the Gundamo falling. Shisuiski barely surviving with his life, and that might be the, o the Overlord falling here as well. The Zhang Fei does not have this leap anymore, and the damage coming from the Mulan way too much at this point of the game. And NRX is going to get healed up by the little loot as well. Put the pressure on towards the mid tier tree tower. The damage coming from the Mulan almost bringing out two heroes, but Lady Sun won't be happy just to take the tower as well as a kill on towards the Prince of Landing as well. Can they chase up Lady Sun? Yes, he can. Wow, what a nice close kill there by Lady Sun. Just taken out Prince of Landling. Just a final piece, a little bit of frost on the cake, but there may be a finish to the crystal here. I feel like there is no push of the minions in the mid lane to actually achieve this, but Charlotte, once again, soaking the damage, but still falls down to the Milan and, and being take, managed to take out uh, 0, 3, 0, 7, and Bobnet as well. So there's a little bit of consolation there within that mid lane clash up for the crystal. It wasn't going to fall because we didn't have enough minions rotating through to the mid lane. Still looking a little bit sticky here for the wrong reasons in the enemy jungle. Tyrant and Overlord are both up and they're both in hand, so I feel like there's going to be a play around either of these camps anytime soon. Major Pride's weakness in their lineup is showing right now. The lack of team fight, the lack of crowd control in their lineup has, has just shown over and over again. They aren't able to take these 5 or 5 fights very convincingly because they're walking into Princess Frost with the slow, they're walking with, uh, into uh, the Mulan with her slows as well. And, because of that, they're not, they're not able to keep these players where they want to be. But oh, Risky able to get the Overlord, but and is able to walk away from that as well. So 
little bit of a brief, some breathing room for the side of Major Prime. They don't have to deal, they don't have to deal with the Shadow Vanguards for a little bit, and that allows them to push out the side lanes as far as they can to give them a little bit more time as well. But this is, this might be just delaying the inevitable for the side of uh, for the side of Major Pride because NRX is gonna take the Tyrant for themselves. Absolutely, we see Prince of Lenling recalled back even though we got the great push there in the clash lane. So quite a bit of macro going on for his team. Moolanders meet that clash lane and however, NRX do take the second Tyrant for themselves. The Shadow Tyrant is now being empowered. It's going to give a lot more movement speed and it's going to give more uh, attack damage as well. More damage increased overall. But it's just really funny to see here with the NRX. We're seeing the Lady Sun. Princess Frost and Little Luke literally just running around like a trio uh, of a, a girl group here, just constantly <laughs> sticking together. They're a lot more stickier than this Kaiser. They're just constantly, just as a little click, just rotating around this map. But here we go, still going in, pops the orb, takes down the Zhang Fei. We see Darren G go down as well. This is going to be a high ground to take down. I feel like this could be delayed. The, the delayed inevitable is about to happen here. The crystal is bare open. There's a cannon minion in there. They may as well do the attack, but instead, they're deciding to go for more members up Major Bright. Down goes the Charlotte as well. There is only Prince of Landling alive but there is no minions just yet. There is a inevitable minion creep wave coming through that farm lane where Prince of Landing is trying to cut up and did successfully, but now falls. I feel like this is NRX taking the first victory in game one and they have, down goes the crystal, well played to NRX. Clean, clean executions towards the mid game and the late game team fights. Absolutely amazing there for the side of NRX. Able to exploit the advantage of their squad, which is having that that more favorable team fight lineup. And NRX was able to capitalize on, on the small mistakes from the side of Major Pride and able to take this victory despite a very rocky start. Absolutely. I mean, we saw Major Pride have a bit of an improvement there, but I feel like the, the biggest amount of improvement... There we go. Decline that seat. You deserved it, lad. Uh, the biggest <laughs> improvement there was definitely from NRX, because the macro was definitely a lot better than yesterday. But then again, they didn't have uh, BJK's Mulan to compete against where they were pushing force of the team. Uh, but NRX, fair play for them, they do take a victory in game one. Let's see what Major Pride can do to fix this. NRX doesn't look like they actually had to struggle against the side of Major Pride. Major Pride seems like the, the holes in their lineups haven't really been plugged uh, since, since day number one. They haven't had a really good draft so far. Maybe it's just uh, their playstyle not really relying on team fights, but as we know, on our kings towards the mid and late game, everything re revolves around taking team fights, and that's why Princess Frost has so many assists. That's why you see the little loot one, three, and seventeen. These team fights need to be won from the side of NRX. Absolutely, I mean, just look at those amazing KDAs there from still uh, Bobnet as well. Uh, so, sorry, Boogie on the Mulan going 12-0-2, complete no different. Happy to just move on to the next uh, game there and try and convince another no defer there by Boogie uh, and 12-0-2, 4-0-8. And like you say, the participation from the little Luke going for 17 assists there just sort of showed you how sticky Lady Sun uh, and Princess Frost and little Luke was. And then whenever aided by themselves and rotated through as the trio, they then was met with Mulan. Uh, and just looking at the damage dealt there, 27.5k. Lady Sun, even though not claiming as many kills as Buggy, still had 23.4%. I feel like that's the Buggy definitely deserves the MVP on this one, however. I think with a scoreline of 12-0-2, there is no, no doubt about it, because Buggy was just everywhere towards the back line, being able to get kills over and over again. And despite a not so great laning stage uh, being ganked over and over again, he was able to recover very well and uh, definitely earned the MVP in my books. Yes, MVP was well earned there by Boogie. Even though he hasn't even come up on the screen yet, we are still... If the producer <laughs> says otherwise, I think me and Zero will just riot 
Uh, but looking at the jungle objectives there, we saw a little bit more of a presence in the jungle for Major Pride, uh, especially compared to how they played yesterday again for Chaos. But then again, for Chaos was a whole different breed. And RX still from the same region, still got to prove themselves that they are better than put chaos. But one tyrant, one shadow tyrant, and one overlord. We didn't even get to see the tempest dragon even come through like we did see this time around. This time yesterday, we saw that the tempest dragon was up for grabs. But this time today is a different story. Yeah, very fast games from NRX. The moment they hit their timings, they just put their foots on their gas and never even thought about taking a break because they just kept running around, kept being able to deal with the map pressure that the Prince of Landing was trying to create on the opposite sides of the map because they know as long as they stick together and take these favorable team fights, they'll be able to take the victory eventually. So great game here from the side of N IW NRX. There, there we, we have go. it. Mr. Boogie with the MVP. Thank you, producer. Thank you, team over <laughs> in Istanbul for agreeing with us. That 12-0 definitely needs highlighting, and I'm pretty sure we'll get some highlight reels here soon from Boogie himself. But yes, definitely carrying that team. Definitely learning a thing from uh, BJK yesterday because the, the Mulan pick was actually picked up by Boogie yesterday. It was It's clearly a favorable pick. It was taken from him, used against him, but this time he's like, you know what? I'm going to show you that Mulan is actually my pick, and I'm very comfortable with this hero. And uh, sitting at 13.2k gold as well towards the end of the match is huge here from Buggy. Uh, we saw nothing very, we saw nothing come close on the side of Major Pride, but here it is. Here's the replay, uh, replay reel from Buggy. Some great rotations early on. Um just mirroring what the Gun Mo was doing allowed him to get an early kill on Thursday Zangfei. And Kinesis had to sacrifice himself for a kill on Thursday this time here, not the best of situations. So that sort of stunted his growth a little bit despite getting a kill on Thursday Lady Sun. And meanwhile, this is where Buggy started to take over mm. the game, getting a solo kill on Thursday Charlotte. Then you'll see him start moving across the map, start pressuring across the map as well. And, and and yeah, despite you know Major Pride getting some great kills across the map er, uh, early on, they weren't able to capitalize. This was the huge turning point here. The lady, the Princess Frost, the ultimate answer is the backline is just stopping any sort of backup, being able to uh, isolate Linsky here, getting the kill. And here we have Buggy just doing whatever he wants with the whole lineup of Major Pride, just diving in, knowing that there is no more contest from their side if they get the, the ace for the team as well. Absolutely. I mean, you can see why the Prince of Len Ling was actually picked, and it was all just to try and take down uh, the Princess Frost, which happened in a few certain scenarios, but not every time was it very successful. And when it wasn't successful, you saw those team fights go heavily in the favor of NRX, and just showing that Boogie just re-engages, has his own 1v1s, has his way with Charlotte up in the, bar uh, the clash lane, which doesn't quite happen as many times as you think you would. Charlotte is a great clash lane champion and we saw that uh, Jusuke Iski actually played very well on the Charlotte. I have to give props to the clash lane on the side of Major Pride for actually playing probably I would say it's the best performance uh, within the game. Second close to uh, Prince of Lan Ling. At this point in time you know there's nothing much that Major Fry can really do. They tried to take this fight, which would have been great for them, but only getting one kill out of that really was, uh, wasn't the best situation they would hope for. That would have been a good way to come back in the game, was uh, just wiping out the entire team, but that was just not enough, getting only one kill. And with that, that, was gonna, that is going to be IWNRX taking the lead in this best of three series with a very convincing win against... Uh, against Major Pride, but can Major Pride come back in the second game? That is yet to be seen because Major Pride has not won a single map yet. Absolutely. I mean, going into day two, not having a single match win yet is definitely a mental boom. I know I would be feeling it right now if I was one of the players on Major Pride, but I feel like the draft just isn't quite there. It's like you yeah. said, in the original draft, it's very unconventional. It's not quite the meta. They generally have some of the champions that we see like uh, situational picks like the Ganmo, especially for Brazilian teams. It was huge in Chakvyar. But then Major Pride come through, pick it, and then don't quite follow through with it. There was too much of a heavy rotation. There was enough demand or uh, care done against the mid lane for Ga uh, Ganmo because we saw that the first hit turret was still alive 
as they were pushing the Nexus. So it's like they need to just rethink what they want to do. I would say heavily suggest banning uh, the Princess Frost, even though I, I'm pretty sure it doesn't really matter who you ban for Fu here. He has showed an incredible display of many heroes currently within this Invitational. Absolutely, it is a very important, uh, you know, lessons to be learned here for the side of Major Pride. They had to identify the weaknesses in their compositions. They played the game pretty well. The early game rotations were great. They were able to get the lead at a certain points in time. But the mid game of on, in honor of Kings is all about team fighting. It's all about mm. sticking together, taking these favorable fights, and transitioning those winning fights into getting objectives across the map. And if you don't win the fights, if you don't take step number one, you'll not be able to progress into step number two and three, and that is where the uh, major price sort of fell off towards the, mid, uh, the middle stages of the game. Absolutely, major pride showing some major problems in that mid to late game, and like you say, but when you see NRX and seeing these stacked team comps, especially when we saw the Boogie was going against the Mulan yesterday, maybe picked up a, a one or two things from mm -hmm. BJK's uh, Clash laner, so he's improved that Mulan uh, gameplay. Uh, but then you see the likes of the Kaiser come through, how sticky that champion is. We had the little Luke come through as well, and uh, which complements that champion very much, uh, that hero, sorry, very well. The synergy came through and shined and clearly showed it that victory with NRX. Yep, they still have one more chance to to make a statement here in game two of this uh, in game two of this best of three series. But before that, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna take a short break before we come back with game two between Major Pride and IW NRX. See you guys in a bit. because they have not only the most experience. But the sustains next target. From the little dude keeps them up and running. Keeps them, them healthy on land. Goes the back line trying to burst someone down. They will bring down a view and Jen is absolutely huge. And huge down, down, down, down, down, and for the damage leader from the side. All men are X is able to just get up down. And, okay, and now the, the Vanguard here uh, with the dragon as well to help the foot of chaos going through lamp so we did it through lamp fashion doing lots of damage like the assassin that he is getting it Welcome back, everybody, to the game two of match one between Major Pride versus NRX. Uh, I am Blam, those that are tuning in, and with me, I have my uh, co streaming partner. It is Mr. Zero. How do we feel how that match went earlier? I felt like, you know, Major Pride definitely had issues that they needed to fix. Let's see if they're able to do that in. Uh, coming into game number two of this best of three series it is still the group stages but you you kind of want to take a win here to be able to you know keep everybody's morales up uh not keep your morales up because if you go into the last game of the group stages without a single win that is going to hurt mm. your uh, entire team morale and a win here even despite not winning the entire series by itself will go a long way to allow these players to perform at their fullest potential yeah, like I said in the introduction to, the, to day one, um, Major Pride only really have today and tomorrow to really show where they can stand in this group stage. And currently, it's not looking too well for the team. We hope that they can bring this back in the game two of match one of the day. Uh, we would love to see, as casters, there is nothing more we love seeing is a full best of three, a full meaty, well-developed best of three narrative driven game so this is where the narrative starts into the bands and drafts here for game number two all right nrx just picks up the princess for straight away <laughs> and they're sticking to the same bands as well i mean when and the landing man out here for 
NRX, while Major Pride banning out the Dun as well as the Dark Shell. And, but this time, they're gonna have a different opening here, picking up the Musashi as their first pick, because uh, NRX has been banning it in the second phase against them. Absolutely. So the Musashi is a great pick. We saw it come through um, a few Once. times yesterday. Um, was it in the STE game, I believe it was? Uh, Musashi... One of we the saw games, him twice. there's definitely a Musashi. Yeah, saw him twice. Currently sitting at a 0% win rate here. Obviously, the sample pool is not big. We've only had six games, but it shows that there is a learning curve to Musashi as a hero. Uh, but looking at Masashi's uh, counterparts here, we have uh, the Zhang Fei come through again, but they're going for the Byron in the Clash Lane over the Charlotte. So not banning out Charlotte because they've taken the Mulan again, and rightfully so. I don't know why the Mulan was not considered in the first Prio picks there, because Dunn is not the issue. They can pick the Kaiser regardless. Absolutely, and NRX does pick up the Kaiser once again. No more little loot to partner up with him this time, though. So, We're the Leah is open. Yeah. Is NRX going to go for it? I mean, can they see it? They ban out the Sunbin, which is not going to do a lot against uh, the lineup on the side of well, Major Pride. I mean, it, the silence is annoying, but does do they really care when you have a Zhang Fei and a Byron who is very meaty and tanky and can stand in the front lines? You kind of need to take away uh, the supports for the Kaiser to that allows him to play like a Kaiser. Absolutely. I mean, it would take those away from him, add an addition of a, a Lou Bird on T team, and then you're pretty much onto a potential contesting of the Kaiser, but they are sticking to the Duran G here. I feel like this, this hero didn't really give much to this team comp, but yes, he has the Purify. There isn't much of in terms of the CC just yet on the side of NRX other than the slows uh, from the Princess Frost. Um, but again, the CC just won't. It's not. A it's just not a stopping force for either the Mulan or the Kaiser, especially if they lock in that Dolia as well. But let's see what NRX go for in these last two picks. They need their farm lane and they need their roam. Plenty of rooms and plenty of. We have the Ali hovered over here, currently sitting at the 100% win rate, and there it is. There we have I, it. I think we can just, we can just surmise <laughs> what's going to happen in this match here. Dolia finally getting locked in after seven games total in Invitational Season 1, and then they lock in the Angela in a mid lane to try and contest the Princess Frost. Again, this was another matchup that we saw with Star Wars Esports versus Alpha 7. Yeah, I, I, I'm not really convinced here by the Angela pick. I was looking at the lineup of Major Pride and the same mm. problem still stands. They don't have great team fight. They don't have this large area of control that, that the Kaiser is afraid to walk into. Right now, he can just avoid the Angela and go straight towards the back lines and there's nothing he can really do about it. Something like a Lady Zen would, be, would have been a better pick in towards the mid lane or even just a Zhou Yu, which, mm. uh, which can you know create areas where people are afraid to step in. But with the Angela, it's not really as potent as the other uh, mid lane mages can provide. Absolutely. I mean, we saw the, the Angela played very well there on suits in A7, but that, again, it was just because of the understanding of the champion, the uh, CCM unity of uh, this hero uh, in this game is can be quite a playmaker, like we saw yesterday, even though suits uh, honorably actually <laughs> said it was a mistake. Still in my brain, I'm taking it as that is skilled. He knew what he was doing. He was just being humble. It was just a humble brag. Ah, it's just a mistake. It's like, no, bro, you definitely <laughs> knew what was going on there. The insane knowledge of that champion was, uh, hero, sorry, was crazy. But yeah, I mean, again, like you said, that the draft of Major Pride, they just lack any sort of team fight. They've got the Zhang Fei, who is mainly there just staple hero here we saw Zhang Fei do uh, quite a bit of nuisance towards uh, NRX but it just wasn't enough especially with the likes of the Kaiser and now that they've got the the Arlie that can just teleport around free roam I don't know they've got the Princess Frost two of the three out of the five return for game two and you could arguably say that you could change the other two positions uh, around, which is the farm and the roam. But keeping that mid jungle and clash lane, 
you can do anything with that. It's an unstoppable force, especially Buggy. 12-0 on the Mulan in game one. Yeah, and this, this lineup for NRX, I mean, if you had to make a tier list of every single uh, hero in, in their respective roles, they must Enemy have just picked all five tier zero five heroes seconds. on their lineup. I wonder what went all wrong in, in the ban phase. I mean, allowing NRX to be able to pick up all these top tier heroes, arguably only maybe the Mulan isn't uh, as great as, you know, something like a Byron. But we've seen Buggy, he can make any hero look like a tier, tier zero hero. Absolutely. I mean, he's definitely a clash lane player to his own. He is uh, test, uh, test, uh, tried and tested in three matches now, uh, especially against BJK, who have their own great uh, clash lane player uh, with an amazing macro. We saw them absolutely destroy on the Mulan, but it's clearly either just the Turkish region have great clash lane players here, or <laughs> it's just the Mulan pick is just so good for this game. Petition's coming, going towards the top lane. Byron has support from the Zhang Fei to try and take this jungle creep. Oh, but here comes the same story once again. Is this gonna be just another repeat? Are you gonna get a kill on Toshi Suiski? Oh. Yes, they are. Again, it's gonna be Princess Frost getting the first blood. And deja vu moments happening once again. Yeah, a black cat has just walked across my screen. Deja vu has happened. There is a glitch in the matrix because we've just seen the same first blood play happen over again for NRX. But hey, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Uh, Princess Frost taking up the first blood again, which, as always, as we always state, is huge for your team in terms of the bonus gold. But Dolian they're rotating back down to the farm lane to aid the Arlie. But once again, we're getting a 2v1 here. Major Pride are not happy with that first blood and counter it fairly quickly with Musashi. Yeah, Musashi definitely wants that kill, allowing him to get to his Axe of Torment as quickly as possible because that's a huge power spike for your jungle player. Especially for a hero like Musashi, you want to be able to chain your... You, you want to be able to keep getting kills every time your skills are off cooldown. So, good uh, good return here from the side of Major Pride. Can they keep the tempo up though? That remains to be seen. Yes, the gas is clearly on and we're waiting for NRX to cook. But so far, so good uh, in terms of the, the, the game itself. We're seeing a very similar first blood go on, but from Major Pride's side, we're actually seeing a bit more aggression, especially with the Musashi pick here. And I feel like you can do that with Musashi because he's got so much within his kit. Yes, Prince of Langling has that single target lockdown that you can do and completely wipe them out before their teammates can even get to them, especially if they lack any kind of CC. Um, but the Musashi is just as great in terms of knock-up, ganking, he has it all in his kit. He's a great champion, a great hero for the jungle. Absolutely, yeah. Gretzky trying his luck, not able to land his skill in towards the bottom. Oh, once again, again, they really want to gonna shut be a two down. two on two here, everyone looking pretty low. Byron getting almost wiped out there, just not as quick as a cooldown on his ultimate, but under the turret, Boogie does fall to Musashi. Musashi getting the CC immunity, but they do trade 2-2 two, two up in the clash lane. Having a little bit of a fan do fun there. 2-2 two, two trade by M uh, Major Pride. So thank you, Turret, for making that an even trade to Major Pride. You are a true MVP within this game already. Uh, we see Farm Lane having a little... It's not having the same kind of fun. Uh, Arlie taking a lot of damage here, but with the Princess Frost uh, rotation, it's a help and gain of some farm as well. But once again, just looking at this 2v2 clash, just goes on for years, it seems. All very tanky heroes just dying in the tower. Buggy did have to pay with his life and still as well had having to commit for that kill and pay with his life as well. Ended up with a 2 for 2 trade. I mean, Alimsky got most ex most of the experience from that, so he's gonna be pretty happy mm. with how that went. That allows him to get to his second level of his ultimate. That is gonna be an mm. extra bit of burst damage coming when he, they want to try and contest for this tyrant. Absolutely. We can see that he's planning on building an Axe of Torment and he has just finished off the item there. We saw from the second tier item that that was definitely uh, the first piece of kit he was looking at going for. But once again, we're trading the Tyrant for the Overlord. It worked pretty well in the first game, but we get a four on two tr uh, dive here. Potential first turret going over to Major Pride. So a little bit of a change up here. Okay, I am listening. My, I am sat down. 
both ears are open and I'm listening to Major Pride looking for the first turret. But Mulan does answer it up in the clash lane, uncontested by Byron. And they want a little bit more here, but the Princess Frost D push is just way too strong. Just dropping the ultimate a lot, just clearing the Q-Wars as well. Musashi going towards the bottom lane, trying to get a kill towards the early, but he might have paid with his life. This is a little bit more than he can chew. Angela able to land the skill and get AQ on towards the Dalia. That means no partner here for the Kaiser. The Kaiser only have one ultimate, and he uses it, goes to try and go for Kinesis. Kinesis gets caught as well, and Arli will be the one to clean him up. And that ends up with an unfavorable trade here for the side of Major Pride because the rotations were just way too fast coming from the side of MRX. Yeah, just when you think the Kaiser is going to be your end, you see the Arlie comes round with the floating umbrella, teleports in and just finishes off the damage there, especially with the stacks. And it looks like there is going to be a finish off for the turret here, but it's left to the Vanguard to do that. So that eases up NRX for a uh, looking for a rotation here potentially in the mid lane because they have both side lane turrets now opening that mid lane could be deadly for nrx uh, for major pride sorry but a big bush gank there by uh, red ski on the angela down goes the staple champion then it's kaiser but Ali is coming back with a kill one two disengage musashi gets taken down by Princess Frost, back of the queue there is Mulan, Boogie just doing what Boogie does best with the CC immunity now wearing off, he has to be careful from this Jank Bay. Jank Bay been left alone, left to bend on a Mulan all on his own and Boogie secures a double kill, I feel like that was a mutiny by Major Pride, a Red Ski there just leaving Jank Bay all alone with Boogie. She had both the jungle buffs after being, uh, being able to bring down the uh, the Kaiser, so she did not want to give that away. <laughs> and that just resulted in his, his team almost getting wiped there. And there wasn't really much that they could do. They will lose this tier 1 power as well with just yet another push. This Mulan, this buggy on the Mulan has just been a problem here for the side of Major Prime for both games. Absolutely. He's not even built like crowd control boots because they, they just have lack of on the side <laughs> of Major Pride. He doesn't need it. He's just gone for the... Uh, uh, is that attack speed or is it... The rotate, physical like, resistance. Rotate yeah, physical resistance there on the side of uh, NRX with Boogie there. It's just like, you know what? I don't need the CC production. I don't really have much other than the, uh, the Angela. And she just literally flees the fight, not wanting to give me those sweet jungle buffs to give over. But to be fair, I don't... I'm, I don't, I'm not jealous of uh, Red Ski in that situation. It is a hard situation to be in. Do you defend your mid turret? Do you go and give over those buffs to uh, the enemy uh, Mulan, who is already stacked already? Or do you just farm? And in that case, unfortunately, towards the end, we did see that the mid terror falls there as well. So all three uh, first tier turrets fall in. So it's great open season here for the enemy jungle on the side of NRX. Oh. We see that Arlie manages to pick off the Angela in the back line there. Limsky looking at the bit of troubles. He does manage to get the knock up onto Mulan, but Mulan goes in with the help of Kaiser. Mulan getting the kill there onto Musashi. Arlie doing bits in the mid lane, still taking down Jungfei. Takes down the second tier turret in the mid lane, and we have that slowdown on the minions. But could this be the first high ground turret takedown? Looking like it, for like it for sure. Three heals already dead. There might be more. She's swiftly dropping very low. The Mulan going straight behind and won't be able to get the kill. That is going to be the tier 3 tower falling here. Golia dropping very low to us from the Angela, but able to just escape just before they respawn. But this, this might be not be a it. fight. NRX, do this not, you do not want to take this fight. This Ooh. is a bit too aggressive. Musashi gets a kill, might get a second on towards the Mulan, but will be able to escape is the Mulan being backed up there by the Golia and NRX, that was a little bit too risky for my book, but they managed to escape with barely a scratch. Absolutely, where they limited the collateral uh, collateral damage there was only uh, still, but we're having a bit of a fight oh. here. Alimsky goes in, takes down the Ali, and has taken down Princess Frost as well. This could be the result of the badly managed damage control there, because uh, now Kaiser's there, they don't have a front line. Mulan was definitely not present in that team fight because. Uh, three of her teammates have now fallen to a 3-0 trade and we can actually see Major Pride open up that mid lane turret which could be fruitful for Major Pride in going into the 10th minute of this game. Absolutely huge, that allows them to get a bit more map control, a bit more gold going their way as well and if they rotate well they can get all the jungle buffs away from the side of NRX which opens up the 
Vanguard as well as the Overlord, but Reski a bit too aggressive here. The Kaiser pops the ultimate, Zhang Bei has to use his to knock him back as well. So that means there is no ultimate for the Zhang Bei for the upcoming Over, uh, Overlord and the Tyrant fight. But it looks like everyone is just gonna back off and just take a chill pill for now. Just wait for yeah, everyone just, to regroup. Just push that minion way back in the mid lane because they do have the super creeps there. Thanks for the high ground being taken. Uh, but like you say, the Tyrant is now up. I feel like there's going to be a big fight, a big pressure here, but Kaiser is not quite there. He's looking to push the Clash Lane instead, just to make sure that he can keep away a 4-5-B-5 here. But Basashi has got his head in the right place. He's closer to the Tyrant than the Kaiser is. So it could be all to play for here. If we could see a positive outcome for Major Pride to coming through, it could be huge here. But uh, Sususki is going to uh, fall, but no, he escapes. He escapes just like in the CGI of Byron there we saw <laughs> earlier before the show. And it's looking like Red Team are trying to stack up this Tyrant. Kaiser is on the rotate. Uh, Jack Bay goes down by Arlie there. He sees immunity from Musashi, but Musashi is taking too much damage from the Princess Frost. He goes down. Derenji goes down by the Mulan thing, taking a double kill and the Tyrant pickup as well. The only thing stopping them from taking the crystal is Byron, who managed to escape the grasp of Kaiser earlier. But I don't think he's going to manage to escape this now. Not, no, no chance. Here comes the minions. Here comes NRX to finish a much quicker game to completely devastating major pride in this 2-0 victory. One side it would be a way to describe this match and even the match before because NRX it seems like once they hit that mid game timing, there was just no stopping them. There was no team fight that was able to be mounted up here from the side of uh, Major Pride. And uh, the hero picks once again come into question. This Angela didn't really do a lot, not really, not able to snowball out of control. And when your Angela doesn't do a lot of damage, that's when you're, you know, that's when you face the issue of uh, just being a completely useless uh, mage from the side of Major Pride. And with that, 0 and 2. That is going to be the scoreline here for the side of Major Pry, and not a single bad win yet. Yeah, it's not looking good for those fighting words within the introduction. It was definitely all a bit of a play rather than a, a stack up of showing that they can back up their words. It's a, a clean sweep for the Turkish region here, currently taking 2-0. Uh, twice from Major Pride, once from Foot Chaos, and now from NRX. And to be fair to the lads, they needed that win after day one just to keep their representation within the group stages and make sure they get into the middle of that uh, bracket mm -hmm. just so they don't get picked as an easy team going into uh, the knockout stage. Absolutely. Very fast game here um, in game number two with not a single hero reaching that 10,000 net worth graph, but no. they had more than enough to bring take this victory here for the side of NRX. O307 performed really well this game, being able to snipe off heroes again and again, able to catch off the Angela, able to escape uh, with her mobility. That was a great showing mm. here from O307. Absolutely. I mean, the Dolia actually didn't stick too much to the Kaiser as we yeah. thought. We saw the uh, uh, Dolia just just hanging around, just doing what she does best, which was getting those uh, random one-up knockups and uh, potentially just uh, aiding as the support roam does. Uh, team fight uh, participation for Dolia is definitely the highest, and we saw that the proof was in the pudding. She was there every team fight, helping out the team and really giving 0307 what I would consider the MVP for this match, going 6-1 for the Arly pick, still maintaining that 100% win rate right now within Season 1 Invitational. Again, for Major Pride, it is a major blow for them going into Day 2, losing another 2-0. But this is NRX, they went toe-to-toe -to -toe with BJK, but BJK came out on top. We saw those matches both go the whole distance, and just to know that Major Pride got completely done in by Foot Chaos yesterday, it was just going to be a little bit of the same, especially as we saw that Game 2 draft come through, which is like, yo, no chance. And there it is. Absolutely no chance. Oshi 07, fantastic showing here on the Arly with uh, only one death. Uh, considering you know you're playing against a Musashi, you're playing against an Angela, you have to be really mobile, you have to be really nimble on your feet to be able to escape those 
his heroes, and he did phenomenally able to do a lot of damage against his opponents as well. Well deserved, in my book. Absolutely. I mean, uh, the the show reel will play now, and we saw that the first blood did ever go over to Princess Frost, which was just seems to be the true NRX fashion here, because two games <laughs> in a row, Princess Frost getting both first bloods. But it's definitely not to overshadow everything that the Arley went through in terms of the plays and the outplays as well. Just being able to teleport around with that umbrella really shows that she is a high skill uh, champion. The roof on this champion is very, is, is limitless. Like, as long as you can learn that hero Arley, she can be huge in these competitive matches. And we just saw there a great play by the Arley. Dolia does get picked up there, unfortunately. But. A few little, a few little good things from Major Pride within that match. Nothing too much to shout about. I feel like the kind of maybe season one's too brutal for them. I feel like when we used to watch Foot Chaos in the wildcard qualifiers, mm -hmm. just getting brutally handled by these huge, amazing teams uh, across the seas, has really helped them develop into the team they are now, especially with their new coach as well. Maybe this is just the beginning of Major Pride story. They will be somewhat of a dark horse, potentially go into Season 2 Invitational. We don't know yet, but I feel like there's a lot to still be had by this team. They're still seeing glimmers of hope, but I feel like it's just a time constraint. Yeah, they, they are definitely a new team in the scene. They have plenty of room left to grow, plenty of things left to learn as well. So they will be definitely taking this tournament, this uh, the matches they played today, and uh, hopefully be looking into what they've done uh, not as good as the other teams and be able to get grow stronger for season two. Yep, well, so uh, that was it. <laughs> yeah, what a ferocious game to start the day. I mean, it was, wasn't quite up to scratch between the two uh, Turkish uh, teams yesterday but it still shows that NRX is here to stay and they are getting themselves a point within the group stages. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately for Major Pride, they have one major last stand tomorrow against another Turkish team. So they've had the taste of the Turkish team and it's unfortunately a bitter taste for <laughs> Major Pride currently. Oh yeah, definitely. It's uh, not looking good for Demon J as well. I mean, I don't think he's won a single game in the group stages so far. Uh, no, yeah, it's, it, it, if, he, if he has, it's very low, um, which is a shame Win because rate. the champion is uh, the hero has, uh, once again, just like Ali, has a huge roof in terms of the skill gap that can be attained by this champion. But uh, yeah, Derenji looking at 2-5, uh, but now that's gone down between two wins out of uh, eight matches. So it's not looking good, as you say, for the hero Derenji. <laughs> Yeah, maths. Uh, the math does not lie. Maybe they want to move away from you know these uh, the heroes that uh, require a lot of farm to be able to progress and not really scale towards the late game very well as well. You're just definitely one of those. We've seen great performances for by on on Huang Zhong mm. uh, in the previous uh, series that we've watched in day number one, and as well as the Arli. Of, of course, Arli has been really one of the top performing marksman that we've seen so far so uh, plenty of more games left to go we're only in game number four this is day one a uh, day two of the group stages we've only had four games happening so far but we'll have another absolute banger happening right after this as well absolutely so we are going on to vks versus twisted mind so two teams we have yet to see play I am super excited for this because the Brazilian teams are definitely showing why they have been invited to mm -hmm. this tournament and why they want to take that championship back home. But we know nothing about Twisted Mind yet. We know nothing about what they can do. Absolutely. They have a great coaching staff uh, uh, supporting them, but Twisted Minds and their roster is pretty new to the Honor of King scenes. While their opponents, Vivo Keystars, they are the champions. Mm. of the Brazilian Honor of Kings scene and they will be a very formidable opponent that they will be facing in the next game but we're going to be hearing from the winners of the previous match uh, against uh, Major Pride NRX it's going to be NRX one of the players and let's see what he has to say about the fantastic victory they had 
Dün olduğu gibi bugün de güne bir Türk takımının galibiyetiyle başladık. NRX'den Buggy ile birlikteyiz. Hemen sorularımıza geçeceğiz. Dünkü mağlubiyetten sonra takımda ne gibi ayarlamalar yapıldı? Neler konuşuldu Buggy? İlk sorumuz gelsin. Uh, you started off yesterday with a defeat and we are here with NRX Buggy of course. Uh, so after yesterday's defeat, what adjustments do you, did you make so that you were better prepared for today's match? Dünkü maçı aslında birinci maç çok güzel gidiyorduk, hiç hatasızdık. Ama bildiğiniz gibi bu oyun uzadıkça bir hataya mağlup oluyorsunuz. Ee, çalışmalarımıza gelirsek de hata yapmamaya çalışacağız. Taktiklerimiz yine devam edecek. Önümüzdeki bütün rakiplerimizi de eleyeceğiz. Uh, so yesterday the match actually started off pretty well, but as you know in this game, the longer the game goes on, the more your mistakes are. Uh, punishable by the enemy and you can just lose the game off of just one mistake and as for our preparations we will keep preparing we will keep bettering ourselves and we will eliminate all of our opponents Mulan Charlotte'dan daha güçlü birebir de sen de ilk karşılaşmada aslında bunu değerlendirdin kullandın neleri doğru yaptın performansını nasıl anlatırsın uh, Mulan is stronger than Charlotte in the 1v1s and you utilize, utilize that in the first game so what did you Uh, what correct things did you make during the first game and how do you feel about your own performance? Çünkü Charlotte'un zayıf noktalarını biliyorum. Bu aslında birazcık yetenek ve akıl isteyen bir oyun, akıl oyunu. Onu lane'de yenme yani e, yenmemin sebebi aklım ve yeteneğim. Um, I knew Charlotte's weak points and this game is like a skill game and it's all it also involves a lot of mind games and I was stronger on both parts I had I made better mind games and I was more skilled so that's how I defeated my opponent Türk takımların eşleşmeleri de gayet keyifli geçiyor burada e, heyecanlı geçiyor bundan sonra foot kaosla karşı karşıya geleceksiniz rakibine neler söylersin uh, The Turkish teams are also facing off against one another in this tournament and the next match you have is against foot kaos so what do you want to say to your opponents Onlara bol şans diliyorum. Görülmemiş bir hesabımız var. I wish them good luck and we still have uh, some things we need to square off. Bagi çok teşekkür ediyoruz. Başarılar diliyoruz. Bizim de maç sonu röportajlarımız devam edecek.
heard there's a mermaid in this area. <laughs> Out of ten Navinians, eleven would tell you that they've heard the mermaid singing. I wouldn't mind hearing it too. La la la la.
Welcome back, everybody, to day two of the Otter of Kings Season 1 Invitational Istanbul 2024. Those new joining us, myself, myself, my name is Blam, and with me is my co-host today, and his name is Zero. How's it going, Zero? How are we feeling after that match one? First game was a little bit quicker than we'd expect, you know, coming from... Uh, IIW and RX just absolutely destroying Major Pride in the mid games, mid uh, mid stages of the game in both series. That's why we ended up with a quick two and zero. Oh. But right now we're gonna have one of the best teams in the entire tournament, one of the best teams in the entire Brazilian community, playing against Twisted Minds, a team that we haven't really heard of or seen a lot of. So key, Vivo Key Stars are going to be looking like the favorites in this match, but Twisted Minds, you know. Uh, might be one of those dark horses that will surprise us all. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, we don't know much about Twisted Minds, but we know a lot about VKS, and mm. uh, VKS are the, the team that won at Chuck BR 2023. With a few new additions to their team, uh, which is definitely their farm lane and their roam, um, both of these players would sit nicely and definitely complement this team because these uh, two players have actually been to uh, KIC as well. Mm -hmm. They were in the wildcard qualifiers, part of the team Osiris as well, uh, which is Meng and Shi, and I believe it, it is it Wind, Wind, Wind RG, is it? Wind RG, the yes. Team? Yes. Uh, these two players uh, coming into BKS with the, the, the Titans are already on their team, which is Danny, uh, Niap, and Wan, which are uh, great players and when I've been watching them for out the Brazilian tournaments they've definitely shown why they are uh, worthy of being a champions once again in Invitational Season 1. Absolutely, they are the team to beat right now coming, uh, being the defending champions of the Brazilian Honor uh, Kings Championship uh, last year. So they mm. will be, I mean, it has been, what, four, five months since that tournament. So things might have changed. You know, you like you said, they had a new, they have, they're currently playing with a new roster with two new players. But if anything is to show, you do not lose your pedigree overnight, right? You're, you still have your core players. You still have Danny, you still have Nyap, you still have one thing for your team. And they are still very formidable by their own right. So it is going to be definitely a, a mountain to climb here for the side of Twisted Minds, but hey, they might just surprise us all. Absolutely, it's gonna see, it's gonna be interesting to see how VKS stack up against Alpha 7's performance from yesterday because we both know that in that game one, even though it was at the peril of Stalwart Esports losing that mid turret earlier, and I did make sure I made that pointed out to Clue, <laughs> who I was talking to later on. He was like, "Yes, don't worry about it. Our coach." definitely let us know about the mistake we made in game one. Uh, so it's nice to know that those casters and coaches have the same kind of knowledge of what's going on with these uh, players and what is the upset with these matches. But Alpha 7 making a really hard fought victory towards the end of game two yesterday and now VKS 
uh, here, which were the top seeded team going into KIC from the Brazil region. And Alpha 7 back then were only the third because Fluxo, who are no longer with us, uh, were the second seed. Absolutely. Defending champions and also one of the representatives for KIC 2023. Mm. Uh, definitely have a lot of experience under their belt. Definitely know the game, know the mechanics in and out, and definitely would not make a a simple mistake such as uh, trading your mid lane tower for the for an, uh, a side lane tower. But hey, just the minds might send them for a spin cycle because when you don't know what your opponent is up to, that's when they're the mm. scariest. Absolutely, and uh, I'm sure we got a little bit of a. Uh, is uh, once again is this coach a, a former KPL player as well, or is he just former KPL coach? For the side of Twisted Minds, they are one yes. of the, the teams that instead of you know uh, a coach having the coaching experience, uh, their coach mm -hmm. Orange was actually from uh, a player's uh, point of view. He he played in multiple KPL teams previously, so he's coming in with a uh, fresh new sort of mindset, uh, allowing and understanding the players a little bit more since he's been uh, the players, si since he's been one of the players himself. So that's going to be a Absolutely. very interesting dynamic that we'll see from the side of Twisted, uh, Twisted Minds. Absolutely. And uh, there we go. Look at how aggressive these lock-ins are. There is no contemplation about these champions uh, hero selections here we have kaiser and sun bin being the first two picks on the side of twisted minds not giving up that kaiser pick towards vks which we know we're favorable to with a chuck vr if it wasn't banned but looking over at the band champions for twisted minds we see uh, the chow and princess frost coming through and then on the side of vks we have byron and dolia so dolia now meeting the ban hammer where she wasn't banned in the first game of match one and was picked in match two. Interesting to see the Lady Sun picked up here for the side uh, of BKS this early on. They also have the uh, the Mai playing towards the mid lane, so not many mid lane hero, no, not many mages left in the pool for them to pick up. There is still for the side of Twisted Minds, maybe something like the Lady Zen. Maybe mm. they want to go for the Gan and Mo, which is pretty good against the uh, Lady Sun as well. But let's see what they will lock in. They do ban out two junglers with the Jing and the Lam ban, while VKS has banned out the Clash Laners, the Charlotte, and you might see perhaps a Mulan ban here, uh, because Twisted Minds is still missing a Clash Laner or jungle. They can still flex that Dharma will be the ban for the setup VKS. Yes, Dharma is one of those uh, big, uh, uh, like uh, huge ceiling skilled uh, clash lane heroes as well. So Dharma has actually been able to be picked through in these games yet. Hopefully we do get to see him, but once again, it takes huge skill to control and take the demand of this hero as well. But we see over the side of Twisted Minds, they do get the Marco Polo making his first appearance in the Season 1 Invitational, and they do lock down Dunn's favorite jungle, uh, not Dunn, sorry, NRX's favorite <laughs> jungler, Dunn. Dunn comes through once again, so it's going to be interesting to see what's left open here for BKS. Will they go for a uh, tanky uh, jungle, because obviously those assassin jungles are never taken up, but it's looking like Musashi is coming through, and I was just about to say, the Liam Po in the Clash lane it is one of their great picks. Yeah, it is pretty well rounded here from Sala VKS. Plenty of team fight with the Lian Po coming to play. They've got the physical damage that the Musashi as well as the Lady Sun is able to provide. They've also got the magical burst coming from Dan, uh, coming from the uh, Mai, and of course Zhang Fei always a good well rounded support. VKS is lined up looking very strong. Uh, while for very, very Mines, strong. Nuwa will be their mid laner, mm. not a hero we see a lot at all. A new challenger has entered the arena. We've never seen this mid mage come through yet, but I'm very excited to see that we are being considered 
some new picks within the heroes here. So uh, Noir, uh, we haven't seen yet, but is a great mage, has been teased quite a bit within these kind of scenarios where it's group stages where you try and figure out these new team two team compositions mm -hmm. uh but looking at bks like you say it's a tried and tested team comp it is strong it's all about like lady sun they have the jank bay to protect them the sashi with the great engages and uh, being able to gank as well from the jungle and then we have the Liampo as well so we have a great team fight uh, composition as well. We've got two huge brawlers that can go in. We've got Masashi who can pick off single target uh, play, uh, heroes. And then we've also got the, the Mai who, who has the get in and go uh, capability. And then Lady Sun towards the late game when she picks up those items like the Daybreaker can be an unstoppable force for BKS. Absolutely. But uh, meanwhile, on the SL Twist, in, in the other hand, Twisted Minds with the new one. I'm not sure how you would usually play around that mage. It is a pretty long range sort of bursting mage does provide a little bit of crowd control as well with the with the slows that she can do not to mention the global presence she has with the with her ultimate providing the laser across the map so that might be something uh, very interesting to see I mean Twisted Minds was one of those teams that we had close to no information about and I'm pretty sure with these picks if not surprising then they are at least not expected coming from the side of Twisted Minds Absolutely. I mean, the go for the dumb pick in the uh, jungle, which uh, again, we always say Dunn has a great uh, first three, four minutes uh, performance. He's very strong. Attack damage, his uh, base attack damage is definitely there. And then once he gets to level four, he has the uh, being able to fly over the wall with his ultimate the drag uh, and CC single target champions, but then also has the two procs up his first mm -hmm. ability with a knockup and then also the shield with the empowered attack so if we start seeing some kit that uh, embraces the empowered attacks on the dun we could be seeing a stopping force here but i think it's truly just keeping this marco polo uh, away from the likes of the mai and the musashi because as soon as they get in onto this champion you that true damage goes out the window absolutely it's there's gonna be a clash of of the new and the old, right? The old school and the new school, mm. the classics and the bizarre. Let's see how the first matchup is going to be because VKS definitely came towards this tournament ready to win. While Twisted Minds, they don't have expectations riding on their shoulders. They have no pressure. They are not expected to perform in any way. And sometimes those are the teams that are the scariest to face. Absolutely. Going into the unknown, uh, it's kind of like uh, <laughs> being the bane of villain of Batman. It's kind of just like <laughs> you, you. I was molded by this. All, all these big teams. They've learned from all this knowledge. You immediately adopted it. It's just like I'm really interested to see what Twisted Minds have up for grabs here in terms in of their team seconds. comp and players. And like you say, we Coach Orange, we could be seeing an unstoppable force here. Absolutely, but they still have to go through VKS first because this is not going to be the easiest matchup. The first showing of the Vivo Key Stars facing up against Twisted Minds in game number one of this best of three series. And wow, we have a party in the mid lane. Three heroes from the side of VKS rotating a Lady Sun towards the mid lane to, to help pressure a little bit as well as help clear the wave because we've talked about this. Uh, the Mai is not the best wave clear, and you always need a little extra bit of support to be able to rotate as quickly as possible. Absolutely, looking to try and go for that blue buff, but they were a little bit too late there to try and stop Kaiser taking the Sage Golem. But I have to give a shout out to VN there, but because that, that push check early on, that shows some knowledge of this game already that we didn't see from the likes of Major Pride. We see some great knowledge, some great mechanical knowledge from this player already from the sun bin checking those bushes for the Lady Sun and catching out the Lady Sun. So I, I'm really excited for this match right now. But it's all a little bit all over the place, like you say, with my not having the fastest clear. Uh, we are seeing a done up in Clash Lane right now as well. Um, yeah, going against the Lian Po should have the advantage. We saw Lian Po was actually quite battered to begin with. So I think it's just applying that pressure, maybe trying to get that lead with Dunn in the Clash Lane with the Kaiser as we see him rotating right now. Uh, again, I think it's just all about these first foots into the door for both of these teams. Yeah, who will be the aggressors? Who will be the one to strike first blood that's going to give the team a slight advantage to start? And the top lane, both jungles have already rotated over the Musashi 
is gonna spot out the uh, the dirt uh -oh. as well as the Kaiser. Uh -oh. Oh, oh one. my, just missing out. Almost getting my, the just missing here. out on that kill. Yeah, literally. I mean, Marco Polo just absolutely counts his blessings there, but he does have some uh, really good uh, get out of situations within his kit. So I think it was only right that he was able to actually get out of my advantage there. Uh, any of the sort of ADC would definitely struggle with my being the early aggressor within that one. But uh, a little bit of a late rotate there between Noir. Uh, by the side of Twisted Minds. It's all a little bit sort of, there's no real tempo going on right now. They're just trying to get the first kill through the door. It oh. seems Kaiser going in onto Mugenji and uh, Wind RG here. Very sticky Kaiser, back to Bison Bin and Marco Polo. Not quite getting what he wanted out of that one. BKS, Danny doing a lot of damage onto Dunn in the mid lane, still not securing a kill. There, I, I, there's a great sense of mental game being played here by BKS. Oh, and one's not Ooh. done yet. Going for the kill onto his Baladi, oh. Baladi able to escape with an inch of his health and looks like they are trying to turn things around falcon going for the lian pool lian pool is way too fast though and able to traverse the terrain getting into her safety no kills traded so far but both teams not looking very passive they are looking to get something done early on Dorani very well played there on that done anybody else would have fallen short to that mine i bet that's super Push straight in for VKS1 there, thinking he had the grasp of the kill twice, not once, but twice. Once on Marco Polo, one on Dunn. However, they do need to stop that brutal battering of that side lane turret in the farm lane right now, because if they start losing these side lane turrets, it opens up a great vision, a great access for Masashi to be, be even greater at these uh, ganks onto these squishy champions, especially when he's built the likes of the item of uh, your Axe of Torment for the squishy champions. So we're almost there for, for the Musashi, but uh, the Kaiser is going for the more tankier route, going for a bit more AoE damage with the burn as well. So a bit of uh, different ideologies and mindsets here. Bawadi trying to go for Win RJ, but it, way too fast is this Lady Sun being able to just escape with a roll away, and she's going to be able to live to see another day. Yeah. To, to be honest, I think if this was any other like warm-up match for Twisted Minds, I think we'd probably see a huge, uh, a huge win for them here. But it's against BKS and it's a champion team, and we see Mai going in onto the turret with Liam Po oh. with the knockup first blood onto Jin. Down goes Marco Polo, and again Niap showing why he's so good on this Liam Po pick. A triple kill. Can he get a quaddy waddy? No. Lady Sun takes the fourth kill from VKS Nyap. Oh my days. That was a slow burner, but it was a huge bang right there for VKS. Absolutely. They had they just went suddenly explosive Nyap with a huge two-man knockup towards the back lines. Just started things off for them and they just got four quick kills off the bat. That's gonna allow them to get this tyrant without any contest and they might actually try and go for the overlord to start off with, uh, to start as well absolutely i feel like uh, my statement originally was that my games were being played and speaking of my mind games are being played up in the clash lane with my against the dun here nice flash interaction on that second proc on the first skill but my almost taking him out there comes niap with the rotation taking down dun again so the person the only hero to survive that last interaction, that last four bang by VKS was done. And we see Nia take and finish the task there by taking down Dunn in the clash lane. Yeah, a really good tempo here from the side of VKS. They will be trying to steal away more and more resources from the side of uh, just the mines as well, being able to get the blue buff onto on Danny. And, but he's in, in a very dangerous position, but he doesn't care. Goes for the kill on towards Jin and might be able to just escape from this new wall a bit too late for the party. But Falcon is there, and that should be enough damage to punish. But meanwhile, in the top lanes, they die behind the tier 2 tower, will get the kill on towards the Dun, and that will allow them to take this tier 2 tower as well. Sacrifice on the Danny for a tier 2 turret. I'm pretty sure he'd be happy with his teammates there. Performing very well, BKS right now. Currently up in the Econ curve as well. They are up pretty much uh, 4k gold. Whilst Kaiser is looking to try and take a turret for his team. Twisted Minds here. 
It seems like that first three, four minutes was very, very slow. It was the build-up. It was the bubbling. It was the Mentos being put into the Coca-Cola and for it to explode it was that four bank down in the uh, farm lane by Niap. It was very crazy. It was very well played by BKS. But did I expect anything different? No. But to give it to where credit is due here for Twisted, uh, Twisted Mind, sorry, they are trying their best. And this to be your warm-up match within the Invitational, like I've already said, is a hard one. This is just punishable. Absolutely, but this is one of the best ways to learn. You know, you play against the strongest opponents right away. Take the lessons learned here, whether you win or lose. And then when you face off against, you know, someone that's not BKS or Alpha 7, then you, you would have a, a better chance of winning. Uh, you know, those are the silver linings when you're facing up against a team like, you know, Vivo Heat Stars. You, you get to learn from their movement, from their macro control, from their positioning, and utilize that in your upcoming matches. Absolutely. I think the only thing they can take away from this is R&D, but I do feel like Twisted Minds has been a little bit shafted here within the Season 1 Invitational because their next their next opponent is Star Wars Esports, and to finish off their opponents, it's Alpha 7. So they've had no easy walk in the park with the hand that they've been dealt, but I feel Twisted Minds still have a firm grasp on reality and potentially a win here, but... Uh, VKS just absolutely dominating the map. The tempo has been uh, illuminated and it is a fast tempo for VKS right now. Absolutely not wanting to take this game past the 15 minute mark. And uh, mm. th their heroes are playing very aggressively just, just to, you know, get themselves in a position where if they get a single pick off on any single player on the side of Twisted Minds, they're able to convert that into objectives across the map. That's why they're playing on their opponent's side of the map with RJ not afraid of anything at all because he knows that he has the Zhang Fei, he has the Lian Po to be able to kill for him if he's in any danger at all. And he's, he's rolling in aggressively, usually. As a Lady Sun player, when you see when you roll forward, that's always dangerous. <laughs> when you tr fully trust your teammates, that's when you can make these aggressive plays, and that pays off with a kill on towards Falcon. And with no, with the Vanguards pushing on towards the side lanes, BKS is going to be slowed down a little bit, but not completely deterred from taking this mid tier two tower. Absolutely, there's definitely two kinds of players that is Lady Sun players, and it's those that roll <laughs> forward and those that roll backwards. As you said there, but with Windargy. Knowing that his team, he, he is a roll forward player within Lady Sun. There is no Madam President, it is the Warrior President Lady coming through here. But again, a great engages coming from Niak on this Liam Po pick. But we've seen it all in Chuck VR. I am not surprised he has gone for this hero. It is a huge pick for BKS, it's a huge staple pick for the team as well. But this is the uh, little bit of lacking that we've seen in other teams like Major Pride, where they've had no real engage of the select ball for Jang Fei. And then their clash lane is with somebody like Charlotte, who has a high skill gap and roof. So to be a new team, to pick a champion a hero like that, is just a tricky step in get on the wrong foot already. But again, BKS going for the Tyrant, more than likely going to go for the Overlord, get those Vanguards again. Anything is possible with this team, because they're tempo, their coverage of this map is just unruly. Absolutely. 10 minutes in already losing that tier 3 tower, that's just a testament of how aggressive VKS have been playing. Any single pickoff, that should gives them an opening to be able to push the towers and Vien wasn't the pickoff that they were looking for. The, the Mai was looking for maybe someone special like Jin or maybe even mm. the Nuwa to be able to burst out before taking the next fight. But they will be happy with just taking this uh, Shadow Overlord, which is going to give them the Vanguards to be able to help push out the two side lanes. Absolutely. I mean, Mai just dodging every shot that's been fired at her right there up in the Clash lane. Uh, absolute skill, skillful use of the hero right there. And like you say, they picked up the Overlord, the Shadow Vanguard, the Blue Brooch. Look at the clear up that uh, farm lane uh, minion wave. They already taken the higher ground turret on the side of the Clash lane. And they're looking for it in the mid lane. Here comes through the minions in the mid lane, looking to force a little bit of a fight here between both these high ground turrets looking to just bait it so they stay far away from that mid lane high ground inhibitor there is the up with the amazing engage once again just huge knock of potential crew control straight into the crystal takedown bks with a solid one zero and they are hyped 
the trust, the, the championship trust in the team. That's why you see the Lian Po going in because he saw that the Mai was already cutting towards the back line. That was the go signal and go did go they did going straight towards the crystal, getting all five uh, members on the side of Twisted Minds wiped out and taking the game one victory with such absolute flair. That is amazing to see and that is why they were the champions of the Honor of Kings Brazil Championship. Absolutely, it's been tried and tested at this team. Uh, they don't need a change of a coach. This coach is definitely coaching them to victory and it's not just that, it's the players that demand the respect as well. But we don't even look, need to look at the overall post-game stats. That MVP is going to nobody other than Niap. Those engages on the Liampo were deadly. This is why, for the whole of day one, I was so confused why people just weren't picking up this hero, Liam Po. He has such great uh, a team fight potential. The knockups of his ultimate, he has triple knockup. They all do the same amount of damage as well. So if you start doing some real damage and reflecting that physical damage like you would do with uh, some of the items within this game, 507, Niap is a god on Liam Po right now. Absolutely beautiful. Style. Sure, the, the laning is a bit much weaker compared to heroes like the Byron or the Mulan, but the Empo mix up the, with that for the, the initiation it can do, the team fights that can just be swung towards their way just with the uh, Lian Po initiation that is showcased very well in this first game of this Best of Three series. And Niap with the 92% team fight participation rate, absolutely crazy. Um, Definitely the MVP in my book. Arguments can be made for one. He played ph phenomenally on the Mai as well. So I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if he was given the MVP as well. Someone's going to tell me that that 0% team rate fight on Dunn <laughs> is an error. Surely not. He was definitely in some team fights. I remember him being there. Maybe not for long, but he was definitely in those team fights <laughs> at some point, being whatever use he could be. But yeah, VKS, it was definitely, yeah, you do say it correctly, uh, Niap or one definitely deserved that. Uh, one taking on such a huge skill gap champion and handling it like a pro. And that is why VKS were the Brazilian champions. And one does take the MVP. They do go against me. I'll be writing a petition <laughs> to my local MP to get that overturned. Niap was absolutely, yes, yeah, <laughs> stolen MVP from Niap. If he doesn't get it in the next game, I feel like this is concluded. And uh, it's conclusion uh, completely against Niap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one did still play pretty well. I mean, like, like I said earlier, if it's not Niap, then it definitely has to be one. It is one of these heroes where Mai can just really shine or just can really fall flat. But this is, this is these replays are just going to show... Just look. I, I just, I, it's just gonna give your case a better, yeah. a better argument because this whole fight started off with Niap jumping towards the backline, gets a triple kill here, and allowing them to get the first huge team fight of the game. And here, maybe one the solo kill is fantastic to see. And then Niap just cleans up. Oh, Niap <laughs> is there. Come on, judge. Rule in my favor. Niap has been cheated. But no, well played to the chaos one, though. On that Mai, it was a really fantastic display of a champ. The hero there. Really well played, really well handled, and just be able to get in and out. Yes, we saw those two mishaps within the early game where Mai was able to close the kill, but. Again, mind games, that's what it was. Those mind games say, oh, I didn't get you there, but I'm going to get you now. But then just look at this beautiful ending, all set up by Niap. It's just phenomenal. Please, please, Absolutely. please. I'm praying, my hands are together. Please give Niap MVP for game two if he goes for Liempo. But I don't think Twisted Minds, if they're in the right mind, would keep that Liempo on the cards. They have to take it off, get rid of the Mai or else BKS so, will just take another stomp. It's just so weird. There's so many heroes to ban now. So many heroes that you have to watch out for. You got the Dachiao, you got the Dolia, you got mm. the Kaiser. Now against VKS, you want to ban out their, their Lian Po on, your, uh, on the Clash lane. You want to ban out the Mai, who's who won play phenomenally. It's, there's just not enough bans to go around and you just have to uh, put the plug in with a, a counter pick somehow. Uh, on your own lineup, you can't just always pick, you know, your comfort hero. Sometimes you have to pick the best hero for that game, not the best hero for yourself. And you know, these adjustments 
for a, a new team like Twisted Minds, they might not be able to spot out, but maybe Orange, as their coach, is uh, able to put uh, get his input in and hopefully steer them to a Game 2 victory as well. Absolutely. I mean, we can only hope for a uh, ball best of three because we don't mm -hmm. want another day of 2-0, 2-0, 2-0. Uh, if it is another day of 2-0-2-0-2-0, I feel like the most potential that we may get is this next uh, Turkish region face-off between BJK and Foot Chaos. But like you say, uh, Coach Orange may have something in the books here in terms of the uh, the draft bans here. But like you say, it's not about picking the, uh, the hero that's right for you, it's about picking the, the hero that's right for the team. But... But when you're forced to take Byron off the cards, take Charlotte off the cards, the Liam Poe is probably your next best bet, especially if you want those huge team fights like we saw. And especially when you haven't got a utility mage on your team, you've got Mai, yeah. who is more so an assassin. No doubt about it. This showcases how well that, you know, uh, VKS knows the games in and out. They know what their team composition is lacking. That's why they plug in that uh, Lian Po towards the uh, clash lane, knowing that they're going to pick up the Mai, backing in team fight control. Hey, let's pick up the Nianpo, perfect hero for the game, and also perfect hero to be played by Niap as well. Absolutely. I think the big shout out, though, is that all the power of VKS definitely come from uh, Mengenshi's twirly moustache. That I think that's <laughs> where all the plays are made. When he does that, that's it. It's game over. It's just like watching an anime and just like seeing the main character protagonist just roll up his Tash you know it's over. The, the, <laughs> the move, the movement, the finisher move is on its way, and they are definitely here to stay. VKS with a solid 1-0 there. The foreshadowing is strong in this one, and they definitely will have felt it in their bones here. Still, not the end of the road here for the side of Twisted Minds. They can make a comeback in game number two, but they will have their work cut out for them. There is plenty of uh, things they have to do better uh, in order to defeat a team such as VKS, because VKS in no way in this tournament is a pushover. I mean, they are one of the favorites to take this entire tournament. So they have to, you know, pull all the stops here for the side of Twisted Minds if they want to take a map away from uh, Vivo Key Stars. Absolutely. Uh, I believe, are we going to a short break here before we go into match two? Or are we getting straight into it? We're getting stuck in. They're getting on stage right now. Not sure about it, but I guess in the meantime, nope. we can just continue on rambling Absolutely. about how good VKS is. But Twisted Minds. I mean, we, we can also share. Hey, I can see myself. I'm on stage, mum. We're in <laughs> Istanbul. We're right there. Someone just put a kebab next to my, our little shrine of me and Zero, and we'll feel we are completely <laughs> in spirit with these teams. Uh, I can see myself adjusting myself. There we go. Beautiful. Beautiful. But yeah. BKS, uh, we saw a lot of talk about. We, t we heard a lot of talk between Alpha mm -hmm. 7 being the scary ones, but it's VKS that are putting the work in to show that they are also scary teams to be facing against, and especially being Twisted Minds, completely unknown. We don't know what is capable of VKS and what is capable of Twisted Minds. Mm -hmm. And we are now going to cut through to the break, guys, before we go to game two in match two of day two. I am Blam, with me is Zero, we'll see you soon.
How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to game two of day two of match two. I am Blem, those <laughs> new joining at home, and with me is Zero. After that match, how do you feel, Twisted, uh, Twisted Mind? Sorry, uh, how do you feel that they're gonna fare in this game at two? I mean, Vivo Key Stars were uh, one of the most feared teams in this tournament for a reason. They've showcased it in this game, the tempo that they play, the map understanding, the team fight positioning has absolutely been phenomenal from the Brazilian squad. And just the minds, definitely, after seeing that, know that they have a mountain ahead to climb. So let's hope that they sharpen up their pickaxes and their uh, cleats because they will need to climb this mountain eventually. Game two of this best of three series, of course, about to head underway. And there is a lot of expectations uh, on the set of Vivo Keystars to be able to perform well and make it towards the knockout stages uh, on top of the groups. But, you know, to some minds, if they are prepared well, if they do not under uh, if they do not you know lose their confidence in match. I will, I definitely see a chance for this to go into game number three. Absolutely, maybe not sharpening up their axes of torment, but maybe sharpening up some sort of anti tank item, especially for that uh, Liam Po and the Jung Fei. Their real big movement moving parts within that team fight capability of VKS. There, mm. they were the true tried efforts of starting everything. Uh, I feel like uh, McGinn Shi was completely undershadowed there, but as a roam, he was definitely uh, spotting, he was roaming, he was giving all the advantages to his team and opening it up for the Liampo and the Mai to come through and cut through clean. Twisted Minds take the Mai straight off the cards with the Princess Frost, which is, I think, a needed thing, but it means that other things are going to be open up for one in the mid lane. Yeah, there is not much utility mages left in uh, for the mid. Uh, something like Lady Zen could be an option if they want to go for uh, a, a, a mage that provides some crowd control. But if they if they do not, they can just go for uh, something else uh, in towards the mid lane. They can play more aggressively with uh, with like an Angela or a Da Xiao. They can play a Diao Chan, which provides them with uh, more late game potential. But knowing VKS and their huge hero pool, they can just pick up anything and that will Ooh. give they will always have the advantage. Oh, we see the Gambo and the Donkey Kong coming through on the side of Twisted Minds. A little a, a definite change up of their team comp from last match. They go for the Gambo, which I honestly thought the VKS may have picked up there. But it turns out they're going to go for it instead. Uh, and on the side of VKS, we do get another coin flip pick here from Niap. It is the Byron because it is open. It wasn't banned in the first two picks. And it's a great Clash Lane hero in competitive. Absolutely. It's uh, one of the those heroes that you, you always fear when you face up against it. The pay in the hands of any player from the side of VKS is going to be strong. <laughs> I'm expecting it to be a jungle though. Um, mm. One of the most aggressive jungle heroes that you can find. A, a, a jungle hero that rotates before the 4 minutes mark. After getting a single buff, after getting the Might Golden buff or even the Sage Golden buff, you'll see him start making things happen across the map. He's, he is in a way something like the Prince of Landling but more explosive mm. early on. Very strange that they've gone for the... Uh, we've only seen this ban twice, and I thought it's quite a miscellaneous kind of ban, which is Dr. Bien. Um, and then, mm -hmm. obviously, the Zhou Yu is a classic mid lane ban. So, Dr. Bien, we don't see get normally played. Uh, I'm not too sure where this ban comes from, or how this hero is situated within competitive. Obviously, the, the DOTs, the damage over time, the markings, the healing of your team, is a great necessity. Uh, but I don't feel like it's going to be a champion that is considered quite often within Season 1 Invitational, which is quite bizarre. But then on the side of BKS, they do ban out once again two great Baron laners, Charlotte and the uh, Doma. Exactly. The, the, going back to your point of the Dr. Bien ban, it's one of those heroes mm -hmm. that do really well against uh, the Dong Huang, able to keep uh, his able to do damage over time to the Dong Huang, not allowing him to transfer that damage over to whoever he has suppressed, while also healing the teammate at the same time. So a little bit of double dipping uh, on towards that mid laner, uh, 
for the side of Twist, uh, VKS if they decided to pick that up. But Twisted Minds not wanting to take against that. And hello, Nakaru! <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh, I mean, they may get stomped in this one, but Twisted Minds, <laughs> a new, uh, my new favorite team, they are picking some really cool picks. It's not quite like Major Pride where they come out with some strange picks and it doesn't quite make sense. But uh, they are showing that they know the game knowledge, they know these heroes, uh, the heroes, yeah. Uh, and then they go and pick uh, Nakamura as well, which is a, a great pick, but it is a squishy pick. If you cannot get onto those champions, it's game over for you. Uh, but yeah, like you say with the Pi, uh, Pi, a very great uh, hero, especially in the jungle. We don't necessarily see him being picked, but he was banned quite often yesterday as well. Uh, the Renji coming through, again, purify for a lot of these CCs um, that's on the side of Twisted Mind. And then we get the Angela in the mid lane. So the uh, one of the poster childs for Honor of Kings coming back through in the mid lane. Absolutely, dear. And it's going to be very interesting to see if BKS is able to turn things around for the DRNJ. That hero hasn't really been performing uh, in other games. But if any team can get a win for the side of the DRNJ, it definitely has to be BKS. I mean, in the hands of WinRJ, that DRNJ mm. is going to be a very scary force to be reckoned with. I mean, not only does it rhyme, it could be fate as well. So, uh, putting it on the VKS to get uh, the RNGs, uh win rate up is definitely a good bet to be made there. But going against the Lady Sun, going against the uh, Dong Huang, there, it, I feel like the isolation champion is just all about maybe locking down Niap maybe trying to punish the player himself rather than the hero because of how well Niap really dominated the rotations and the team fights there. But once again, it's a double-edged blade. You, you, suppress the, you suppress a hero, but then you're also taking that damage yourself. So you don't want to take too much damage to the point that you've just knocked out your own Rome support player. And we know how fatal that can be in team fights. I just realized something. If you if you take the letters on WinRJ's name and you mm -hmm. you add a space in the middle of his name, mm -hmm. his name becomes Win DRJ. Win DRJ. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. It is fate. It's been signed, sealed, delivered. It's definitely going to be a good match here between VKS and Twisted Minds going into game two of day two of match two. Could this be? Twisted Minds turnaround, or could it be the Twisted Demise that is going to be handed to them on the side of VKS? We will be uh, very much tuning in, locking into the Gorge very soon, and I'm very excited to see VKS play once again. This is going to be another challenge here for Twisted Minds. Can they get a win under their belt, or will VKS end this and make all the series so far clean 2-0 sweeps. 2-0 sweeps. I mean, this pattern has to break eventually. Will it be this series with VKS against Twisted Minds? This is game two of this best of three series representing uh, rep in group B. It is VKS going up against Twisted Minds. Yes, uh, I believe it's the only team from Saudi, Saudi Arabia, this Twisted Minds team, I believe it is. I think it's a uh, Saudi uh, org as well. So nice to see the uh, Saudi Arabia representation, especially when the mid-season Invitational is going to be hosted seconds. there, which is going to be a great tournament, especially seeing the Dream Team KPL uh, come through as well. But less about that, more about this. These Titans going head to head here. Uh, with a different team comp from the first game. But already we're getting those aggressive checks into the bush, but uh, we see that Gammo takes a lot of hits there. Yeah, it's uh, very annoying when you're laning alone against two of those heroes, but Gammo is not going to be too worried about that. They didn't have much kill potential at level one, so they're going to be fine, Gammo. You're gonna get their Sage Golem stolen there by the pain. We're talking about the aggressiveness that VKS can do with this pain. Look at Nyan getting a solo kill onto the top lane on the Dun. Uh, fantastic aggressive start here coming from the Brazilian squad. Yep, yep, definitely saying you, you should have banned. You should have banned Byron, not my. I am the issue. I am the issue, baby, and I want to be MVP this time. I am not going to get cheated. If he does get cheated, I feel like he'd be cheated by Danny this time because I feel like the the pie, the pay character here is going to be a great play. 
potential in these team fights and in these ganks and obviously fast rotations due to his tiger form as well. But uh, we saw VKS Danny is already helping himself to the enemy's jungle. He's now rotated to his uh, red buff and could be easily on his way to just help himself to another blue buff on his side. He's completely taken uh, Nakamura's uh, cooldown reduction and mana there. So that's going to really affect her early game potential. Yeah, Falcon's absolutely struggling right now. Not even level 4 at the moment, and the rotations are going to come Whoa. in. Oh, the skills miss. Almost, it's going to cost them a kill here for the side of 1. Rare mistake from the mid laner on the side of VKS. So Nakaru able to escape with her life, but so far her game is in absolute shambles. No blue buff, only level 4 at, not even level 4 at the moment. She is going to take a lot of work to be able to recover. Yeah. Absolutely, that is going to be a fatal recall, but it's also going to be fatal uh, mishap there for one. We did see it twice in the first uh, game of the day, uh, first game of this match, sorry, where he missed uh, the <laughs> the two kills onto Marco Polo and one of the other heroes of uh, Twisted Minds. But we see that Niap is, even though he's changed to champion, the Byron pick is still coming through, tried and tested up in the clash lane right now and uh, Angela with the CC immunity popping the ultimate doing a lot of damage onto Boadi and uh, Niap taking unnecessary, unnecessary, unnecessary damage from the turret acting as bait onto uh, the Danny and a one here I feel like this is going to be a clean three on two oh. could Boadi get the kill oh clean ultimate there but it is going to be a trade opening up for Danny giving him some more gold in advantage of the enemy jungle also Bawadi show, showcasing his understanding of the mechanics of that hero, be able to use the flicker to close out the distance and finish him off with an ultimate. Uh, that's gonna, if not win them the game, at least give them something to cheer for because that was a great play there from the side of Bawadi. Finally able to, you know, get something out of the app. That's gonna punish them a little bit. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, he's already contributed to the kills this time. I mean, it took them a very long time on the side of Twisted Minds to get a kill uh, in that first game of match uh, two. But uh, to be cleaning up so early could be a change of pace, a change of mind, a, a twisted mind, but a change of heart for the team here so far. Danny going 1v1 onto VN here. Uh, Nakamura tried to come round with the support onto Angela, but was already deleted the Dong Huang there. So no suppression for VKS right now. Oh, Magenchi coming around though. Beast mode stunning the uh, Lady Sun that she cannot escape and taking the kill from VKS Danny. 4-1's scoreline tower plating is gonna fall for the moment which allows the side of VKS to take this bottom tier 1 tower very easily. They're already cutting the waves with Winar J and Mugucci on towards the back lines. And also at the same time they will be able to get the the tyrant as well. So a lot of map pressure being uh, being put on here by, by Danny. Oh Nakaru trying to get a kill on towards the Angela. She's gonna get it, but can she escape with her life? Danny, oh able to dodge out the damage coming from the side of the gun and more, so able to barely escape there. But we want the top lane, yeah, being chased down there by Bawadi, but trying to turn things around. The tower is still left alive, but I'm pretty sure they are going to break it and then die for the kill on this Bawadi. What a fantastic uh, mechanic there, but also popping up in the mid lane is Twisted Mind Sun, get, uh, Lady Sun getting a double kill there onto Jang Fei and the Renji and opening it up that very important mid lane turret. Uh-oh, VKS right now taking down the Angela as well, but VN tries to come through. Uh, Byron takes down the uh, Ganon Mo, and then down goes a Dong Huang there to VKS Danny. So a little bit all over the place, but the most important, the very crucial thing that Twisted Mind actually managed to do there is take down that mid lane turret, which opens up, yes, to a very daring jungler, uh, Nakamura, but now has very much access to gank around this mid lane, gank through the enemy jungle if need be. They're really great movements there from just the mines. I identified that they cannot help the uh, the Dun on the top lane, decides to collapse on towards the mid, gets two kills, gets the tier one power as well. That's gonna help them stave off the bleeding a little bit, but BKS does not care. Hey, you open up my mid lane tower, we're gonna take your jungle anyways, because we don't really care. We are that confident in our uh, team fighting and skill that we're going to just go aggressively, as aggressively as they can. And that is really showcased right now because they are going to take the bottom tier 2 tower as well.
Yeah, pre-10 minutes, tier 2 turret down in the clash, uh, the farm lane. They definitely do not care. They know no bounds. BKS is not restricted by boundaries or turrets there. Opening it up both for the side lanes very nicely and even completely demolishing the clash, uh, the farm lane, sorry, all the way up until the higher ground. So I feel like that's a big opening there for uh, one, even though, I mean, Danny, sorry, even though he's able to just show that he didn't need the opening up already. He can go there wherever he, he goes, wherever he roams. Uh, Dong Hong uh, just getting caught out there by a few little bits of damage. Not being able to proc that stun onto Niap. But we do see they take down the second tier turret in the clash lane now. And uh, the, uh, Danny is looking to help himself to go for the Overlord as well. Again, just twisted minds uh, once again, like we keep saying, but this to be their opening match is huge, but there is lots for them to learn from this going into their next match tomorrow against Star Wars Esports. I really feel this team could actually give Star Wars a run for their money. Absolutely. It looks like, you know, even though they are behind 5,000 right now, they've been doing the right things. They're not taking these fights that they're not supposed to, but yeah, in my opinion, they're playing a little bit too safe for, for mm. when you're behind, you have to take certain risks to be able to try and come back from the game. But without that, Falcon just falling here uh, on the Nakaru, and they're gonna try and contest, uh, try and push up to the bottom tier 3 tower because they do have the Shadow Banger up and running. And they're gonna get a kill onto his Bawadi immediately. Meanwhile, Minguichi on the front lines opening things up, and they're gonna get the tier 3 tower pre 10 minutes and trying to actually bring down the crystal. Are they trying to break the record that was set on the previous day? It looks like they certainly are, but is this a mistake for the side of VKS? Ooh. Will this come back and bite them? The damage coming from the gun and more really hurting one, so they have to back off for now. Yeah, they was definitely trying to make a statement there against uh, Foot Chaos for taking the quickest and cleanest game yesterday. It didn't quite work out well for them, but they still have time. I mean, BKS, uh, uh, Foot Chaos's uh, qu quickest time was, I think it was just 12, under 11, 11 yeah, minutes. just under 11 minutes, yeah. So they still have time. They still have the leeway of three minutes, which in uh, Honor of Kings feels like 13, <laughs> 10 minutes. You know what I mean? So they could still do it. They could still make that statement. And it looks like they're trying to make the statement here, especially going for a clash in the mid lane. Whilst we got Niap pushing the clash lane as well, looking to try and take another high ground turret, but also force the enemy team Twisted Minds up there. There we go. First tier turret goes in the mid lane. Already repaying back their rep. Uh, Repentance for Twisted Mind taking it earlier. There's Pi taking down Bawadi there. So Dunn already goes down. It is a done deal to take the high ground turret in the clash lane also, whilst they're trying to force the minions into the crystal. But there's that slowdown that really stops them in their tracks. And it's going to be really frustrating for them to try and finish before Foot Chaos for taking the cleanest, quickest match yet in Season 1 Invitation. I don't know about clean, it's, it's been pretty brawly so far for, for both sides, but definitely one of the quickest games we had so far. Danny absolutely tearing apart uh, that Tyrant, but not in time before it's actually going to be upgraded into the Shadow mm. Tyrant. So a little bit uh, unfortunate timing there, he definitely could have just destroyed it in a couple more seconds. But still, they, they probably do not need that buff. Uh, to be able to break through the tier 3 at the moment. They are leading by almost 10,000 net worth in 10 minutes. So uh, they are in a great spot to take this victory. A great spot. I think it's a dream spot for any team to be in. Is uh, that far ahead? Pre-10 minutes. The pre uh, the 10 minute mark is now up. The Shadow Overlord is looking to be taken here by Danny with the help of McGinchy and Win R uh, RJ there. Uh, they do take it very quickly, and then we'll be spawning the Shadow Vanguard with his little buddy Vanguard as well, completely wiping out that mid lane minions, hoping to open up this mid, uh, mid lane takedown for BKS. And they're looking to start this mid lane turret now. Second tier turret that does go down. Wadi a little bit too mixed in deep, but has to ult out of there. Try to force as many skills as possible right now before they go for a clash under the crystal. There goes the last stand in high ground turret. Oh, Twisted Mind is literally just the boundaries left 
between themselves is the Shadow Vanguard and those minions. The one Young trying to do something unto the Derenji, but Derenji gets out of there as well alive. So not only have they traded 3 0, a VKS win rate RG is fighting with little help and they managed to take the crystal. Please tell me that was before, but Chaos is time there. If so, well, that is huge from the Brazilian champions. I think it was. I mean, it was 11.03. That's when the crystal uh, got destroyed here on by the side of VKS. And I think for Foot Chaos, they were at like 11 minutes and 40 seconds or 50 seconds. So if I'm not mistaken, Vivo Keystars has taken the game in the fastest time in this tournament so far. Absolutely amazing, aggressive gameplay coming from the Brazilian squad and well-deserved victory to them as well. Absolutely, but I've got, to, I've got to tip my hat to uh, Twisted Minds there. They, to be put against VKS, the Brazilian champions, in their first game in the Season 1 Invitational, is definitely uh, mm. a challenge already pre-game to go against these Brazilian ti uh, Titans right now. Uh, to be fair, they held their own. They did keep up for 11 minutes, even longer in the uh, first game as well, because they didn't have to contest with the huge engages and the Li Empo. But what they did have to contest with in this game was BKS Danny. And I feel like BKS Danny is definitely going to take that MVP, even though we saw the gr aggression from the room, Migenshi as well. I feel like he, this is a player that is just completely on the scene in all this, but is also a great playmaker towards mm -hmm. that mid to late game because he just has such aggression. He does not care. He goes beast mode. He stuns Lady Sun into the wall and then enables his team just to come around and just rock it and take anything in their lanes and in their ways. It's just beautiful team play by BKS. Yeah, I just noticed that Mengwichi went for the smite as well instead of the usual mm. uh, petrify or weaken. So they, they, this game plan of going aggressive was premeditated from the start. You have a pay, you want mm. to play fast. And how do you play fast? By stealing all of Nakarudu's jungle. And when you have two smites, you're going to be able to contest the jungle so, so quickly. And that one shut down Falcon to a point where he's pretty much uh, useless for the earliest points of the game and also allows mm. your team to play on the opposite of the map, uh, opposite side of the map so aggressively. Absolutely. I mean, just look at those stats, the team fight rates within them. I mean, obviously, other than the Angela and the Derenji, which is really, it's really funny to, to think that Derenji had only 29% considering he's meant to be around with the roam mm. uh, towards the later point of the game. So only have 29% is a little bit crazy there. So he's literally just been left alone to do whatever he wants to do. And even towards the end, Wind ROJ almost got, uh, saw the light at the end of the tunnel uh, when he got focused by Duan Huang. We thought it was going to be a takedown for, uh, Twisted Mind to take another kill there because they did, uh, didn't did take too many there. There was only six kills on the board, but we saw an early kill very much. Much better performance mm -hmm. by Twisted Minds, I feel. And I feel like this team can only get better with time. And there we have it. Not cheated at the MVP this time. <laughs> VKS, and he does take it, but we did agree this time. So thank you very much, those there. We have agreed, but I still will plead my case for Niap for MVP of game one. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, what was your thoughts afterwards of that? It's just the aggression, the pure aggression that, you know, VKS, they have been able to learn by playing in the KIC against all the great KPL teams that allow them to play at such a tempo where you know your opponents are not expecting. Especially if you're playing in the global server, you know, you've got new players who don't really understand the mechanics of the map, the timings, the, the, the, the power spikes and the windows. That is when you can really abuse it by playing really fast. So that is exactly what VKS did. They played super fast in a tempo that they, these teams probably have yet to see. And you know, when you're playing from behind at that fast of a game, and you've never done, you've never been that behind before, you're suddenly out of ideas. And you know, VKS, they just never put their foot off the gas, and they just went ham all the way through, towards the end. Absolutely. I mean, you saw it many times in like the wild card qualifier of KIC, where the people, uh, one of the teams' backs was against the wall. They had maybe one or two higher ground tur uh, turrets been taken down. But when it was into the fight, the Crystal uh, region, they would then just fight like it was the end of their lives uh, in the game. Uh, and then they would be able to bounce back 
and win, which was always a really sticky uh, turnaround and always shocked me within the wild card. But it seems like, as you say, Twisted Minds do play a little bit too comfortable when they are too far behind. Yeah. Great showing here from the Brazilian squad. He starts show showing us why they are one of the more scarier teams in this entire group stage. But, you know, this was what I was expected from Key Stars. They were expected to come to this tournament, absolutely slay everybody in their path, and make it towards the finals. Um, but, but Twisted Minds, unfortunately, could not do anything to stop that bit of rampage coming from them. Absolutely. I mean, we, we heard all yesterday about Alpha 7, Alpha mm -hmm. 7, Alpha 7, and nothing said about VKS. But VKS was just like, you know what? We don't need to hear that you're scared, <laughs> you're scared of us. We'll show you how and why you should be scared of us and that was directly so yes it's about it was against a new team just like uh foot chaos was against major pride so mm -hmm. there was a major skill gap difference between both of these teams going this being their first games especially foot chaos and uh vks both being a part of kic getting a very easy start within the group stages but going forward to tomorrow vks have a big big challenge to go against their brazilian counterpart Alpha 7, and then obviously uh, Foot Esports also has uh, BJK today, so they don't have easy fights going forward no. um, after this one. So yes, get your footings in early, but still prepare to fight hard. Mm. That is all the advice I give to BKS and uh, Foot Chaos, because these, these both these teams have proved that they can take down any team really fast so far, but again, they are new teams, but still should not be doubted. Absolutely. I mean, next the next matchup will be a banger as well. Besiktas Esports, uh, a team that you know has been has has been saying that you know they're they're one of the best in Turkey, and they'll be playing against Foot mm. Chaos, who who put themselves ahead of Besiktas Esports when they were uh, doing that post game interview. So this is gonna be a little bit of a grudge match between both of these teams. That's gonna be really exciting to see as well. Absolutely. I mean, when we had the uh, Foot Chaos interview, we heard some very fighting words, like you just said. But Chaos put themselves ahead of VJK, which may be denied the fact later on today, which is the final game of the day, final match of the day. Mm -hmm. uh, but soon we'll be able to hear from VKS to see what kind of fighting words they have for the other teams and maybe even for Alpha 7 tomorrow, because I feel like this is the kind of team that are, re are really aggressive mm -hmm. and aren't going to be just given a passive kind of interview but we'll be switching over the interview very soon to hear what BKS have to say about that match and their matchups to come. Herkese merhaba. Honor of Kings Invitational'ın ikinci gününün ikinci maçının sonuna geldik. Ben Scarlet, yanımda VKS'in orta koridor oyuncusu Wan var. Ee, güzel bir galibiyetle 2-0'a getirmeyi başardılar puanlarını. Onunla ilgili kendi performansları ile ilgili bir soru yönelteceğim öncelikle Wan'a. First of all, welcome and congratulations. With this victory, you are now 2 in the group. So how do you feel about your own performance after this victory? Uh, que, uh, que achas que você está a mostrar a sua capacidade de, de jogo de hoje? Eu acho que a gente tem treinado bastante, então a gente só aplicou o nosso desempenho. Nós só aplicou o nosso desempenho em game e, e é isso. Uh, they think that they did quite well today and they they uh, show their strength in the game. Ya bugün kendilerinizi, yani kendilerini ve e, güçlerini gösterdiğini düşünüyor. Gayet de memnun takımın performansından. İkinci sorumuz ilk maçla ilgili. E, beş dakikalık böyle yavaş geçen bir erken oyundan sonra bir anda tek bir takım savaşıyla maçı kurtar, koparmayı başarmışlardı. Onu yönelteceğim şimdi kendisine. E, after five minutes of stalemate in game one, e, you managed to find the perfect team fight in the bot lane, farm lane, and then you managed to gain the victory, quick victory. Uh, can you tell us more about the strategy in those moments? Uh, no primeiro jogo, primeiro tem um impasse e depois vocês fal, vocês faz um ataque muito bom no no bot lane. O que estava a pensar no nessa estratégia? A gente no draft a gente percebeu que o Marco Polo estava sem um purificar, ele estava desabilitar, desabilitar não. É... Dizer, ele estava de 
ele trocutar. Eu acho que ele trocutar o nome que fala. Aí nisso, pra o, pra o dive bot a gente tinha o push mid e o push bot. E com esse summon spell que ele tava, que não ajudava o dive, a gente conseguiu botar a cabeça com vantagem numérica. E o dive foi bem simples de executar. Uh, they were attacking both in the farm lane and the bot lane. Ah, uh, sorry, the bot lane and middle lane. Uh -huh. And they think it's better for them to, uh, to concentrate their strength in the bot lane and to uh, launch the final attack. Genel olarak zaten orta koridora ve alt koridora odaklı oynuyorduk. Ama alt koridorda daha rahat bir açıklık bulabileceğimizi fark ettik. Yani farm koridorunda daha büyük bir açıklık bulabileceğimizi fark ettik. Kasma koridoruna yönelip bu şekilde maçı kazandık dedi. Son sorumuza gelelim. Son sorumuz da B grubuyla alakalı. B grubunda en büyük rakipleri olarak kimleri görüyorlar? Bunu öğreneceğiz. So who does he think is his... Uh, is going to be his biggest challenge in Group B. Uh, qual é o an, uh, adversário maior em Group B para vocês? Eu acho que todos os times, não só o nosso grupo, mas o grupo A também, de todos eles, o nosso maior adversário somos nós mesmos. A gente precisa manter o foco e mostrar o mesmo desempenho que a gente tem, vem, vem tendo nos treinos. Então, o maior adversário que nós temos somos nós mesmos. Uh, they think that, first of all, the other team in the Group B is very good, but they think the biggest challenge for them is the team itself. It's the hardest thing to surpass uh, the team itself. Güzel bir cevap verdi bu arada. B grubundaki herkesin oldukça kuvvetli, bütün takımların oldukça kuvvetli olduğunu düşünüyormuş. Ama en büyük rakibimiz kendimiz. Yani kendileriyle birazcık kapışıyorlar diyebiliriz. Kendi sıkıntılarını çözdükleri takdirde daha iyi duruma gelecekler. Uh, thank you for joining me on this interview and best of luck in the next games. Uh, teşekkürümüzle ettiğimize göre artık sözü paslayabiliriz. Görüşmek üzere.
I heard there's a mermaid in this area. <laughs> Out of ten Navinians, eleven would tell you that they've heard the mermaid singing. I wouldn't mind hearing it too. La, la, la, la. Sustains next target from the little dude. Just the up and running. Just, just, just to help you on land. Put the back line trying to burst someone down. They will bring down a view and Jen is absolutely huge. And Bujan bounce down. Xiao Xiao is for the damage leader from the side. All Ben RX is able to just get up down. And, and now the, the Vanguard here uh, with the dragon as well just to help the foot of chaos going through lamp so we did it through lamp fashion doing lots of damage like the assassin that he is getting it
How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to day two. Now going on to match two, uh, match three, sorry, uh, which will be BJK versus Foot Chaos. Today, those new joining online, my name is Blam, and with me I have Zero as my co streaming host. How's it going? Thank you so much, Blam, for the introductions. And yes, we've been blessed with, or blessed or cursed. With game uh, with two old games so far, but hopefully this might be the one to break it all because we've got two great teams, BJK Besiktas Esports going up against Foot Chaos uh, as our closing match of the day. And we've heard in the pre-game, uh, the post-game interviews that you know Foot Chaos put themselves ahead of Besiktas Esports, so this might be a chance for Besiktas Esports to show them that they're wrong. Absolutely, I mean, either of these teams that win now will have a greater put it into the group stages but here we are looking at these lovely friendly but also aggressive faces <laughs> we have on the team of foot chaos we have ruga uh, noir uh, snape lost and void and then going on to bjk we have yeah on bjk we have liz attics Rekna, e2jj and yurian Kostra as their coach. We did see a fantastic game from uh, both Liz and Atix yesterday, mm. uh, not to mention Rekna as well. So these are the players that you definitely want to look out for on the side of uh, Besiktas Esports. Absolutely. I mean, um, BJK were the only team to ever play uh, the uh, Diochan as well. And I mean, mm. Rekno was a fantastic player on this hero. But as you rightfully called out, uh, Attics and Liz both got MVP within yesterday's series against uh, NRX. And it was a beautiful and well-deserved MVP, to be honest. Yep, definitely. And they get to showcase it once again in this matchup. But this time, their opponents are a lot tougher. I mean, Foot Chaos, mm. we did see them um, being, you know, the absolute monsters that they are. And in this matchup, with um, with a lot riding on the line, right? This is this is for the, the, the honors of being called the best Turkish team. And I'm pretty sure these uh, both these teams will give it all their best to be able to hold on to that privilege. Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's a lot of pride running on this match. Uh, both of these teams, uh, you could argue, have had a really easy journey so far. But this is mm -hmm. where things start to heat up in day two, day three and day four, is when we start seeing these uh, well-established teams start to play against each other, which is obviously going to make for potential full best of threes, which is what we really want from this match right now. <laughs> I've, got to, I've got to... I've got to I've got to say, I really want a full best of three. I want to see a lot of back and forths. I want to see a lot of great macro and micro for both of these teams. And from yesterday, they've shown that both of them, both of the teams right here, BJK and uh, Foot Chaos, can exude those behaviors because mm -hmm. they both won with two zero stomps. So I cannot wait to get in to this match and see what these players actually draft. Yeah, they have showcased uh, a very w pretty wide hero pool so far, at least in the, what we can see from the first game itself. So definitely excited to see what they have prepared for us and what they're going to bring uh, for us in this game itself. As we head into the first draft of this Best of 3 series, Byron banned out there from the side of Foot Chaos, while the Dacia will not see the light of day in this match as well as BJK will take it out. And they've just taken out one of our favorite jungle performances there. It's the Jing. She puts the J in jungle. Uh, and we've only ever seen it play once, but it's been a fantastic hero that has been played in the jungle. And I really want to see more as we go through this group stage. And then the second ban on the side of BJK is that Princess Frost, that utility mage, which is soon met with the prior pick of the Mai on Foot Esports. Yeah, Foot Esports. Um... Definitely sh wants to pick up that Mai has been showcased pretty well in the previous game uh, by, by Heat Stars and One. And it's been played a couple of times previously as well. But BJK, Liz, uh, no, sorry, Attics had a fantastic showing on that Lamb. And this time they will get it once again for the side of BJK. Yeah, this was the hero board Attics, that MVP. That was mm -hmm. phenomenal. Ultimates pushing the whole of the enemy team into the turret, just making their 
team fights on the side of BJK just so much easier. But I feel like pairing with this Dunn is going to be huge because Dunn, like we always say, has got a very good, very solid early game and has a quite a lot of utility with his kit, yep. locking down single targets, being able to jump over the walls, shortcutting every avenue he needs to, but also having a shield with empowered abilities. So uh, going for these two champions, I feel like it's a really big pick. And then over onto the side of Foot Esports, they have just chosen the Sunbin and Liam Po. And boy, that Liam Po has big shoes to fill naturally, being the, the hero being quite a bulky guy. But we've just seen Nia play that Liam Po and absolutely demolished. Absolutely, and they, Foot wants to, wants to do the same thing with this, uh, like you said, with the Liam Po pick, uh, pairing up with the Sunbin. That is a lot of crowd control, a lot of team fight potential. We've talked about you know, the importance of picking heroes that elevates and empowers the team fight, and nothing empowers it stronger than these two combinations. Sure, the Princess Frost pairing would have been better than the Sun Bin, but hey, you, you can't get it all at all times. And Sun Bin Dianpo provides, you know, Fruit Chaos with such a strong team fight that it is going to be very scary for BJK to go into if they don't pick up the right counters to it. Absolutely scary, Mary. And speaking of scary, Mary, we do have Rekna on that Diochamp pick once again. The guy, I'm pretty sure, was it yesterday that he got a quadruple under the turret or with the Diochamp? Or I believe I'm just seeing that from the mock matches. I can't remember which that one. That was the mock right match. So. Was that it the was mock the match, mock match? But still, a very impressive performance on Rekna on the Diochamp. Uh, and then for the last two bands of both of the teams, they've decided to take the Dolia and the Duan Huang off the side of uh, BJK. They've mm -hmm. taken those two off the table there by Foot Esports. And on the side of BJK, they take a stab at the Jungle Pool, which is Pai and Musashi, which again, Musashi going into the, like, the lights of Liam Po and Mai would be very scary. Absolutely, it's they, they just have so much dive potential, right? With those three pairings, that mm -hmm. then uh, lost on the uh, on the mic and just do whatever he wants. Now we're gonna ha not have that on the table for the side of Foot Chaos, but there's still a couple of jungle heroes that they can go for. Something like a Zilong, something like uh, a Sumai, if they decide to go for more t more and more silence and team fight. That could be huge for Foot Chaos to go for, but BJK will pick up the D Rin J for themselves. That's uh, an E2 JJ special as well. Absolutely, we saw it yesterday. The pairing of the Durenje and the Dao Chan together was a fantastic all out, tons of damage between those two pairs. But I'm thinking over the, time, over the side of Foot Esports, we could see the Kaiser pick come through. So they've got a big sticky pick and then potentially have the likes of either a Marco Polo or a Lady Sun in the farm lane. Just one of those champions that can pick up. But no, they're going for, once again for the uh, Huang Zhang there, which we saw them play yesterday and play very well. Absolutely, that hero is scary towards the late game and he has the Lian Po and Sun to protect, not to mention they do pick up the Li, uh, the Li, the Li Bai Li as Bai? well. Yeah. That's a not a hero that we've seen yet so it's that's going yeah that's the first time we're gonna see it and it has been uh somewhat um it's not really that popular in the the global version just because it's not uh it's not as you know did not receive as many buffs as they did in uh, as the chinese version but i'm pretty sure uh food chaos picked this for a reason and i'm pretty sure we will see that reason very soon Absolutely. I mean, it's quite a sticky champion to pin down as well, but the likes of the Muzi coming through as well. So having that uh, long range uh, skill mm -hmm. one CC, trying to lock down either the Mai, either the uh, Laibai uh, as well, is going to be a great effort for uh, Uriah on the side of BJK, which I don't doubt in his mind that he has the skill not to do that. He definitely mm -hmm. does. We saw this yesterday on his display of Muzi yesterday, which is a great champion for CC, but also locking down with the ultimate on these really fast, uh, hard hit and engaged heroes like mine. Let's see how both these teams can do. We're seeing a lot of new heroes. That guess is really excited for this matchup. I mean, we were we were talking about how this was going to be the best matchup of the day, and I'm pretty sure both of these teams will not disappoint. Game one between Foot Chaos and the Sictus Esports to find out who will be the best Turkish team. That's all that rides in this match. It's not about winning the group stages. It's not about 
you know, uh, moving on to knockout stages is proving who will be the top of the class here in the Turkish fight. And as we see the coaches leave the stage, the stage is set. Let's see who will be the victors and who will take the lead as we head into game one of this best of three series. Yes, yes, yes. All I'm going to say is if but uh, Chaos managed to stomp another 2 0 here, I'm going to put it all down to the coach's <laughs> big red book. His book was way bigger than uh, BJK's <laughs> coach's book. So to me, the bigger the red of the book, it has a lot more pizzazz. Therefore, it could have the potential and the willpower and the OPness to take down the BJK 2 0. But I really hope that the I really want a solid best of three between seconds. these two Turkish mm. Titans that are currently stomping the group stages right now. Yeah, let's see how they're going to open things up. I mean, the Levi does need a couple of uh, a bit of time to get into uh, where he's strong. He needs that axe of torment before anything else, and before that, we probably will see a more passive gameplay coming from the side uh, for Chaos. But they might just change things up. I mean, having the Mai uh, is going to give them a lot of early game potential for you know aggressive plays as well. Mm. Absolutely. I mean, we've seen a little bit of difference in the meta rotations early game already. We see that Sunbin is accompanying Liampo up into the clash lanes as to try and counterbalance uh, Dunn's really early, really effective uh, early game potential as well due to his kit and his base attack damage. And then we see that uh, Boozy was a bush check in at the Mai as well, which is a really good play. But once again, we're seeing quite a few rotations come through to this mid. Mid is the holy grail of this game, and you want to do everything you can to keep it clear, be on your side, and then it frees up so much rotation. But then when one of it, one of those mid lanes uh, turret falls, it opens up a lot of jungle for your enemy team or your team. So you've got to be very careful with what you do around this mid turret. Yeah, BJK playing it very aggressively. Snape, oh, able to dodge the skill coming from the uh, from the Mozu here, but it's not going to be uh, too much of a detriment for both these teams as Lianpo, not level 4 yet, trying to defend his jungle best they can because we are talking about how the Li Bai needs as much uh, farm as possible early on. Uh, slowing him down is the way to reduce the impact that he can, can provide to the team. Absolutely, I mean, this kit is very impactful just in both the actual playmaking and physically looking, it's very impactful with a lot of CC. <laughs> so slowing that down, I mean, they didn't manage to do it with uh, Twisted Mind, didn't manage to do it against VKS, and that's why we saw Niam have such a great performance on the Liampo. But currently, it's looking like a slow, low burning Liampo. But that's the thing that's the most deadly is that you think one thing, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he comes and almost gets a quadra kill. It's, <laughs> you gotta watch out for it. <laughs> Absolutely, it's it, it, it is going to be a sight to behold if that ever happens. So let's see, um, let's see what let's see how both these teams will traverse the mid game. As it's still a killless game so far, it is still early into the game. But you know, having the Levi, we were expecting him not to be making a lot of rotations early on. But when you have the Lamb, I mean, level four is all you need to really start things off, and they he, we might see him uh, do that very very soon. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, what well, we can see a bit of a difference here between Foot's uh, team comp uh, around this Horn Jong right now is that they don't have the, the Jong Fei that can really push the, te the enemy team away uh, from this champion. The only real kit they have in that respect is the Liam Po. And he's on the other side of the map currently. So mm -hmm. I feel like this uh, Horn Jong is not actually going to activate until these team fights come through. Uh, but once again, here we go. Muzi locking down the Horn Jong. And first blood goes to BJK on the attic, showing why he deserved that MVP in the first game yesterday. Absolutely, having this uh, jungle hero that can just jump towards the backline very easily and knock him out of position, that's the perfect counter to the Huang Zong, which, which surprised me uh, that, you know, Foot Chaos still decided to go for a Huang Zong after seeing the lamb. That's not uh, a good a matchup for you. And... That quick showing of that uh, the, the kill on towards Fang Zong uh, is going to be uh, an omen for things to come if they're not if they're not protecting him well. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, we they had the option of like a console U as well, uh, but a potential trouble here for Attics as Boy comes through, pounces with the CC immunity onto Attics, getting a kill. Four foot esports, but it's quickly met by Reckless. Absolute amazing magic damage onto the Dio Chan there, but it does leave 
Uh, a lot to desire there because Foot Esports was able to pick up the first tyrant of the match, given the likes of the Levi and uh, my a lot of more damage uh, increase for a temporary moment with that tyrant oh. buff. But uh, looking very scarce there, Levi has to uh, try and do something. He doesn't get out because Diachan takes the kill. Rekna going up, setting up a brilliant double kill down in the farm lane for BJK. Mm -hmm. And they are going to continue pressuring to this tier two, tier one tower at the bottom lane uh, because the tower plating will go down as soon as the creeps reach, and that's going to be BJK opening things up on the map. Meanwhile, on the other side, Lamb is going to be able to bring down the the Overlord as well, so that's going to give them more and more map objectives again. Absolutely. So it's a little bit all over the place here. I mean, BJK having a solid, very good three four minute match, and it's even transferring past that four minute mark now going into the five minute on the way to that 10 minute mark which we know we consider as the late game within honor of kings because of how fast paced this game is currently showing that we have uh, currently a turret down in the uh, farm lane right now but right now looking pretty low but there's that l chan been able to dash out there do a lot of aoe damage and escape still unscathed and unkilled in that mid matchup there. However, Laibai has decided to go and push the Clash lane first tier turret and takes it, so it's a trade across the map in terms of turrets. Yeah, but the net worth does favor BJ, uh, Basic Plus Esports at the moment. Huang Zhong does still need some time to get online, so does the Levi. That's why, you know, it's, it's, it was a, it's a surprise that they picked both of these heroes together when uh, you have this much far priority needed on two of these heroes you got you're gonna need to have a lot of space creation to get him get both these heroes to a point where they can start winning the game for you yeah Attics was offering a lot of intel there to his team just sitting around by that uh, red buff uh, seeing that all of foot esports were going rotating down to the uh, the farm lane just to stop that minion push uh, it looked fruitful for Attics for a moment he was looking to go and push that but uh, he stayed patient, he found the intel that he needed, and he found the way out. But Dajan pushing back these champion, uh, heroes here under the Clash lane turret, taking a lot of damage there. Musi just missing out that long range CC, getting met by the Sunbin, and Huanwang has just activated that ultimate. But luckily for BJK, they've managed to get out of that range, that deadly range from that champion in the farm lane. Yeah, just, just towers so far. They haven't really been able to convert, uh, get any kills, but they've been managing to get these towers very easily. Oh, Ragnar right dropping down very low. Snape almost nuked him down, but the M4 able to stop him uh, stop him in his tracks. The, the crowd control coming huge into play there, because Ragnar right would definitely hate being stunned in that sort of situation. So things are back to a... Not really a stalemate, but you know, these fights haven't really been resulting in any of these teams getting kills. But the jungle will be uh, taken here on the side of the JK. Attics will steal the red buff as they look to take the mid tier one tower for their own. Absolutely. I mean, the red buff, as well as the. He's got open uh, accessibility to his blue buff, that is Attics, so I'm speaking about. And then he's got open access to the uh, enemy red buff, so that then this gives him more damage to deal with uh, the uh, lamb. And it really shows on Attics that it is quite crucial because. That's how he does and claims a lot of these kills. CC immunity from the Liam Po there, just having to escape, or else he would have died to a Dao Chan. Um, but interestingly enough, I feel that the uh, the jungle pick on the side of esports hasn't really served much in terms of playmaking. But like you said, it's a little bit of a sort of not a stalemate, but a calm before the storm. Mm -hmm. Something seems to be brewing. There's, it seems to be a lot of like, blow trading going on right now, but there's a, not a lot of uh, kill confirmed. So once again, it's that mental playing of the mind between these teams, it seems. Yeah, that's the problem with, you know, a Levi there. You need too many items. You need that, uh, first you need that actual Torment, then you need that Blood Weeper, and finally you need either a Siege Breaker to finish off or a Master Sword to allow you to do enough damage to bring anyone down. So before he gets that, he's just going to be alive this fight as Rekna brings him down. You're going to use a huge ultimate catching too, and the Lamb cutting towards the backline. Hello, everybody. Good night and goodbye as they send four heroes to the grave. Double kill for Athix as they're going to be able to get the blue buff as well as the uh, Overlord for themselves. Huge, huge engagement from the side of BJK.
And what we were saying, it was the calm before the storm, and that was it. The storm is here. The tempo has now been set with that four bank from uh, BJK. Nice set up there by the Mosey, and then we see Dao Chang go in, but then also a lamb going in with so much damage uh, from that double red buff there, it seems. And uh, taking down that mid lane turret is going to open up once again lamb's play pool he has so much there for him to farm up from he has so much more access to it now and he has so much more access to actually ganking the uh foot esports here um and yeah we have the vanguards already running down the lanes for a potential bigger push here on both the side lanes uh dao chang going in wreck now doing lots of damage showing him why he is a competitive player and why he should be uh, feared on the side of BJK there, taking up another kill and taking down another turret. So that was a 2-0 trade, not only on Liam Po, but also on Wong Zong there as well. And Lamb also gets a free Tyrant as well as his team just pushing at the same time. There's just so much potential for BJK in this tournament. The burst damage from Apex is absolutely crazy. Wang Zong just absolutely got blown up there in a matter of seconds and and right now with the current lead that they have i mean with the with the uh Diao chan as well as the as well as attics on the land they're providing so much burst potential and dive that they will need a miracle for the side of foot uh, esports to be able to fight back here but before that i mean you have to push out the waves you have to try and regain your objectives you have to get farm on levi as well as the Huang Zhong. that is that might be way too much that might be too slow for the tempo that bjk is currently playing at the uh considering how fast and furious we saw put chaos play yesterday relying every, everything on the liam po is just not viable enough it seems uh, we see uh, musi taking a lot of damage and denying the access to the overlord uh, for his team to take it down. So once again, Shadow Overlord going on the side of uh, BJK. There's a lot to be desired here on the side of BJK. They're already up by 12 kills to two. They're pretty much almost at 10k gold difference here, which is huge in honor of Kings, especially going into the only the 11th minute. So we're past that 10 minute mark now, uh, and things are only gonna get a lot harder here for Foot Chaos. Yeah, but one thing about the lineup of Chaos is that they have the late game. They have the strength of the Huang Zhong as well as the Levi. If BJK makes a single mistake in the next engagement and gets aced out, that will be the opening for the comeback that Foot Chaos is looking for. So BJK is not out of the woods yet. They need to play perfectly. They need to make sure they take the next few engagements without losing too many members. Or if they lose too many members, make sure that they are able to kill off the Levi and Huang Zhong in time. So, they have to watch out. They're, they're treading the needle a little bit, playing this aggressively. Mm. But, you know, we've seen BJK and how they play. They are very surgical in these engagements. And I wouldn't take it past them that they will be able to clean this out very cleanly. Yeah, uh, like you say, with uh, Foot Chaos, we're having the late game kind of team comp. They have to just try and reach the late game, uh, which I perceive here as BJK trying to just deny that late game. We're seeing a higher ground turret on the side of the farm lane going down mid lane. High ground turret gone down as well. So they have already lost two huge lanes, potentially a third. So a uh, hat trick in terms of that high ground turret not quite going through yet, but Levi going through, shutting down Dai Chan. And, uh, we see that uh, some bin takes down Derenji as well, so this could be the mishap. Only Muzi and Attic still alive, and Attic is still going at it, but it's a three on one. Uh, oh. Wang Zhang has that advantage of having the distance between him and Lam right now, but so uh, well played. And for Chaos, they still have a horse in the race. Last was this. Oh, Snape in the perfect position, able to get the kill on towards Attics. That is definitely much needed here from from the side of Foot Chaos. We were talking about how they needed one good fight to come back to this game. Sure, they lost two towers, which is not great for their map control, but this is closing the gap. They lost uh, 3,000 in terms of the network lead, and this might be enough for Foot Chaos to regain the footing. And like you said, their horse is still, is still in the race, but can their horse be able to take the lead after that huge engagement in the mid as well as the bottom? Absolutely, it takes a lot to come back from this point, but we both know Foot Chaos is not a team that is not going to go down without a fight. They will come back up both arms, swing it, 
uh, until they claim a victory. But it's still in their grasp. They're doing very well right now. They've uh, managed to change the uh, kill dividends from uh, to a 10 to 6. And uh, they are no cap on the gold. It's, yes, still quite a country mile by uh, 6k difference. But it's still better than that 10k difference they had a few moments ago. Oh, so much damage being dealt to E2JJ with, without even the ultimate coming from the Levi. He was just uh, attacking with his first and second skill and able to do so much damage. He's really playing at the edge right now for the Levi. If he gets stunned up there by the Mozi, he will just pay with his life. But he has to make these risky moves to try and get an opening uh, before BJK destroys all the outer tier towers. Yes, uh, the higher ground uh, flash lane turret is literally holding on by the skin of its teeth. If turrets had teeth, it would be holding on to every little <laughs> inch of it. Uh, but the Lambeth go 1v1 onto the uh, Award try to go 1v1 onto my but uh, uh, Hong is on there, came around and just completely annihilated that one. This is a great team fight for but Chaos. Liam Po really leading the charge here. Uh, Dao Chan trying to do a lot of damage, taking a lot of damage onto uh, Lost and Void right now. But there is just so much going on, separating the distance, doing the damage. Oh! He manages to cancel out the damage, but still with a trade between Rekna and Noir there was just phenomenal. But this now gives open space to Levi to push the lanes, for Mai to push another lane and stop that Shadow Wreck Vanguard coming through and taking the last high ground turret from but Esports. Engagement was crazy. Lampo's lockout was absolutely crucial, allowing Nauer to do as much damage as he did. Sure, he isn't fully uh, slotted yet, but that allowed him to catch up in terms of gold. And he's almost there. He's almost. Uh, he finished his Daybreaker, and he's about to finish his next item, which is I can't really tell by whatever he, what he's buying. He went for a lot of early game items to mm. to sort of survive early on, but I'm pretty sure once he gets enough gold, he's gonna upgrade that to maybe a Blood Reaper or, uh, or a Pure Sky just to be able to survive the damage incoming from Atix and so on the rest. Yeah, we can see that that's more likely going to be the a play here for uh, Noir, especially how much uh, Rekna is focusing him in these team fights and in these engages. We saw it earlier, they managed just to 1-1 trade, but if he manages to get the Resurrection, he can 1-1 trade with uh, Rekna and then still come out on top and still be alive. And we know what kind of force that Guan uh, Zhong is in the late game, especially with that red buff, but again, we're having another calm before the storm moment. Everything's settled now. The dust is clearing, but it's about to get a whole lot messier in any moment now for Foot Esports or EJK. Yeah, these uh, tier 3 towers going down is going to be a huge detriment to Foot Chaos. They have to constantly deep push the lanes and keep them out uh, just in case that, you know, someone like a land comes from behind and steals the crystal. So always under pressure from the maps uh, isn't the best place to be in. But, you know, Foot Chaos, they are not out of this yet. They know that they just need one good fight. One more wipe with uh, Naur still left standing and they're going to be able to turn things around in the game. So let's see if... Uh, Nauer is able to get into good positions to take the fight, or will Atix always have his number? Yeah, already pre prematurely started the Tyrant Dragon here, because to just try and get a little bit of uh, more damage onto the side of BJK. They managed to clear it out very fast, thanks to Regna and Derenji there. Uh, Derenji now having that uh, damage increase, all he now has to do is just find his footing within these team fights. Uh, Muzi almost getting taken out there, a little bit overextended. But just trying to stop that minion wave being pushed in the mid lane. And uh, Noir is shutting down access to his very precious red buff because we know that uh, Huan Zhang really needs that going forward because it's really made the difference of Foot Chaos. Absolutely. And BJK will return the favor, stealing the Sage <laughs> Golden buff. So not allowing Levi to have that very important cooldown reduction with the Sage Golden. That's going to limit his powers quite a bit but here is a very risky play here coming from the side of BJK they're trying to attempt yeah. the overlord but everybody on the side of foot is here can they take this fight the knockup is gonna be enough no the lamb will be able to get the last hit but everyone from the side of BJK is very low Liz as well as Yuren dropping down low but now we're getting sniped on the back lines from the 
from the gun and they are going to be able to kill off the DM4 as well. Three heroes down from the side of from Chaos. Only the Levi as well as the Sumi left standing. Can boss be able to hold things on and carry the game on his own? Is it going to be enough? He does have to save this sanctuary. He gets a double kill! Oh. And back, be able to escape there. But Athix does have his resurrection as well. And he's gonna fall. This is gonna be it. BJK will take game number one of this Turkish brawl and be one step forward to taking the lead in Group A. That was the big mistake there. Even though it was a very impressive double kill from Levi there, we, it, it just allowed uh, Derenji and uh, Muzi just to focus and run down the mid lane. And Sunbin knew that because they recalled back to base, but. Some bin is not going to be able to do, uh, defect and stop the Derenji's attack speed and attack damage at that point in the game, especially after Fresh Leavers getting a blue buff as well. So his cooldowns, everything was just on point. And BJK really taking a close fought victory there and almost risking it all. That Shadow Overlord. Absolutely crazy, and it's, it's amazing that they managed to hold on the best they can. They, they were already low on health, but Dun being able to cut towards the back lines and bringing down Naur before he's able to sh uh, to really cause problems for their team is absolutely tantamount for their victory here. And BJK, what a performance! Able to hold things, hold the fort down, and win the late game matchup against a very strong late game team. That is the testament of how much of a lead that BJK had, and they were able to hold on to it towards the end. Absolutely. I mean, I'd probably have to give it to either Attix or Rekna here for the MVP. I mean, it would be a great standing and a great feeling for Attix to get MVP two days in a row. Back to back, <laughs> back to back MVP would be amazing for this player's confidence. But he doesn't need it. He has all Definitely the confidence not. that he's that he needs right now. 932 on Lamb once again. Didn't get banned, wasn't even considered in the banning phase. Lamb was, it was just like, oh, okay, they've left my Lamb open, I'm gonna take it. Uh, and right there, you can tell that Lamb doesn't have to have that whole damage dealt because he just passes no. everybody back to the back of the queue for Rekner, for E2JJ, just to make loads of damage onto these squishy champions there. But uh, yeah, what a fascinating match. I would have to, I'd have to say it's probably been the most capsulating a match of mm -hmm. the group stages yet. This Turkish Titan battle off is just huge and BJK come out on top of game one, but I really feel there's a game three to be had here. Yeah, this is one of the closest series we've seen so far, at least on the uh, on, on the main stage itself. This It looked like anybody's game towards the end and it was just that close. If BJK made a small misstep or if Foot Chaos had a even slightly better early game, this would have been a completely different result um, in the end. But still, congrats to BJK for taking the first map win. This series is not over yet. It is a best of three series and Foot Chaos has one more chance to prove themselves right and call themselves the best team in Turkey. And there we go, Mr. Rekner with a happy smile there, takes his first MVP for BJK. So three out of five of the team right now have an MVP, which is going to feel amazing for the mm -hmm. not only the organization, but the players as well, knowing that you've got such solid players and all of them are potentially MVP worthy. Uh, obviously with the uh, farm lane, we see that that takes a little bit of a back uh, seat in these fights and it all goes down to the mid, goes down to uh, the, cl uh, the clash lane or the jungle. And Liz this time around uh, was being mainly used as a support on the uh, uh, Dun. We saw quite a few kills get taken down and quite a few outplay uh, potentials there on the Dun shutting down with the CC of the ultimate and uh, the knock of its first skill. Uh, but yes, the different positioning, a different function for BJK Liz to play in this match. And it worked very well. It was very close. If it went for the Tempest Dragon, I feel like maybe Foot Chaos could have uh, played around that, like we saw yesterday between A7 and Star Wars Esports. It all fell around on that Tempest Dragon. Absolutely. Yeah, this game was just uh, way too close to call. This was the beginning of uh, what was a potential comeback here. A last play really take, took these fights really well. They were able to close out the gap, but ultimately, uh, Attix was just too good. Ragnar just dealt too much damage, and they were able to close out the game. Not very convincingly towards the end, but still, yeah. hey, it was a good fight on both sides, and they were able to uh, take the lead in this series.
Yeah, I guess I have to give it to uh, Chaos though, that Liam Pope uh, pick once again is just a great engage, especially when you've got the likes of the uh, the Huang Zhong there, uh, the new uh, marksman within the game. Uh, really, I mean, a lot of these players probably didn't have a lot of time to actually scrim with this hero, and but still playing it very effectively. That is a very simple hero to learn. There's not too many mechanics on it. There's no uh, nothing really deep that you have to know. It's all about the player's skill, his read off the map, his positioning, knowing when he can turn into a tank and when he has to run away. That is the core of playing a good Huang Zhong. And uh, most players, with their the amount of skill that they have, they definitely will be able to pick it up. And I expect to see more and more Huang Zhong in the rest of the group stages and the knockout stages as well. Absolutely. I feel like it could be swapping hands in this next game, or they may just leave it open for BJK to take again. But uh, like you said, originally, we were on about the uh, potential pick for on the side of BJK, the consort you may have been a better pick for them, maybe, uh, especially mm -hmm. with the, the shutdown and uh, the immunity from damage as well is always very helpful to have. But I felt like Derenji actually played very well as well. Yeah, Derenji was uh, really phenomenal in this game. He didn't get a lot of kills. He wasn't really shiny. I mean, that's that's the problem with Derenji, right? He just kind of exists, deals damaged. Most of the games, he's not one of those heroes that is able to carry the game very hard, but he contributes to the team with the amount of AoE damage he does, the, the control he can do with his stun, as well as just overall being a very tough uh, marksman to kill. And that by itself frees up your team to do whatever they want because they don't have to worry about protecting, uh, protecting you like how they needed to do with protecting the Huang Zhong in this game. Absolutely. Uh, I don't think there's anything that was re that really stuck out to me that uh, Foot Chaos could have done. Other than the draft, obviously, it was very late game orientated. But mm -hmm. if you're a team that's picking a late game orientation team comp, you definitely got to make sure that your late game is solid. And we kind of mm -hmm. saw that it, it had potential, but then all of a sudden, BJK, even though their their their champions, uh, their heroes, sorry, are not necessarily late game. Uh, heroes, they still manage to peep the fight, risk it all for the Overlord, take the Overlord, and then have a fantastic fight, but then also bait the Labai to try and take some double kills up for his team in hopes that they could have uh, defended the base, but the only person that was left was Sun Bin, and that's not a hero that's going to defend no. your base from <laughs> Renji. Uh, it's Like I said, I don't know what they could have done better to try and outwit BJK. Food Chaos played the early game very well, the best that they, they could do, but uh, BJK's tempo was just too fast, right? They didn't have really good heroes to deep push the lanes, they didn't have like a Princess Frost, they didn't have uh, a hero to be able to cut the waves uh, on the far end, like uh, like a Mulan or or something similar to that effect. So they, they, they had to play with what they had. I think they did as well as they could to be able to stall out the game to that point, but maybe just a uh, little bit um, of a, a few more better fights would have, uh, especially early on in the game, would have made the outcome of the, this game completely different. Absolutely, but the one thing that does affect the outcome of this game is our sponsor today. It is mm. Infinix, and all the players are playing on the Infinix GT10 Pro. It is innate to be the most professional choice for gamers who are fighting with kings. All sensory game engine and high refresh rate immerses you in the purest gaming experience. Once again, thank you Infinix for sponsoring the tournament. Yep, that was one of the purest competitive experience we saw. I mean, that game was close. Mm. I'm pretty sure the next uh, upcoming game in this series will be very close as well. Both of these teams are uh, very strong as we've seen them perform throughout the first two days. And even then, you know, they, these two teams have a lot of respect for each other. I'm pretty sure they scream with each other a lot. So they know the ins and outs of their opponents. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. I'd be very surprised if this doesn't go to a game three. Uh, especially going into day, uh, day two, and both of these players, uh, only BJK, are playing tomorrow, but they will be playing straight after this break, so we'll see you in a moment, guys. Don't go anywhere. Ah, I heard there's a mermaid in this area. <laughs> Out of ten Navinians, eleven would tell you that they've heard the mermaid singing. I wouldn't mind hearing it too. 
啦啦啦啦。Welcome back, guys, from a well-deserved, very short break. After that intense first game in the best of three between these Turkish Titans, BJK, and Foot Chaos. Uh, I, those who are joining new, I am Blam, and with me is Zero. How are we feeling after that game one? I mean, it was so intense. There was a lot of compassion going on within the game, a lot of aggression. Mm -hmm. What do you feel? It's I think the, both of these teams are so hyped up and on fire after the first game. It is very chilly right now in Turkey, at least that's what the uh, forecast has told me. But look at the players, they have been sweating. We, we, we had a glimpse of one of the players from the side of Foot Chaos and he is drenched in... in his hair was wet, I'm not sure if it's uh, water or sweat, but these guys definitely do feel the pressure right now because this is a very high stakes it's not only for placing in the group stages but it's also for the pride of being called the best turkish team in this tournament i mean they foot chaos everybody any of the turkish team really need that because after those fighting words yes they put themselves above bjk it's kind of a dose on your name you're kind of like oh well You've just put yourselves above them, but you've just been like one owed. It's not been an easy stomp one owed. Maybe this no. is how it was like in the scrims for both of these teams. They were very close, but but chaos always came out on top at the end of the day. But uh, when it's match to match, this is very very close, guys. Absolutely, and we're into the draft of game number two between BJK and Foot Chaos. It is going to be no surprise. No Dachau for this game, also no Princess Frost being banned out there by BJK while Foot Chaos banning out the Jing mm -hmm. as well as the last the second ban, Mai. The, Mai. Mai has really been performing really well in this tournament and Foot Chaos doesn't want BJK to have their hands on that very scary mid lane mage. Yes, my oh my, she has been denied by her own team. Uh, we saw Snape play a great Mai, but it just wasn't quite what they needed. Again, the jungle and the mid had very same, uh, very similar functions within the team fights. So for them to try and both of them capitalize on trying to get the kills and get the early items and just get the overall advantage in the uh, early game quicker than your enemy team, it became a bit of a clash there. But it's looking like uh, Foot are going to be taking the lamp for themselves potentially here, taking it from Attics, which is going to be super interesting to see a lost on uh, Lamb. We did see him yesterday because the enemy team... No, it wasn't. It was Jing yesterday that he yeah, played and, and the enemy team lost the lost. Um, but Lamb <laughs> and Ganon Mo coming through as prio picks. This is very interesting for Foot Chaos. A lot of burst damage coming from both these heroes. Very squishy uh, themselves, but mm. if they can always round that up with a good clash laner, as well as a good, uh, good roamer to be able to make up for those weaknesses. But what is this? Ooh. Pay being uh, hovered over there by Attics will lock it nice. down along with Rekna on the Diao Chan once again. This is once again BJK trying to play super aggressive uh, with the Attics. Uh, with the ethics on the pay, we're going to probably see a lot of jungle in base early on. 
Absolutely. I mean, once again, big shoes to be felt there because uh, Danny, VKS Danny, played a great play uh, in the last match uh, of day two yeah, uh, today. And uh, we've got to see Attics step up to the plate with this hero. But Rekna going for another comfortable hero pick, which is the Dao Chan here. But they do pick up the Dong Huang on the side of Foot Chaos, being able to suppress one of these champions that tries to go in and go out. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely seeing Snake trying to shut down the Diao Chan. Don't want her to be able to constantly do damage when her ultimate is up. That's the strength of the Diao Chan. And what better way to stop that? by just locking her down for two seconds and hopefully blowing her up before she's able to recover from uh, all the damage that is done. So good counter pick here from the side of uh, Foot Chaos. It doesn't really solve the problem of uh, stopping that early game pressure coming from Attics, but they still have two more heroes to be able to pluck those holes. Absolutely. On the side of Foot Chaos, they've taken down the Muzi, which we saw uh, yet yeah, uh, last match was a very effective uh, roam on the side of BJK. And they've taken down the uh, uh, Jango Fei here. So we're not going to see Jango Fei come through, unfortunately, uh, again. Even though he wasn't banned last match, he's been banned again now. And then on the, over to the side of BJK, they have banned the Derenji and the Charlotte. So again, two huge picks up into the, bar uh, the Clash lane, but... They do pick up the Mulan, which we've been seeing a very promising performances on many players throughout the Season 1 Invitational. Yeah, if there's any hero that's able to stop the pace early in aggression, that's definitely the Mulan. Doesn't need a lot of items to be able to take, uh, the, take the aggression from the pay hands-on. But of, of course, if you get a good lane, that's even going to be that's gonna be even better there for the Mulan. So, BJK, right now, they're lacking a Marksman and a Roamer, while Foot Chaos, they are only looking for a Marksman for themselves. So, if Foot Chaos wants to play aggressive, like their lineup, uh, if they want to play defensive, as their lineup suggests, maybe mm -hmm. a Huang Zhong, once again, could be in the books for them, or something like a... Uh, as a Consort Yu, to be able to save himself would be another option uh, to go for as well. Absolutely. We're seeing less of a, uh, a tanky team come here on the side of BJK. They've gone for the Sunbin with the Marco Polo. Obviously, Marco Polo deals in true damage. He wants that 200% uh, uh, attack speed before you go and build anything else, because if you don't get that attack speed up, you're not going to proc that true damage onto these champions, especially the likes of uh, Mulan and uh, Duan Huang, as long as they're not suppressing your teammates because you'll annihilate your teammates as well as annihilating your enemy. But it's looking like they're going to lock in the Lady Sun. Lady Sun is interesting here. I mean, you're playing against a Pei and a Dun. You don't have much uh, of a breeding group to get into your 3-4 items to, to start coming online. So uh, it is a great hero against the Marco Polo later on in the game, but you have to reach there before you're able to really counter the Marco Polo. So for Chaos, once again, puts themselves on a timer here. They have to last 12 minutes without losing at least two tier three towers. If they are in that spot, they're in a good spot to win the game. But if BJK is able to put uh, continue on the pressure and, and, and just limit the map for Lady Sun to play in, then BJK will take this series too well. Maybe that's the magic behind Foot Chaos. They like putting themselves on a timer. They like having a little bit of a deadline to get to. <laughs> they have an end goal to try and get there. And then once they know they can get there, they can try and formulate the win. Like last game, they tried that, but it didn't quite work out because we had multiple champions that had to get to the late game, but multiple champions having to be fed uh, and farmed up. Uh, where we saw BJK relentlessly opening up their own, opening up the enemy jungle to uh, claim for themselves. So, seeing the likes of the Pi come through as well, the Pei uh, hero, we've seen Danny play it. It's been, wasn't even touched on day one. So, seeing that come through on day two is definitely showing the difference in pace and skill of these players. Absolutely. This is uh, night and day from what we've seen from uh, a couple of those matchups. This is as high, high, high tiered, high skilled uh, as you can get in this tournament. And 
we are in for a treat, ladies and gentlemen. If you miss game one, game two is going to be just as exciting as we have BJK going up against Foot Chaos in game number two of this best of three series. Will BJK take this sweep cleanly and continue on the streak of 2-0 victories? Or will Foot Chaos be able to break the curse and force us into a game number three? Yes, it's all to play for in this match. But for those new joining us straight into the last match of the day, which seconds. would be quite a uh, quite a sore thing to miss because it's been a fantastic day in terms of matches. A few stumps, but this one is definitely a great way to close off the day. But just rest assured, group stages, nobody gets knocked out, uh, but the top players do get to choose their uh, opponent of choice going through to the knockouts, which would be where your favorite team may potentially get knocked out in a best of five. But it's a long way till then. We're only in the second day. There's plenty to be played for in this current best of three between BJK and Foot Chaos. Uh, but currently we're seeing the, a little bit of a different uh, rotation once again. We see that Sunbin has definitely gone down to uh, the bot lane to support Marco Polo. Uh, once again, he is definitely not the greatest of uh, farm lanes early on. He definitely needs that little bit of support. Uh, whereas uh, Dunn can definitely go head to head up in the clash lane against uh, Mulan. He's just got to make sure he does not uh, allow her to get fed and stomp and make sure your macro is on point because we've seen so many Mulan players just absolutely destroy in terms of their macro. They are pushing these lanes whilst the other team are completely forgetting about it, which is a mistake I can't imagine BJK making. So the, the, they definitely are not are very familiar with uh, the movements that you require across the map as well as being able to shut down the Mulan in, in bad scenarios. So BJK wants to put up pressure on the top lane, not allowing Mulan to have a great start, which is going to be tantamount for them to keep up the aggression. But they do have Attics rotating up top, making sure that his teammate is safe, knowing that they don't have to take these early fights. They just have to drag out the game long enough for the Lady Sun to go to be active and for the team fight to really pop off. Yep, Snape with the snipes in the mid lane, actually getting quite a few of them onto Rekna. He's taken quite a bit of damage that he doesn't necessarily need to take. But again, Gamma is one of these uh, heroes that is hard to dodge, especially with the uh, convecting lines. It starts off and then it goes, <laughs> uh, crosses over, and you think, ah, I've dodged it. It's like, ah, I've just got an arrow in my back. Thank you very much, Gamma, there. Uh, so, yeah, Snape playing that hero quite well in terms of trading for long range blows here. We've got a bit of a rotation down from the mid lane. Rekna is already there because he's cleaned his minion wave, waiting for that to come up. Because if he did not, he would be wasting a lot of precious time and potential ganks for his team. But BJK Liz got to be careful here with uh, Dong Huang and uh, Gano Mo in this mid lane, now joined with Lam. And we've seen not quite, I don't think we've seen uh, lost on the uh, Lam yet. It's been Jing, and I forgot who his second champion was, uh, second hero was yesterday. I... Kaiser, I think? Potentially. Potentially, yeah. A lot of, but no, a yeah. of a skirmish in the bottom lane. Regna able to get the last hit on one of the jungle jungle creeps. Not the, not the end of the world, not the biggest of trades there as we head into a stalemate of the early game. Mm. This is playing exactly to what Chaos wants. A slow early game, no kills, no towers, and then when we get to the mid and late game, that's when you know, these heroes really start to shine. Yeah, you can almost feel the pressure from BJK that they want the push. They want them to fight them early game because they know that they could easily have the early game advantage. But Foot Chaos are like, no, nah, we're going to leave you to stew in your own mental mess right now because we want to play for the late game. We just want to farm up and then we know that we are going to be uh, better than you coming into the late game. Uh, with the lights of the Gammo and Lady Sun coming through and shining when she builds those uh, big items, those big damage items on the uh, the farm lane. But here we go, Tyrant is up, so we could potentially see a first blood here. Rekna being closed down by Gong Guang there, but not quite doing a lot of damage because if his team did just a a little bit more damage, they could have been an even trade there between the two, which would have been as, as effective as a first blood for themselves. Uh, Lady Sun taking a lot of damage, but was her, uh, aided by the first, uh, the second ability of Don Juan. 
able, still able to secure the first tyrant of the game, but giving them a little bit of an advantage when, if they want to look for these fights. But Rekna, oof, taking a lot of damage there. Being very He's cheeky. <laughs> Oh, really close there, but he's able to get at least one jungle creep and be able to back off there. The, the Dong Huang counter looking very, very scary for Rekna. He has to play around that, knowing that you know, if he just gets locked down and bursted, especially later on to the game, he's going to be very ineffective. And he has to build his items accordingly to prevent that from happening. Yes, we can see that Foot Chaos are looking to start the Overlord and going to close it down there. So it is a 50-50 split there for the uh, four-minute mark of the jungle, but Snape looking pretty low. Rekna getting the first yeah, blood. He knew that both of those teammates were up at the Overlord, but that's not going to be it. Lost goes in for a two kills there, but it goes over to Mulan, and we see Marco trade with the Don Huang just because of the suppression, and his team put in too much damage onto the Marco Polo, trading that one for one, but, but Chaos showing them that, hey, you may get the first blood, but we're gonna rotate around like true troopers and claim our fallen brothers' victories there, and rightfully so, 2-3 to uh, foot Chaos. They have a good early game here from Foot. They're not losing too much across the map. All the towers are still up. They're lead pushing, they're taking these fights, and they're winning these fights. That goes really well towards for the late game. Lost, if he knocked him back in towards Ryuga, who does have his ultimate, that might have been a kill on towards Rekna. And maybe mm. a bit worried that the damage would not be enough. That's why they didn't really commit to the ultimate coming from the the Dong Huang to be able to, to lock him down. So Foot just post posturing towards the mid lane, gets spotted out there by the Sun Bin, and that is going to sound the retreat for the side of Foot, not really want to over-engage him. Yeah, I think like they're trying to correct the mistakes of that first game because they really left open that mid lane quite often and resulted in them losing the mid lane first. But uh, BJK Liz, Taking a lot of damage there from the Mulan, re-engaging. I think that was a little bit risky, but creates <laughs> the uh, Dong Huang's second ability. So the uh, Dong Huang needs to build up those uh, orbs around her for her to have that maximum potential and that stun and that damage from that second ability to come through and try and suppress and CC one of the enemy champions. But uh, definitely a well, uh, well baited move there by Dun. Definitely will, uh, didn't result in any kills. But oh, oh, of kills. okay. They snipe off e to JJ. Me on the top lane. Attic's in a lot of trouble. Ooh. He's gonna fall towards the Mulan. Pei is really starting to lose out in gas. He's trying to do his best, but gets suppressed there by the Dong Huang and Lost will be able to get the kill on him. Meanwhile, Ragnar is in this fight. He's looking for more, trying to keep chasing on towards Lost. Lost might just fall here, trying to fight back. Oh, goes for the back line, tries to escape, but Sun Bin will be there to finish him off. Now we're in a lot of trouble. The so Ragnar is able to get the kill on to him, but not before he does fall as well. 4-4-4 four, four, four trade across the map. 4-4-3 four, four, trade across the map, and looking Whoa. like a pretty even trade, but for the Chaos, definitely reap the rewards from all of that. Absolutely, because they not only got those trades, uh, taken those blows on the chin, they are able to take the first tier turret in the clash lane as well, which is more so important, uh, opening up the endless banquet for a lamb to be open up to and being given is a gift by his teammates. But what a well played team fight there. There was a lot of trades, a lot of uh, hits on the chin, but both of the teams coming out and brawling but then obviously as we said originally put chaos taking the overall advantage there but this may be to bjk getting another tyrant wiping and running down the tyrant so fast but i feel like the pay pick here is definitely a little bit undermined it's not quite activated yet it's not quite doing the function i feel like they thought it would do Definitely not as aggressive as they would like. Oh, mid lane is a lot of trouble. They instantly blow up Liz with the damage from, coming from the gun and more, and the suppress from the Dong Huang. That's going to set things up here for the side of BJK to be able to get the top uh, Overlord as well. Maybe even steal this blue. Oh, that kidnaps the Ooh. stage golem and gets it with the smile. Lost. She can play there, but gets the re reaps the rewards of uh, making that play. Absolute denial there, using the ult to push the, uh, the Sage Golem out of the way. That was a very nice play there by Lost. You can really tell that he knows how 
these timers work, how the uh, the recall back onto the camp works there, because that was beautifully wiped out just enough time before it started to recall and recharge, which would have been a great upset and a complete misplay for that, because it could have caused a lot of more a lot more harm than good. However, we do see that uh, BJK managed to open up the side part of the farm lane and uh, Duong. Uh, Duong Huang goes down there as a 1-1 one, one trade, locking down Rekna as well. So this Duong Huang is definitely being used as a 1-1 one, one trade, just taking out these huge damage heroes on the side of BJK. And they've opened up the mid lane as well. That is a big uh-oh for BJK. 2,000 lead right now for a lineup who's supposed to be better in the late game. That's not going to be... That's not going to bode well here for the side of BJK because we're talking about foot and their lineup. They, they are pretty late game oriented and they are playing the early game very well, which means that their late game is going to be even better. Marco Polo, not sure what items he has at the moment. I'm not sure if he's fully kitted out yet, but he's going to fall to Void who's able to kill him off. Yeah, no, I think it's safe to say that so far this is definitely going to go for a uh, three-game banger. But down goes uh, Void there. So seeing uh, Dao Chan uh, actually been able to take down Hulan there with the help of some bin was really helpful for uh, BJK. But they are going to lose the Overlord there. So Overlord does go down, but they're looking to take the Tyrant uh, for themselves as well. So double help. It oh! What was crucial that? theft? That was a Sum crucial theft from Sumbin. Sumbin with the ultimate getting the last hit on towards the Tyrant. That is absolutely huge for the side of BJK. Definitely unexpected there uh, for both teams, in fact. And they might try and capitalize on this. Regna does pop the ultimate. Le Ruga trying to find his target, but not able to find anyone in time. Looks like BJK will back off for the moment. <laughs> Athens taking a lot of damage for the gun and more. Yeah, I think that was a bit of a saving grace there, taking the Tyrant, because if we, if but uh, Chaos managed to get that and have this Shadow Vanguard push right now, Duong Huang going straight in onto Regna. They are making a statement piece at Regna, but Lan is trying to go in to pick up some kills. Lee, uh, Sun Bin takes down Duong Huang, and then Snape has his way with Urian. And double kill for E2JJ, so getting some kills on the board finally, and making use of this Marco Polo. Marco Polo is almost at his uh, full potential now, almost completing the Daybreaker. So that's going to allow him to reach the, the attack speed cap that he needs to be able to, to utilize that hero to his fullest. Unfortunately, he did fall up towards the top lane, so that allows Foot to be able to continue crashing across the map. But they are almost there. For the side of BJK, they just have to hold on for a little bit longer. Yes, yes. I mean, that was a much better team fight for themselves there. Really bad. I think that they've gotten to the point where they know that Rekna is going to be the uh, the scapegoat for the Dong Huang suppression. So they're just trying to make use out of that and get that uh, champion out of the team fights early. But also try the best to save Rekna as best as possible while, while running down Dong Huang. But it's pretty much a near impossible task unless uh, you can re-control the damage here. But uh, something going in with that damage over time there. We see uh, Rekna going in. There's that Dong Huang going for the suppression, but Rekna's still alive. They take down Dong Huang there, thanks to some bin, but it is a double kill there from Lost. Is this going to be enough to take down Lost? No, because he still manages to save, stay alive from that burn damage from some bin. But Pei taking down Mulan is currently a uh, two, a three trade by BJK, they've taken three kills to the two, and it's just lost looking pretty low in terms of health, and Snape just warding off and keep it, making sure that his teammate can recall safely. 14 minutes in, 1,000 gold separates both these teams at the moment. The kills aren't that far so apart tense. as well. Mm. So things are looking dicey. Thing, yeah, the only thing for BJK is that they need to really push these uh, turrets. The macro needs to be increased here because it, once it gets this late game and you're losing fights, and then if you manage even to claim a great team fight but lose, say, three of your uh, team, it's going to be hard for you to make a, a clear, uh, precise push. 
for themselves. But we see a little bit of a attempt to effect here on the Shadow Tyrants. We've got BJK at least trying to keep them off from them. Oh. But no, Lamp comes through with the smite and crucial kill theft has been repaid right there by but Chaos. Yeah, but they managed to at least uh, not give it for free here. Void dropping down very low, but a suppression on towards the on towards the Marco Polo giving him down. They managed to bring down the Don Juan, but at what cost? They do lose the pay as well. Oh, but the Marco Polo towards the back lines gets the kill on towards the Lady Sun. He does pay with his life, but that should fall up. That should stall out the game long enough for everyone else to respawn, and that was BJK a little bit out of position. Losing the pay really quickly without him being able to contribute to the fight in any better way. Yeah, they're really trying to improve the macro there with the Marco Polo taking two of the turrets up into the flash lane, but at what cost has that done? Uh, especially taking out a majority of their damage dealers, so if there is any sort of... Uh, conflict going on you know for a fact the gammo and the lamb are just gonna be able to just deal the damage whilst mulan takes the damage um but luckily enough for bjk they do not lose a high grade turret uh whilst their team is now all off the cooldown of the death respawn it is getting into that uh, shaky ground now towards the late game mulan sitting in this bush bjk not aware of that with gambo in the mid lane as well we could be potentially looking at the kinsa movement from the side of Foot chaos as they're looking to take the overlord right now oh mulan actually just get caught out thanks to marco polo's misfire but Foot chaos take the shadow overlord again applying more pressure against bjk's push potential yeah not the best position to be in right now you definitely would have wanted to contest there uh, but putting the putting the mulano in the bushes and being spotted out there on hindsight was a great move there from the side of Foot chaos able to start just distract the opponents from letting them know that you're attacking the uh, the overlord and that allowed them to get that additional map pressure across the map and right now BJK has to defend with their lives the, all these tier 3 towers. Yep, here comes the Shadow Vanguard and the little Vanguards right now. Uh, Rekna trying to go in to do a lot of damage onto Dong Huang has forced again Mo away and Dong Huang's ultimate has now been relinquished so no use of that ultimate as of yet. It is on cooldown until the next engage. So I feel like the Chaos have to wait until that point there. Uh, stun onto BJK Liz there as well. Vanguard's looking for a push. I don't feel like any of the high ground choice may fall here, but I may be wrong. It's looking like the Clash Lane is going to go down thanks to Mulan. Mulan is looking pretty low. Goes down as well. That is a 1 0 trade for BJK. Nicely goes over to Liz Rekna, overstepping there, going in, doing a lot of damage on to the Ganmo, but manages to recall as well. But still on the side of what well, Chaos, they hold on to that first hit turret in the mid lane. It's going to be hard for BJK to do anything until they run down more lanes. They need one good fight here for the side of BJK to, to get a firm grasp on this game. The next Tyrant is about to spawn in a couple of seconds or so. So that's why we see BJK poised towards the bottom side. Rekna trying to go for a kill on towards mm -hmm. Snape. Snape does have uh, the invulnerability and will be pop it just in time. Not to take too much damage from Rekna, but everybody from the side of BJK are rotating in. So Bin in position for a good ultimate, but will decide to back off and take the Tyrant before taking any fights. Absolutely, we saw that suppression come through, but also the invincibility there, which was really helpful for Regna to stay alive and help his teammates uh, clear up uh, the Tyrant. But a lot of damage being put onto uh, Dong Huang and uh, Lady Sun, forcing the recall here. So this could be the point where we could see the first hit turret finally get taken down in the mid lane, whilst we see Marco Polo clean up the side lane as well. There's a split push potential, looking to brew up there by Lamb and force pay out of that mid lane. Uh, Gammo actually wiping out the minions, so still no mid lane to even take them. Yeah, that's the problem with pushing into a gun and more as well as the Dong Huang. They have so much wave clear at a safe distance. 
then most of the time your creeps won't be able to reach there in time. You have to kill somebody off before you make those engagements. But now we're playing very aggressively towards the back oh. and Marco Polo goes straight and gets the kill. But Frank gets brought down there by the Mulan. Mulan doing too much damage at the moment. Athens looking for more though. He wants to get a kill. And there you go. There goes Void on the Mulan. He's going to fall back. Athens oh. the back line gets a kill. He's trying to fight back. Does have the serious Sanctuary and will stay alive for the moment. Rekna and Attics, two last members on the side of UGK still left standing. For it is Snape and Lost. Lost not really healthy at the moment. And they finally will bring down the tier 1 power in towards the middle. Yeah, that was a huge bait there by Snape. Uh, Procting the resurrection there from uh, the almost defeat by Pi. Uh, coming in and then Lamb just coming in to wipe out two out of the four of BJK. Which is in true Lamb fashion. The only way that it is played is absolutely dominating and staying around, being patient and striking at that precise moment. And that really showed it there. Tam the Tempest Dragon has now arrived. It is all riding on this camp in the jungle and the next team fight. So will this end the same way as Star Wars Esports and A7 where we saw a big push for the Tempest Dragon but then turn around by the not so dominant team right now, which looking at it, is going to be BJK. They are down by three kills. They are down by 2k gold, but they still have much potential. It just depends on how they navigate this fight. Yeah, 3,000 gold difference at this point of the game is, is basically nothing. And it's all going to come down to whoever takes these fights better. E2JJ looking for an opening. The, the Tempest Dragon not really healthy. Uh, only 20,000 health left. They bring down Rekna with the Donghuang suppressed, and they're going to go for more. E Oh no, that's going to be the death of the Marco Polo. They're going to get the kill. And that's going to be a double kill there for Boy. E2JJ does fall. Lamb with the backline gets the kill. Ooh. And he's able to survive. List surviving for very long, but too much damage coming from the lineup on the side of FQT. And it's going to be left all down to the Sunbin to try and defend their base. And he's not going to get too much done as he's going to fall. Silver lining right now, the creep wave is pretty far behind and they might not be able to end the game in time, so BJK might have one more fight left. Now, 10 seconds until they get minion gets the crystal. I feel like it's just going to spawn as Rekna comes through there. Looking for the stun from Don Wong, but there's too much damage onto the crystal. And we finally get a first best of three. Woo! And it's none other than Foot Chaos and BJK to give it to us. So I am so hyped for this last game that is about to come through from these Turkish Titans. What a match. What a match. That definitely deserved a fist pump from the side of Foot Chaos. Mm. I mean, they played their early game to perfection. They stumped the early game aggression that, you know, Besiktas Esports wanted to bring. They managed to stall it towards the late game where they shone and shine they did. They forced us to the first game, first ever game three of the group stages. And my oh my, is this going to be an exciting game three? Absolutely. But, but we said in our introduction that there was going to be a best of three today. And I even said it in my <laughs> post on X that there was going to be a best of three today. And I was correct. So I'm so happy that I was right because I, I wouldn't want this uh, game to end any other way because both of these teams have been playing phenomenally. But I feel like the controlling uh, hero pick here, even though it was a team effort, the pendulum switching between Lamb on both of these teams has really shown how effective this jungle hero is. Not only with the ultimate push, uh, to be able to push away the, uh, ed the enemy team into a much preferred position, but the cleanup of this uh, hero is just amazing. Exactly. We'll see a lot of focus on banning and picking Lamb, I believe, uh, later on in this tournament as well. He's just one of those heroes that you cannot ignore. He's strong early game, he's strong late game. He doesn't do, sure, he doesn't do a lot of damage compared to uh, a, lot of those, uh, a lot of the other jungle heroes, but he doesn't need to do a lot of damage because he just needs to catch up catch off your supports or your marksmen and he just destroys them in a blink of an eye. That's the power of Lamb along with the rotation speed and foot showcases how strong it is to us once again. 
Yeah, you really see that on that uh, economic curve there that uh, BJK have a, got a slight gold lead. It's nothing great. It's not over the 1K mark, uh, but they do have a slight gold lead but, uh, towards the beginning of the game, past the four minute mark, but then it just dominates towards the end. And first, I, I'm pretty sure this is a first, Rome MVP going towards Ruga on the side of Foot Chaos. And to, to be fair, having those denies onto the Dachau, uh, Dachan, sorry, uh, really helped Foot Chaos get their foot through the door and a 1 1 in this best of three. Definitely, Ryuga played an important role in this game, being able to shut down either the Marco Polo or the Diao Chan very effectively. I mean, that's a lot of kills that we've seen him opening things up with a suppress and then just following it up with the rest of the damage coming from his team. So, well done here. Here's one of the instances that he gets a assist on a kill and he is just absolutely huge. One more, how about it? <laughs> absolutely. Ruga knew what he was doing when he chose that Don Huang pick as well. But yeah, what a uh, what a pick of poison there towards the likes of Regna, towards the likes of the Marco Polo as well. So what a great pick, and it's really opened up the doors here for that one uh, the one one victory between Foot Chaos and BJK. So we are begin we are going to be going through to a third and final game in day two. We finally get it. No more stumps. Just pure <laughs> best of threes. Yeah, and, and no other team would have done this other than DGK and, and Foot Chaos. So much on the line right now, not just for first place in their group, but also for the the, the glory, the, the honor of being called the best team in Turkey. These two teams are doing everything they can. They're battling it all out to be able to show the world what they're made of. And this is definitely been a show for the ages because we are going for game three ladies and gentlemen foot chaos against Besiktas esports game number three happening um, in a short wow absolutely uh, i couldn't say any better myself but foot chaos really do have something to prove here especially after those fighting words after match one in day one saying that they put themselves above BJK. First game didn't prove that, second game definitely proved that, but it's all down to this last game within the best of three. I think this all comes to uh, down to the drafts uh, and the bans here. Uh, I think we may see the Mai come through because they will have to uh, ban something else in order to uh, claim the Mai again. I feel like the Don Huang may get banned, Maybe potentially we'll see a lamb get banned as well. So we'll see a completely new jungle hero pick for both of these teams. But yes, it all comes down to that draft and ban pick. Yeah, there's still a lot of heroes we haven't we have yet to see. You know, we haven't seen the concert you being played. We've mm. uh, went through a lot of the jungle heroes, in fact, already. Just a couple of the less popular ones, like the Sunai or mm. like. Uh, like the Zilong hasn't really been picked as well, something that I hope to see uh, being picked in this tournament. The Zilong is, you know, one of those jungle heroes that doesn't really do well in towards the later stages of the game. But early on, the crowd control he provides and the sustain he can do is really, really huge. Um, uh, that is able to provide for the rest of the team as well. Absolutely, but then again, it's like we say all the time, it's the group stages, they've got to mm -hmm. hold some pocket plays until the knockout stage sure. because they don't they don't want to uh, view the whole uh, deck of Uno cards mm -hmm. to everybody straight away. They want to be like, you know what, we do have some secrets and we do have some really good Trump plays. As considering that everything, if you do play everything right now, it's already going to be witnessed, it's already going to be aware of going into the knockout stage and then you have so much time especially that day break that we have between both of the, the knockouts the groups and the knockout yep. stages there's a lot mm -hmm. to be learned in that 24 hours between those teams yeah that's a good point there there is a one day break for all the teams to rest recuperate and re-strategize before the knockout stage happens so that is when you want to you know really dive deep into your first round opponent and find out everything you can about the strategies they play. So it's tantamount that you know these teams don't show too much of their hand during the group stages, uh, because that might just limit the, the the things that they can play during the knockout stages themselves. 
Absolutely, and the fact that BJK have this match right now that has a lot riding on it, and then straight into day three, they are back at it for the first match of the day against Major Pride. Again, it won't be anywhere near as difficult as this match unless Major mm -hmm. Pride really show a major improvement over the next 24 hours uh, and study what BJK have been really good at, which has been the macro, it has been the early game aggression, it has been trying to take that mid lane turret. But when you're going against somebody, that a team that puts themselves above you, you've already got that mental uh, preparation and you mm. want to be, you know what, I've got to beat them, I've got to beat them. But then in the back of Foot Chaos's mind, they've got, oh, we've got a timer and that's when our, all our heroes activate <laughs> and that's when we will clean up. And that's exactly what they did in game two. Yep, and and uh, before we head into the ever so important game three, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be taking a short break, but don't go anywhere. Foot Chaos against Besiktas Esports will complete after this break. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is it. The final conclusion of the best of three series between Foot Chaos and Besiktas Esports will be happening very soon. The score is 1-1 between these two powerhouses of the Turkish region, and they will be one game away from finding out who is the better team. We've seen Foot Chaos putting themselves ahead of Besiktas Esports, and they have been punished in game number one, taking a very a close game uh, loss, in fact. Game number two, they managed to get a revenge match against them. And this is why we are here in game number three. One more map, one more game to decide the winners of this best of three series. And this could not have been a better game three series to happen. We are just about to start the draft of game number three. We've seen a lot of very interesting picks. We've seen a lot of a macro strategy that's been showcased by both these teams but it's all come down to this the group stages is very important for all these teams to find a good position for the playoff stage for the knockout stages and it all comes to this last game to be able to beat your opponent whoever wins this match uh, between Besiktas Esports and Foot Chaos will most likely be the top of group A so everything rides behind this final match now it is the difference between being forced to meet the likes of alpha 7 or vivo key stars from group b or it could be something completely different as well so we are about to head into the draft ladies and gentlemen foot chaos banning out the jing as well as the da Xiao in the first phase well uh the diao chan in the first phase well the sickness esports will ban out the diao chan uh, da Xiao as well as the princess frost 
and instantly locking down the land. The land has been the difference maker for both these teams in the first two games, and Foot Chaos will put their hands on him in the overall first pick. Absolutely, that lamb we did say was the component of multiple wins within this series. Uh, and he, go, he comes through as priority pick there. And to be fair, with eSports taking the first pick, because as it works, uh, whenever the teams win, it goes up to the side who gets the priority pick on the blue side. Uh, but over to the red side there, we BJK, they go and lock down the Dun and take Mai. So in the first game, uh, first two games, BJK have locked in Dawachan uh, for Rekna, and now it looks like Rekna is going to get his attempt at Mai. Yeah, Mai has been great, uh, has been performing really well uh, in the games we've seen so far, but um, it do he does need a good team to be played around the uh, the Mai, just because of uh, a couple of the weaknesses that the Mai generally does have. So let's see if they're able to stop, uh, they're able to build around this, uh, this Mai, because the Mai by himself can actually do, can actually carry some of the games. Let's see if uh, they round out the lineup for the side of Besiktas Esports with a good draft for the Mai. Absolutely. I feel like with this uh, Zhang Fei being selected, we're going to get that Huan Zhang uh, come through as the uh, marksman of the game because we now have two forces that are able to push away the enemy team from uh, this central piece that is the marksman pick that could potentially be the Huan Zhang uh, that holds and put chaos together. We saw it in game one, it worked very well, but there just wasn't anything that could drive the enemy team away from that focus. They do lock in the Gamma as well, which we've seen play very well by Snape throughout the entire series. Snape with the Gamma once again. And Foot Chaos looks like they are pretty... This is a, a draft that they are very comfortable with. I mean, they've got the Ganemo once again. Zhang Fei has been showcased yet and yet again to be a very, uh, a very flexible yet important support hero for any team to pick up. And uh, for the side of Foot Chaos, being able to pick that up early on is going to be... Uh, puts them in a very good spot. Yeah, we're not going to get that Luna pick come through, which it looks like Foot Chaos was actually uh, predicting that they were going to pick because there's no Lamb, there is no uh, Jing available, there is no Pi available. So now we're going to have to completely rethink what that jungle is going to be for uh, BJK, but it could potentially be here that the Dun could be the jungle right now, and they've already just banned out just these jungle picks randomly because Luna is obviously only ever going to be that <laughs> jungle pick. So whether that was a mistake or not is yet to be seen, but we see the Byron and the Charlotte come through as the last two bands for BJK, which is a little bit more strategic as Foot Chaos clearly don't have their uh, Clash laner yet. And Derenji coming through once again for E2JJ. So what other Clash laners are still left in the pool that's, that, that can go up against a Luna. There's not many left. I mean, Dun picked up by them for themselves. On the side of BJK, they ban out the Charlotte and Byron, which leaves maybe a Lu Bu, maybe a Guan Yu still available mm -hmm. for Foot to be able to pick up. Yeah. I gotta say, yeah, absolutely. There needs to be something that is a damage dealer, though, because they've already got like the likes of the Jang Fei. Oh, Darma. are we getting our first Doma pick? Oh, yes, we are. And they've not actually gone for the Hong Zhong as well. They've gone for the Marco Polo. Very interesting. Yeah, Dharma, one of the stronger laners, the stronger individual plays. Uh, very high skill cap hero, but in the hands of a good player, he can absolutely destroy the Clash lane, and that's what Foot Chaos is looking for. A lane that doesn't require the lamb to really put focus on so that you know the lamb is able to rotate uh, somewhere else, especially especially to try and shut down either the Mai or the Dirinje, while BJK looks like they will pick up a, um, a Musashi. Musashi. And they're going to play the Dun in a support role. <laughs> Interesting. I mean, we've been speaking about the Dun in the, in the Rome uh, role for pretty much since day one, because Dunn has had actually a really high presence and high pick rate within the Season 1 Invitational. It may not always in uh, conclude as a win, but he has a high pick rate, and it, it seems clear that the teams just want it to work. Or 
they're substituting this Dunn pick as a potential, rather than picking a potential trump card or pocket pick for the knockout stage. So uh, Dunn as the room, Derenji in the uh, farm lane, Mai in mid, Musashi and then Mulan. So a lot of dive on that Definitely. team, especially from the Musashi with the knockup and Mai as well. Could we see that's going to conflict like it did in the first game when uh, uh, Foot Chaos picked uh, Libai as well. So let's see how this goes. This is the concluding game of the day. It is match three. If you've only just joined, I would recommend going over to YouTube and watching the VODs as well, because this has been a heck of a day in terms of games. And the crowd looked very hyped and getting even more hyped with the slap of the drums there. So this is it, the concluding game of a day two game three between both Turkish teams here. What a way to finish the series. What a way to finish the day. We've seen two new heroes. We see the Dharma. We see... Um, we also see the uh, Dunn played in the support role. So for those who don't know, Dunn is primarily played in the support role uh, a lot in KPL. So this is, you know, something that probably the coach uh, has brought in here for Basitas Esports, giving them you know mm. a, a, an extra layer of depth, uh, an extra layer of flexibility to be able to pick your heroes early and then flex them uh, into another role as you need uh, something else to cover certain weaknesses in your draft. So that's going to be Enemy interesting to see. But enough about seconds. that. Game 3 about to start. This is going to be Foot Chaos going up against Basitas Esports in the group stage. Yeah, I mean, we could probably potentially see the Dunn being used as a, a lockdown onto like the Ganmo uh, or the Marco Polo because they don't really have the Dong Huang. They don't really want to try that because they know Foot Chaos, know the ins and outs of that uh, that hero. So going for something that isn't conventionally within the uh, global scene, but KPL, it's really, really interesting, especially going in uh, up here in the clash lane with the Dharma and the Mulan as well. So heavy presence already to try and get a potential advantage early on in the clash lane as it seems yeah the, the, it's interesting to note as well that ryuga on the zhangfei did go for the smite so that's that allows him to play very aggressively early on into the enemy jungle try and steal creeps try and get a little bit of gold his way as well so that's what Ryu, ryuga did in the first game of the series and he's opting to do that once again in this game as well Absolutely. Any any uh, Rome player that gets an MVP is definitely one to be feared. And <laughs> Ruga was uh, one of those. Uh, Ryuga was one of those uh, players that was actually in the roster of Foot Chaos uh, whilst at KIC as well. So once again, a, a, a, a wildly experienced player for Foot Chaos uh, right now as well. So offering a lot of support and uh, knowledge to his teammates as well. So a great asset to the team and the organization currently, uh, but a still very, very slow burning pre four minute mark because again, you can feel the tension between this mat this game because this is the last game of the day and this is the last game for either of these teams to win right now and to really represent if they are the best of the Turkish region. Oh, bottom lane engagement was attempted by Yurian, not level 4 yet, not able to close things out with his ultimate. So he, they are not able to land the stun, and Ryuga and Aura will be able to escape oh, for oh, now. But Ryuga go, goes back in and wants a little bit more of that. But be careful. again, he's able to jump away. Meanwhile, Lam mm. was waiting in the wings there, last looking for a victim to be able to devour, but he's not going to be able to find anything and will settle to get his own jungle creeps. Yeah, no, they were waiting happily in that uh, bush, but it, all, all it took was them to stay complacent and stay in that brush, and then all of a sudden, Ganmo and uh, Lam would have definitely pushed them into that turret because he is now level 6, he has that ultimate, he has that potential to push or people pe uh, people and heroes wherever they want, he wants them to go. He can now decide the direction of your hero before you even know. So that's one of the great picks and great utilities of this hero, Lam. One minute before the first uh, major objective across the map do spawn. Both these teams are just still posturing uh, towards the bottom lane. They really want to secure the first tyrant of the game. That's going to dictate the tempo that both these teams will be able to play at. So that's why we see so much 
uh, emphasis being placed down. They even move the Gunnemo towards the bottom so that he can just push out the waves as quickly as possible. Oh, top lane though. Musashi goes for the kill and gets the kill on towards at uh, on towards a uh, loss. So loss is gonna have to fall back for now. Rekna dropping down very low. Gunnemo almost bringing down Liz, able to survive with an inch of his life, but. BJK will be able to strike first blood in this game. Absolutely, but I think I would if there's anything if there's anything such as a well-timed death in honor of kings, that was it because lost his name back in time for that tyrant to spawn and the overlord. So he hasn't lost much time in terms of getting to it or losing time on trying to claim the tyrant. But we see the Renji coming around as a rotation to help the Mai and the Dun right now in this bottom half of the map. But we see Lost has already started at the tyrant and uh, BJK have decided to just let them have it. Yeah, Lost is going to make short work of the tyrant Well, the Musashi as well as the Mulan will settle for the Overlord. With this the classic trade overload for Tyrant early on, but they might get something Ooh. more. Look at where they're staying, waiting for the lamb to try and take the Sage Golden, but he gets spotted out there. Void will help him out to scare them away, and Lost will be able to secure his ever so important Sage Golden buff. Yeah, ever since the, they saw that Dover was on the way of the rotation as well, it's kind of like, ah, oh, this is no longer a easy 2v1. This is now going to be a hard 2v2. Now that they actually have the tire movement speed and uh, damage increase from that jungle camp here. Uh, Uriah doing a bit of damage onto uh, the uh, uh, Jung Bay there also. Um, but yes, it is still a slow burning match. However, BJK do get the first blood, so they did have the bonus of that as well. It's just all about trying to put some pressure in these lanes. We just don't want the, the same thing to happen to BJK as the second game, where they lost complete control of that mid lane, and the same with the side lanes. They only hooked them up uh, towards the the latter part of the game when the only turret they got in the early game was the farm lane compared to, and they traded it at the same time as the clash lane so it wasn't really a great trade-off for them early on so i think they're just trying to learn from that here trying to keep all their lanes a little bit healthier in order for them to try and win this early game by opening up that mid lane turret because it is detrimental yeah. to opening up the enemy farm yeah, we expect, uh, I expect BJK to start uh, putting on the pressure right now. They already completed their acts of torments, but lost it. Try and go for E2JJ. E2JJ able to just walk away from that without really completing too much. And I was, as I was saying, there's uh, three acts of torments already completed from both teams. Liz, Attics, mm. as well as Regna have their first core items up and running. So we'll definitely see them start to up the tempo here. On the flip side, Ryuga, uh, lost also completed his acts of torment. So he's gonna be able to join the fight with more damage along with the Dharma as well. So all the first core items are up for these aggressive heroes. Let's see what they decide to do with it. Will it be the mid lane tower as we see Atix just uh, hanging around there? Or will it be a rotation towards the bottom? Yeah, absolutely, but uh, there's been quite a little bit of mix up of uh, the boots here. There's not just one set of boots. We have uh, quite a different in uh, a range of boots across all these teams. <laughs> Magic piercing going on the gamma. We have the CD cooldown reduction on the side of the lamp. Uh, and then we also oh. have that. Oh! Rekna lamp gets almost. the kill. Uh, no, Lamp, sorry. I, I, I assumed that someone got kicked and pushed that it was Lamp, but no, it was Rekna on the main. Almost getting another kill onto Snape. Almost just a little bit short of a range on his second skill there. That would have been a kill. Oh, but looks like Lamb wants to show him how it's done. Regna trying to escape from that. He almost was able to, but he gets knocked out there by the Musashi. Zanfei not really able to protect him after using the ultimate. So they get a quick return kill on towards an important hero on the side of Foot Chaos. So one for one trade here. BJK would probably be okay with that. Losing the mid lane with the Mai, but you get the kill on Lost. Absolutely, I mean, uh, really focusing on that lamb right now, especially in terms of the economic curve, he is behind in the farm compared to the Musashi and almost by like a 1k gold, which at this point in time in the game is quite a detrimental figure to be uh, behind by just in a lane alone. Maybe not the team as a whole, but lane alone. We are seeing another engage here. You're right, and taking a lot of damage from Snape there, coming with the late engage onto that team fight. Uh, but Lamp is now back into it. He's like, I know what I have to do. I have to farm and I have to not try and get baited by Regna. 
under Mai, and they get taken out by Musashi again. That is definitely some, uh, a mistake. You cannot make more than once, especially with this build up here, helping themselves to the Sage buff whilst they trade for the Tyrant. And some players may even say that that is a worthy trade because Musashi doesn't have to go back uh, now and try and figure out and get another Sage buff. His has been confirmed and taken on the side of Lamp and they go for another Overlord. So cleaning up a Sage buff and an Overlord, I feel like the trade for the Tyrant right now is definitely worth it. No doubt about that. They will be able to get that tier one tower onto the top lane as well. That's nice. allow and potentially the to get, Yeah. Dunkley uses the ultimate forces the back. Uriah dropping very low and will get sniped off there by Snake. That allows them to at least get something back behind and now we will allow will give Lost the, the, the Sage Golden buff that they were missing. So all things all things considered, they just make things even once again and that's been the story of the series so far two very evenly matched teams fighting it out to see who's the better one absolutely i mean i didn't even notice that the uh, farm lane first day turret on the side of bjk was actually down so seeing that trade uh, is again once again a lot more even in terms of uh, objective and farm and gold here we see that uh, foot chaos have slowly but surely brought back that gold difference within the hundreds now so it's not as detrimental as of the 1k gold slipping away from them but rugar getting a lot of damage being taken onto and focusing a lot of damage uh, snape using his ult uh, but not taking anybody out and lost is already gone down Rugar, uh, no sorry Void going in with the dynamic amount of punches it is just not what you want to be on the receiving end of however all of BJK are still alive Derenji and Mai are looking to open up that farm lane for themselves again the Karma damage was absolutely huge she hasn't been really uh, doing a lot in this game but that team fight just showcases the moment he decides to participate in any one of these team fights he can put out so much physical damage that they have to really watch out for a bjk after bringing down loss in, in, in an engagement that was off screen they are able to secure the overlord and maybe they can go for the tyrant as well yeah, they're definitely uh, focusing the Overlord objective a, a, a lot more prevalent in this match than any, uh, this game uh, than any other game that they played. They are just focusing, they're giving up the Tyrant, they just want to secure these lanes because they know inevitably uh, a lane taken is a lot better than a temporary damage and movement speed uh, buff here. And there goes the mid lane turret, the Holy Grail of the lanes has now been taken thanks to the Vanguard. And now comes the Shadow Vanguard. Could we get a potential tier two takedown of a turret right now? There's a lot of trading blows going on in the back line of foot. Snape's damage uh, just dissuades them from going any further after going dropping down with a single uh, of his ultimate. Void trying to do his best to defend the top tier 2 tower and they should be able to hold things back for now as Musashi is waiting for the next Sage Golden buff to be able to join the fight. He has oh, gotten it. No. Oh no. What an overstep there by Regna. I even saw that coming. We saw a lamp in the bush. He's just waiting for his prey to be overstepped and it was uh, but yeah, they are looking to take the Tyrant for the, the, the, the third time. Whilst uh, BJK are looking to take a high ground turret, is this going to be an even trade? Probably not, because their whole clash lane is wide open. All they've got to do is teach Reckner not to overextend <laughs> in that mid lane. But maybe that was the tactic. I would absolutely give it to BJK for taking that trade there. Sure, they lose rank now for 20 seconds, but they open up the top lane, which is going to be so much pressure being put on the side of Foot Chaos after this. But maybe BJK needs to take a chill pill for now. They're not fully gathered towards the mid lane. Oh, Snape snipes off E2JJ. 85% HP to nothing in a matter of seconds. That is the power of the gun and more. At a long range against these marksmen, you really pack out for every single skill that you pass. Absolutely, and you can see the uh, the placement again by Ruga on the uh, Jungle Fei is really helping Snape open up these snipes, but Snape oh, taking a lot of damage oh, there from the Mai, it seems, but once again, the stun onto the wall from Doma really opened up that, but they still lose the tier two turret in the mid lane, and Noir going in with a kill. Crucial pro control from Zhang Fei, like we've just been talking about there. He has been a key part in making sure and promoting a healthy team fight for his team. Yep, the, the, the Zhang Fei as well as the 
the Dharma combination is just so strong. You lock him to a wall and then Dharma can just go ham with his, with his Fist of Fury. And that, from a really bad trade on the top lane that could Chaos just went through, they got the mid lane tower, they got two crucial kills, and now they're ahead in terms of gold. Absolutely, this has been really a eye-opening part for, for Chaos here. They have pushed the mid lane just as much as they can up until the higher ground. And it's all about just getting the higher ground in these team fights so they can proceed pushing the mid lanes and uh, pushing the side lanes as well. But the thing that's got to be a constant pressure in the back of uh, Foot Esports is mind is making is knowing that Lamp or somebody has to go and stop that minion wave because if they don't, that can do some real damage to the crystal and apply real pressure into these team fights being at odds against your enemy. Marco Polo is getting to a point where he's starting to be scary. The Daybreaker almost completed already. So that's going to provide him with uh, the maximum of attack speed that he needs to be at the peak of that hero. So right now, now we're looking very scary. He has... Oh, but he's very squishy though. Almost gets run down there by the Mai, on, uh, by Rekna on the Mai. And he has to play it safer while his team will go for the Overlord. Absolutely. So first Overlord for Foot uh, Chaos there. They've taken one of the brighter joys from BJK as they have just been giving a good pressure to the Overlord for the entire match. Uh, but no, Might is in the wake there. Look at oh. Snape and he does! There goes Snape. Snape is down. Ganmo, one of the big amounts of damage goes out. But we've seen at the back of the queue there, Doma doing a lot of damage onto E2. JJ, which is Derenji, but Derenji manages to take him out. There is Min New wave being pushed up onto the side lanes of uh, BJK, and once again Marco Polo just wiping out the Renji. He should have just recalled, uh, cleared up that turret uh, wave in the farm lane, and just would have been as healthy as he should have been re-engaging back into the team fight. But right now, the Shadow Vanguard and the Vanguard are all looking pretty prevalent in that farm lane. They have got to be careful. But BJK did actually get quite a good one up there on foot chaos within that team fight. Definitely. I mean, Rekna with that positioning, able to bring down a gun and mortar before he's able to cast a single skill. Absolutely saved BJK from at least losing one tier 3 tower because we did see the, the waves were being cleaned up there from the side of Foot Chaos. They wanted to go for at least two tier 3 towers and with one snipe coming from Rekna on Snape, they stopped the entire tempo, they stopped the entire push. But can they come back in time to try and contest this, uh, this Tyrant? I don't think so. It's going down pretty, pretty fast with Naur's damage. Yeah, looking at the position of Attix there in the jungle, he definitely isn't making that his priority. He, I, I think they're just going to wait for some sort of gank. That's all they can really hope for because it worked really well for him in that first team fight, taking out Gammo. That is all they can wish for is trying to take out Gammo, take out Doma before Lam re-engages there. But Liz, Attix, and E2JJ come out of the bush there, leaving Wreck there, recalling. It's going to be a oh. bit of a bait there. Okay. Not quite the claim that Lamp was looking for there. Pretty scary situation to be in, especially on against a Lamp in, in the river. He's going to be able to chase up to you so easily. But Drekna should be tanking his lucky stars for being able to escape with his life. He does already have a very crucial item uh, that he needs against mm. the Lamp, which is the Ardent Dominator. Uh, no, not the Ardent Dominator, the Splendor, which allows him to be invulnerable for 1.5 sec seconds. So that's going to allow him to survive a little bit from the nuke damage that the Lamb can do. So he wasn't completely in danger, but that was still really a sweaty situation to be in. Absolutely, huge push here, locking down the uh, Musashi. Musashi goes there due to Lamb. There is CC immunity on Mulan. We've got Rekna too far in the back of the queue, trying to take out Ganamo, but it's meet and met by Doma there. And then once again, Lamb gets his resurrection taken from it. Foot Chaos wiping out everyone bar Mulan. Looking to finish off this game here. They have the minion wave. Can Mulan defend the crystal? Or even defend the team, I do not think not. There is the minion wave, there's the crystal just laid bare. Foot Chaos backing up their words from day one, saying that they are the best Turkish team in this competition, and they've done it. Foot Chaos puts the, the money where their mouth is, taking the series two and one. Sure, it was close, sure, they were playing on the back foot, 
from this game as well as the first series as well but they come back stronger they won game number two they won game number three and they are currently leading group a look at the happy smiles look at <laughs> the breath of relief every single one of these players are able to let out what what an amazing series that both these teams have able to give us absolutely they've definitely lived up to the words that uh, i believe it was lost that said it uh, they put themselves above bjk and then uh, they put nrx below bjk being the third seed there uh, but we should wait and see to see if that is really true and we'll get to see that result at the end of day four when nrx go against foot esports but fair play to bjk for actually putting on a stunning best of three in its entirety that we've been waiting for since yesterday because the other two day, uh, games today have been complete stomps absolutely i mean foot chaos definitely deserved the victory so many huge plays from Rekna, from attics uh, it was just uh, not enough to keep a, a BJK alive and lost once again showcasing why he's so scary on mm -hmm. that lamb and Snape this game was absolutely crazy uh, just being able to pick off heroes at a huge range but in the end look at the scoreline of Ryuga 0, Duh. 0 and 10 yeah for somebody that just was, uh, scored MVP from the last game I would consider that MVP worthy of this second game but I feel like they need to give a shout out to either Snape or uh, Noir there because there was a, an amazing performance, uh, amazing placement of both of these champion, uh, both of these heroes and players being able to just do crucial damage to these really squishy champions like the Mai, like the Renji, being able to just delete 85% of their health with one ability, which has been huge. And as you can see there from Snape, 40.4% of the damage dealt goes to one single hero. And it is Snape with a 20, with a 69% the team of fight rate, uh, damage taken very low, but the total gold is 18.5. So overall, that's a fantastic stat to have. Absolutely, that is crazy scoreline, and I will not be surprised if he was named the MVP of this game. But what mm. a series, Blam! What a series! Would you have expected this to go any other way? Not at all, not at all. I mean, it would have been a. I would have been more surprised if BJK managed to win, and it would have been a great sort of like narrative driver there because mm -hmm. they were just talked down in day one. <laughs> then they come back and clap back with a two-one. Yes, it was a hard-fought victory, but they did go. Out, they didn't go out without a fight. They really, really tried in this one, and it really shows. There, the the dividends between the kills wasn't a lot. It was only seven kills difference, and the uh, total gold was only eight k. But it was just those champion picks and there it is confirmed Snape is the MVP for game three between Foot Chaos and BJK. All MVPs have definitely proven that they deserve that position. Yeah, absolutely crazy, uh, crazy match here from Snape. Definitely well deserved. The damage he's dealt, the, the amount of damage, the snipes he's done has been huge and he is going to be the reason why they took this series 2 and 1. It's uh, definitely putting themselves in a great position to take the top spot in the group stages as well. Absolutely. I mean, groups, uh, Group A is definitely over, uh, completely ruled by the Turkish region because there is uh, three teams in it from Turkey region and only one that isn't, and that is Major Pride, who is currently sat at the bottom because they have no wins. They are now suffering two losses. But BJK and NRX are going to be sitting at the same amount of points, I assume. And then Foot Esports will be right at the top of Group A, where nobody is yet completely at the top of Group B because we have EKS on one win, we have Alpha on one win, and then the other two have no wins yet. So it's a bit of a draw between the Brazilians, which we are not going to see until tomorrow. Who peaks? In the Brazilian League, we get to see Alpha 7 versus PKS at the same time tomorrow, which is super exciting. <laughs> I cannot wait. If it's anything like this series, it's going to be amazing. Absolutely. Something for all the fans at home to look out for, because this was the probably the best series we've seen so far. Mm. But tomorrow, and the, even after that, there's plenty more Honor of Kings action to look out for as well. So this has been a, a, a, a, a the best way to close out day number two. Couldn't ask for more. We've finally got a 2-1 game. And it is none other than Foot Chaos being able to take the win against their Turkish brethren.
Absolutely, but what a way, like we've uh, said for the, the past maybe uh, mm -hmm. one to two minutes, but it seems like we've been saying it all day, this has been the only way that day two could have closed, and for it to be a satisfying day, to, uh, day two, I can say that I'm completely satisfied as a caster, and I can imagine that the people watching online and the people in the stage in Turkey, seeing both two teams from Turkey region, completely, well, all three teams actually, all get um, all get to play. Two of them obviously coming out on top, but one of them had to fall uh, victim to the loss, but it was a 2-1 loss, so you cannot moan at that after having a day two amazing banger of a match. This has been a great day for matches today. I, I cannot agree with you more. This has been uh, the best way to close this match to, to close the day, in fact, and we are going to be able to look out uh, for more tomorrow because we've got uh, huge matches that are going to decide the table happening tomorrow. We've got Baziktas Esports going up against Major Pride. If Baziktas Esports take the win, they will be taking second place. They're very likely taking second place in the in their Group A. While for the other group, we've got Star Wars Esports going up against Twisted Minds and Alpha Seven going. Up, up against Vivo Key Stars. Absolutely, so a lot of uh, amazing games. But first up, we will be hearing from very soon an interview from the winner of the last match, which was Foot Chaos. Will it be uh, Void? Will it be Lost Speaking? We will find out very soon. But I really want to hear a comment on those words from yesterday. So <laughs> we'll be heading over very soon to the interview. Turnuvada ilk kez üçüncü maça uzayan bir seri izledik ve Beşiktaş karşısında kazanan Fut oldu. Fut'tan Ruyiga ile birlikteyiz. Hemen bu durumu soracağız elbette. Rakibiyle üç maç bu kadar yakın oynanan bir oyun neler hissettirdi acaba? Uh, did you expect this was the first match that went to the went, went to three games? Did you expect such a close match before the start? Aslında bu kadar uzayacağını düşünmüyorduk. Çekişme değil işte. Biraz rakibimize ciddi al alamadık. O yüzden uh, şu şu an Oynadığımız maçta analiz ettik gayet ve gelecek maçlar için çok daha iyi hazırlanacağız. Uh, we didn't expect it to be this close. Like it was really a huge back and forth, and uh, we couldn't really take our opponents seriously at the start. Uh, but we managed to get the win, and we will prepare even better for the next matches. Hepiniz gerçekten iyi performans sergilediniz ama sence bugün takımda en iyi oynayan kimdi? Uh, all of you performed really well today, but who do you think was the best performer out of everyone? Mid oyuncumuz Snape'i çok beğendim bugün. Teşekkür ederim. Uh, I, I really enjoyed uh, mid lane Snape's performance today. İki seriyi de geçtiniz. Artık grup aşamasından rahat bir galibiyetle geçeceğinizi düşünüyor musun? Uh, you managed to win both of your series up until now. Uh, do you expect a clean victory, a clean uh, future in the next matches of this tournament. Gayet rahat geçeceğiz. I think it will be super easy. Çok net cevaplar aldık. Başarılar diliyoruz. Teşekkürler. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. We heard it there first. Foot Chaos says it's going to be an easy rest of the way in the rest of the tournament. We didn't get clarification if that just meant the group stages because <laughs> they only really got one more game left. So, and it's against NRX, which were below BJK. So we could confirm that. But if it's going to be in the group stages, this is a true fighting talk from the MVP mm -hmm. of game two from Foot Chaos. So again, big words coming from Foot Chaos. They're the only team that I imagine have come out with these kind of words it's still i'm still yet to see the brazilians do their swagger on stage and bring out some fighting words but chaos are here to absolutely decimate i mean they are they have been exuding confidence so far they've almost won every single uh, every single game they had and they've been able to fight up against the best in their group as well so i reckon their confidence level right now is at the peak and they definitely you know, have to get that off the chest. They just went through a very close series, a best of three series. And after that win, you probably feel like you're on top of the world. 
Absolutely, absolutely. But it, this again has all been fueled and all been possible thanks to our sponsor, Infinix. And all the players have been playing on the Infinix GT10 Pro, which is the N8, to be the most professional choice for gamers who are fighting with Kings. All sensory engine and high refresh rate immerses you in the purest game, uh, gaming experience. And we can honestly say it has definitely provided that for today because it has mm -hmm. been the most competitive the best gaming experience for us casters to be viewing on these devices. Yeah, I hope you guys watching at home have been enjoying the games as well. This is the Honor of King Invitational Season 1. So if you have been Honor of Kings, this is the best time to go to your App Store or Play Store, download the game, give it a try, as we are just starting to release globally uh, for everybody to be able to experience the gameplay and fight with Kings as well. Absolutely. So this is just the start of the global efforts for mm -hmm. Honor of Kings. And rightfully so, I think this has been a bit of a takeover. It has been a fascinating two days so far, and we've still got plenty of days to come. Just a little bit of a catch up within tomorrow's schedule. We will have day three starting off with the Turkish team. BJK go against Major Pride. Uh, once again, Major Pride have really got to do everything that they can in that game to try and get a win on the board. Mm. It doesn't matter though, they will still go out to the knockout stages. Twisted Minds, again, they still have two matches until to try and do something. I'm really looking forward to that match as a midway between the Brazilian Titans. Twisted Minds versus Star Wars Esports. I think that's actually going to be a closer match than I feel it's going to be from uh, what I've seen from Twisted Minds today. And then the Absolutely phenomenal <laughs> clash again, two days in a row. We had Turkey versus Turkey. Tomorrow is Brazil versus Brazil, which is Alpha 7 versus a VKS to fight for the top spot of Group B. It's definitely not one to miss out on tomorrow. I don't think any one of these games you want to miss out. I mean, we've had absolute banger of a matches throughout these two days already, and I don't expect tomorrow to be any different as well. So it's going to be a long sleep before we're able to win this day number three. But so far, it has been well worth the time. And, uh, and just watching all these players grow into their, their own, you know, being able to showcase their talent, showcase their skills in the Honor of Kings season, season 1 Invitational has been a treat. But this is just a roundup in case you missed all the games today. Isa Nox may, uh, Major Pride losing out to IWNRX with a clean 2-0 sweep. VKS able to do the same against Twisted Minds as well as the final game of the day which we just witnessed. An absolute gauntlet for both these teams but in the end Foot Chaos was able to take the win against Besiktas Esports with a 2-1 victory. Absolutely and there we go. There is the current standings of Group A and Group B so we see Foot Chaos currently at two wins, zero losses, and they are two points. And BJK at a one win, one loss, and they are at one point. And then again, same for NRX, one win, one loss, one point. And then unfortunately for Major Pride, there always has to be somebody at the bottom of the leader leaderboard. It is just unfortunate that it's Major Pride. And then over to obviously Group B that uh, Alpha 7 is at the top with BKS at the moment, while the other two are still begging for a win. Mm -hmm. And these are the matches for tomorrow, as we've already stated, and there are the times as well. Just before we close out, uh, Zero, what was your highlight of today? Definitely all the new heroes we've seen um being played that we didn't see on day number one. We finally seen the Kaiser Doria combination. We get to see uh, Dharma being picked up and played as well. And not to mention, and we've been seeing a lot of Marco Polo happening today. So Marco Polo is one of those heroes where you know you you expect to see a bit more him being a very mobile uh, marksman. And today has showcased how strong he can be put in the, to, to the right hands into the right team composition. So I hope to see more uh, more and more heroes being utilized in the later stages of the tournament as well. Absolutely, and as we get through to the later stages, they are going to be pocket picks come through. Mm -hmm. And there is going to be something that I really enjoy seeing, as well as Niap on Liam Po, hopefully. Oh, so definitely. those are definitely some of my highlights today. 
Um, but I think that's all we've got for today, guys. Uh, this is the end of day two. It has been an amazing day. We have been your casters and source of entertainment. I am Blam, my lovely partner in crime, Zero there, are signing off for day two. See you tomorrow for day three. Get custard. Okay. So not just yet ending out, you still get to see our lovely faces just for a little <laughs> bit. So I'm just going to talk about the uh, peak pick for Niap there and still being cheated out for MVP personally. So I am still going to take this little moment <laughs> to talk about that and Niap's performance on the Liempo and how much uh, excitement I have for the Brazilian match tomorrow mm -hmm. against Alpha 7 and VKS because I really hope we get to see some more Liempo action some more Niap just completely dominating from the sidelines and that slow farm that he's very used to and then seeing those engages from both of the teams. But maybe we'll get some more MVPs from both of these Brazilian teams tomorrow. Like I was saying earlier, uh, Magenshi is a fantastic Rome player. He gives complete vision mm -hmm. and we will definitely get to see more of that tomorrow, guys. So thank you once again. I've been Blam, my partner in crime there, Zero, and we'll catch you tomorrow at the same time as today. See you later. See you guys.